Hello, all doctors. Uh, once again, welcome to this new session. So this session is about all the new questions for upcoming NEET PG. So basically what I've done is you have less time. So, so many to revise, especially microbiology. Everyone complains again and again. So it's, a, it's very, very difficult to remember things and all. So uh, already we have revised most of the things. Now what we're going to do is that questions. Questions from only the topics, you know, where examiners frequently ask questions, where from last uh, 10 years exam, if you see, there are some selected topics from there only questions were always asked in a different form. That's it. So that's what I have done. So it's going to start with bacteriology, mycology, virology, parasitology, all the important topics, important questions very quickly that you will have, you know, you just only have to go through it once. So it will be like one complete micro revision for you. Okay. So let's start. Now the first question itself, we will go. Okay. Yeah, next. Yes, so this is the first question. So look at this question. By seeing the picture itself, you would have already got a clue, but you know, still we will go there. So see this, whatever I highlighted in yellow color, that is the main points. Okay, with that, you will get a clue of the answer, whatever is going to be given to you. So now a child presented with a fever and blister. Okay, child, fever and blister. This is the child. You see a lot of blisters over the body. And the Nikolsky sign is positive. Nikolsky sign means you know what it is. When you press the... Uh, any lesion, whatever the lesion, if you press, it could be vesicle, blister, whatever. If you press, what happened? The superficial layer just peels away. The superficial layer, layer just peels off. That is called Nikolsky sign. Okay. So that is in the desmosome skin layer. It just peels or superficially peels off. Okay. That's the Nikolsky sign. Okay. That's more for a derma uh, finding. But yeah, this is something is causing it, which is the most likely organism and the toxin. First of all, fever blister, when you see this symptom itself, you know, this is what? This is a staphylococcus scarlet kin syndrome, which we call yes, yes, yes. Okay. That is a phenomenon. Staphylococcus scarlet syndrome, repeatedly asked question. This disease, no need to worry. See in the picture, the disease always it has a very good prognosis. Okay. Fine. Now there's toxin, which is causing it. So toxin, which is causing is, so let's come back one minute. If you see the staphylococcus, there are three important toxins you have to know. One question sure from this. First one is the enterotoxin. One is the enterotoxin A. And other one is enterotoxin have. Okay, enterotoxin have. And other one is called epidermolytic or it's called X. Exfoliative, exfoliative toxins. Very easy. You don't have to worry now. Now you remember. A for alu. Alu. Okay. Alu. Why alu? Because alu is potato. You know, so potato salad. One is potato salad and any cream product. Potato salad, cream, uh, ice cream, pastry, all these type of things which is causing what? Food poisoning. So enterotoxin for food poisoning and you know very well. Frequently asked question, they'll ask you incubation period within six hours. The patient got food poisoning diarrhea and he had the history of having potato salad or any creamy substance or any pastry substance. That's enough for you to say that is staphylococcus aureus. One question. All are caused by staphylococcus aureus here. Hef. Hef is very simple. Hef means hef for, first of all, hef is female and hef is fatal. Female and the fatal, okay. Though en endotoxin, uh, apart from HEF, there are B, C, D, E, etc. All can cause, but the most common one is A in food poisoning. That is number one endotoxin. Number two, HEF for HEF for female, HEF for fatal. Definitely, it is fatal. You know what is the toxin name? It, it is endotoxin F, which is also called as toxic soft. TSS, it's called okay. Toxic soft syndrome causing toxin also. We have this one, okay. TSST. Uh, one, we will be coming there. It's a very dangerous one. This is, you know, fatal for whom? Usually to the female when the tampons, when the, due to tampons contamination, okay, when there are unhygienic conditions, this can happen. Tampons. T, T, T for T, T for tampon, and F for female fatal will come there. Third one is the one, the disease which you're talking. How to remember, sir? This toxin is very difficult to remember. See, epidermo exfoliative. Epidermy means skin. What you do to skin? If you want to get a bright and beautiful skin, you do exfoliative. That's it. So mm -hmm. either epidermo or X is same. And these two things, what happen related to skin. So that means related to staph. staph. Any skin infection, the first cause will be staphylococcus. Most common cause is staphylococcus. So you don't even have to think. So you think only staphylococcus aureus. So that means staphylococcus scarlet skin syndrome. Yes, S, S. Okay, I'm not going to write the full name. So staphylococcus scarlet, which has a very good prognosis, which is with the antibiotics, the patient, the child gets better very nicely. It's a good prognosis. But which one? Your female endotoxin have female is fatal, very dangerous. Okay, remember that one. That's it. So now let's come to the question. 
uh, this is a child. So we already know Nikolsky sign positive means HF. That is, this disease, one of the Nikolsky sign is positive in many diseases, but in Staphylococcus scarlet skin syndrome, it is characteristic. And now only we told with the toxin, what is the toxin we just spoke? It's about the skin. So it is, should be exfoliative or epidermalizer. First of all, the organism is Staphylococcus aureus. Do we have? Yes. There are two options, Staphylococcus or Staphylococcus aureus. But see, there are toxin. Toxin is given TSST. So this is wrong. TSST is for the female. It causes the toxic shock syndrome in the female tampons. So that is out. So Staphylococcus or exfoliative? Yes, this is the right answer. Exfoliative toxin or epidermal lighting. Whatever they give you, you can mark it. Okay. So easy. So this based on this one question, pakka, you will get it. Okay. Remember, I mean, I'm not guaranteed 100%, but highly expected question. So that's it. Okay. This one question. Then epidermidis? No. Epidermis belongs to cons. It doesn't cause scallops and syndrome. Saprophyticus cause UTI. Female UTI, one of the most common cause. So that also out. Now finish. Your answer is B. Okay. Right. Okay. Next question now. Next question. Look at this question. This is another beautiful question here. Uh, here it says, a female patient presented with a female patient. First of all, it's a female. Okay, doesn't matter. He presented with a fever, vomiting, rash, desquamation, shock, end organ failure. So the disease already sounds very dangerous. Okay, it says patient is already in shock. Okay, with fever and also something is very dangerous happened. So it's associated with the prolonged use of vaginal tampons. They already gave you clue tampons. So when they give the clue tampons, means it's a you know, uh, it is a which toxin? It is it, it is a dangerous toxin. Tampons means it's a T toxin. Toxin. What is T for? Toxic shock syndrome toxin. Just now we spoke TSST one. Okay. Okay, toxic shock syndrome toxin. And which is the characteristic of this bacteria? So, which is the bacteria? This TSSC toxin, we just spoke, it is a Staphylococcus aureus toxin of the three important toxins, one toxin. So, the organ bacteria, Staphylo without option itself, I can say the Staphylococcus aureus. And the toxin, just now we put the toxic shock syndrome, so TSST1. Now, see the question, they haven't given directly Staphylococcus aureus. They have given what? Coagulase positive, coagulase negative, coagulase positive, coagulase negative. Okay, toxic, TSST1, that's fine. So, here you don't even need other option. No, why not? TSST1 is otherwise also called as, we just spoke, it's also called enterotoxin. Hef also. So, two, there are two options you see TSST interview. Now, the, our idea is to find whether it's coagulase positive or coagulase negative. You know very well, there's only one coagulase positive, Staphylococcus aureus is coagulase positive. I'll, talk, I'll teach you very easily now. I'll, I'll tell you how to remember. So, coagulase positive, TSST is the right answer. We are, instead of endotoxin, the TSST. So, if they can give anything, either TSST or endotoxin Hef, they are the same. The organism is Staphylococcus aureus. So, it should be coagulase positive. So, I choose the first option. That's the right answer. Okay. Now, now. Come here very quickly. You have to know this without knowing you can't enter the examiner. Staphylococcus and Staphylococcus can difference. So when you talk about the gram positive, when you talk about the gram positive, it's I'm talking about gram positive cocci. When you talk about the gram positive cocci, generally see when you talk about a gram positive organism, you know, when you talk about gram positive, who's positive people go to which restaurant? McDonald's. They go to McDonald's. McDonald's. In the McDonald's. The S, S stands for two. What are they? They are the stephalo and stepto. Okay, but these are the only cocci and they are this thing. Rest all, you know, I'm not going to talk now. You know that this is uh, mycobacterium TB, actinomyces, and another A is for anthrax, C for clostridium, D for diphtheria, another A for, uh, I told you just now, listeria, listeria, N for your nocardia, okay? All those things, diphtheroid, diphtheria. Okay, now in gram positive cocci, two. One is your staphylococcus. This is, that means, first you remember, staphylococcus, see, I have put in a, this is staphylococcus. Let's write it. This is staphylococcus. And this is streptococcus. Why this picture, sir? I know you're going to ask me why is this picture. Here, first picture, you see this is staph. So staphylococcus, you remember as a staph, okay? Staph ko kya pasanda, what they did? They like a cat. They like to have a cat. So it means staphylococcus always catalyzed positive. Cat positive. You see the picture. I don't put it a cat because it's catalyzed positive. Whereas your streptococcus catalyzes negative. Unke pas cat nahi hai. Remember like that. Catalyst is not there. Catalyst positive, catalyst negative. Now look at this. What does the staff like? The, our uh, nursing, uh, let's take about nursing staff. So you should talk about nursing staff only. They are more. So nursing staff like grapes. So it means grape like cluster. You see in this one, they are like a grape. So it's a grape like cluster. Grape like the gram positive cocci, which is in cluster cocci. Okay, that is staphylococcus. Okay, but here it is what? Stripper. You streptococcus, you take a strippers. Okay, strep stripper. Look the same. So strippers, look the strippers. How they put the chain? They put the chain like this long chain. Okay, that means chains, chain. The cocci which is arranged in chain is streptococcus. The cocci which are arranged in grapes is staphylococcus. Then Main difference this only. But after that, what happened? We have a problem. What problem? Uh, we told, uh, this is okay. Now the stripper, it's finished. Catalyst negative, you put into uh, streptococcus. But in 
this staphylococcus itself we have to uh, we have one dangerous guy that is your staphylococcus aureus and the rest other organisms okay so how to classify it which is the one test there are many tests to distinguish but this one test which is very very important that is your coagulase coagulase negative the staffs ke pass coal hai okay remember the staff got coal coag okay coag the staff gets staff aureus if it is coagulase positive it is staff aureus if it is negative it is called cones cones full name is coagulase negative staphylococcus i'm going to talk about it two important bacteria one is streptococcus epidermidis epidermis other one is your staphylococcus saprophyticus we have questions on that also an important question is going to come saprophyticus we are going to talk about that now okay so this is very important okay remember cat and this thing grapes for your staphylococcus very easy strippers they have a long chain so anything gpc in chain like this comes that is your streptococcus it's your streptococcus so they are catalyst negative catalyst positive um, and then coagulase positive is staph aureus rest will be oh, coagulase is negative then it is cones very simple not a big uh, this thing so i'm sure now you will never get confused with the staph and streptococcus okay because both the infections are almost you know overlapping skin infections they cause okay now look look at this this question now the next question uh, the patient uh, the patient presented with a pustular skin lesion some skin lesion has come on gram stain the following image was seen so what you are seeing here this image was given now they asked which of the following test will not confirm the diagnosis which is not okay so first of all looking at the image what you are going to say you say that this is your grape like appearance so when it's grape it is staphylococcus when you have grape like appearance it is staphylococcus and remember when you talk about a pustular lesion it could be anything it could be folliculitis it could be furuncle it could be carbuncle it could be boil any abscess anything the most common cause is staphylococcus aureus aureus is the king of infections so though this this gram positive could be any staphylococcus but based on the question is given pustular lesion any pus filled lesion the most common organism would be staphylococcus aureus now they say this there's one test that will not confirm it is staphylococcus there are some important tests you must know what is the thing you the shortcut if you want there are many shortcuts okay so i will tell you also uh, but at least you should know these things coagulase coagulase okay coagulase is definitely we just spoke now okay coagulase phosphatase definitely yes mannitol definitely yes these are the tests to confirm staphylococcus aureus which is not optochin optochin comes in which we we remember the shortcut bio bile solubility inulin fermentation and optochin this is for streptococcus pneumoniae or pneumococcus streptococcus pneumoniae so that is wrong answer this is for streptococcus pneumoniae which causes pneumonia so that is out rest all please remember please these tests even other apart from coagulase phosphatase mantra salt tagger there are other tests also dna is also specific for streptococcus other one is phosphatase phosphatase these are the these five enzymes you have to remember by any means okay not so difficult dna is phosphatase one is thermonuclease also thermonucleases thermonuclease dna they all are you know very catastrophic for staphylococcus aureus so these are the tests when you want to confirm you can do all these tests and mannitol salt agarose staphs like all these things remember staph aureus likes all these things mannitol phosphatase coagulase whereas optochin is for streptococcus pneumoniae that's it. okay so you easily choose this out okay optochin is not next question look at the next question here it is a patient with history of prosthetic valve surgery see that's a prosthetic valve surgery replacement surgery 6 month ago and now the patient came with high grade fever chillness and shock so it more looks like a sepsis no so the, the first of all based on this clinical future it looks like patient is having sepsis i'm going to write here patient is having sepsis and after sepsis the blood culture was done and it came organism was isolated and then they did a gram stain when they did a gram stain they got this picture again what grape like cluster so it is what staphylococcus it is staphylococcus okay some staphylococcus we don't know which one staphylococcus aureus or it could be cones you know coagulase negative staphylococcus but staphylococcus has come now beyond the gram stain and the following picture was seen here it say they said it was catalase positive catalase positive means just we spoke any cat cat positive it could be any stuff but what they said your coagulase was negative coagulase was negative means it is cones so in cones again we have one test called nova biosin nova biosin nova biosin is positive means nova nova biosin 
positive means that is characteristic for which one by this time you must be knowing nova got skin infection skin is epidermidis okay epidermidis like nova got a skin epidermidis also give you clue later but now remember nova means that is a epidermidis so just answer is staphylococcus epidermidis okay now we'll come to that also here we're talking about prosthetic wall replacement surgery any prosthetic wall the most common organ is cones in cones which one staphylococcus epidermidis so your answer is staphylococcus epidermidis okay remember so don't forget uh, now, I will come here now because infective endocarditis always you can know. You know that there's a question always. Prosthetic wall, infective endocarditis, overall, overall, the most common cause is again what? Staphylococcus epidermidis. And most overall, most common cause. Early prosthetic, E for early, E for staphylococcus epidermidis. Same answer, it's the same. And that is within one year of prosthetic surgery, if the patient is getting sepsis, means you think about staphylococcus uh, epidermidis. Late wall, who is late? Who is late? Our, our Virat Kohli is late. Very dense. Very, very, very in the Shevaka, Virat Kohli, whoever you want to be, he's late. Always late. For exam purpose, this is easy to remember. He is late, number one, late prosthetic. Subacute, he has a subacute because he has a damaged heart, okay? So his heart is damaged, you know, by a lot of girls or whatever. So remember, any subacute and damage, it is Virat Kohli. Virat, Viridens, okay? Remember like that. It's easy to remember, okay? Virat Kohli, okay? Anushka broke this heart, um, broke this heart, okay? And a subacute infant endocarditis. So this is a prosthetic wall. But remember, overall, overall, if they ask you infective endocarditis, most common cause, acute infective endocarditis, you know, IV drug users, IV drug users, Okay, hospital acquired anything over and particular, it is your staphylococcus aureus. Only for prosthetic wall, it is different. Prosthetic wall, you have to say epidermidis. Epidermidis, and for late, it is staphylococcus aureus. Remember this one. This is very important. Okay, you can have any one of this question. Overall, anything over and particular is IV drug uh, using everything. This one, staphylococcus aureus. But any uh, prosthetic wall related, it could be epidermidis. Okay, that's it. And anything, uh, not only that, a prosthetic, not only prosthetic, any the IV cannula, IV cannula infection or any catheter related infection it is always epidermidis epidermis easily what it goes the infection that's one thing you should remember okay right now next now 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 look at this one next question another easy question a chronic alcoholic patient you can see a chronic alcoholic patient yes a chronic alcoholic patient came with fever weight loss Cough with sputum for two weeks. Okay. Something related with pneumonia. Okay. Fever is a weight loss, is there cough with sputum? Yeah, pneumonia. It could be tuberculosis also, but the symptom of more pneumonia, but a pain is alcoholic. In chest x-ray, lower pneumonia was today. You know, whenever you think about lower pneumonia, your mind the most common, anything it could be, but at least one thing very commonly known as streptococcus pneumonia is very common. Okay, pneumonia you should automatically come in your mind. Okay, yes. Then another one is your clepsula also in alcoholic patient, you will have pneumonia, we'll come to that question also. But here what happened, look, they did a sputum sample and then culture grew and then they did a gram stain. They did a gram stain. Look at this gram stain. This is so different. Why? Here it looks, it's a gram positive cocci only. It's a gram positive cocci, but diplococci. Diplococci, okay. Diplococci, it's a gram positive cocci, but in diplococci. There's only one and look at the shape. It is looking like a lanceolate, no? Lanceolate, we call it as lanceolate. Lanceolate. So lanceolate shape, lanceolate means like a leaf and uh, lower pneumonia. This is very, which one? Which streptococcus? Streptococcus pneumonia. Diplococcus means it is streptococcus pneumonia or pneumococcus. Okay, both are right. The same name. Streptococcus pneumonia. Just now here they haven't given. They are very smart. They are told which test will confirm it is streptococcus pneumonia was the question. So if this is the question they're going to ask, uh, you can easily say, I told, if where did we study streptococcus pneumonia? In a plus two, in a bio group. In a bio group, we studied about streptococcus pneumonia. Don't say no. Okay, we studied the streptococcus pneumonia already in a plus two bio group. So B for bile, uh, bile solubility positive. Yeah, here it is. See, bile solubility positive. Right. Okay, B for I for inulin. Inulin is not given in the option. Okay, inulin fermentation. O for optochin. Just now we spoke. So the, your answer should be this. So optochin and bile solubility test will come. One more thing also, please don't forget carom coin. Carom coin or droughtman's colony. Carom coin or carom coin or droughtman also can be asked. Please remember this is a colony in culture. The colony will be 
looking like carom coin and droughtman. That question can be asked. So please remember that. And what about Basitas and POIR? Basie and POIR is what? POIR, the name itself gives you clue. That is for your Streptococcus pyogenes. Streptococcus pyogenes. Yeah? Streptococcus pyogenes. Basi ka pas hai. Basi got pas. Remember like that. Basi pas. Pyogenes means pas. No. So group A. That's a group A. Streptococcus. Which is called Streptococcus pyogenes. POIR. POIR already easy. So basi got pas. Okay. Now camp hippurate. We, we have a question. This was. We'll go. Who likes to do a camping? Boys from Agartala. Agalactia. Okay. We'll, that is Streptococcus agalactia. Streptococcus agalactia will give you this positive. What about bile esculin? E for enterococcus. Enterococcus. Okay. Enterococcus. And temperature tolerance test is by enterococcus. So that all out. So based on the clinical pitch, etc., you have to remember the biochemical optogen and BIO. Very simple. So one more revision is gone. Okay. Step pneumonia means you have to remember bio group. In bio group, we studied about the streptococcus pneumonia pneumococcus, which is diplococcal lanceolate shape. That's it. And carom coin drought means colony use. Very it, this much only you should know, not much. Now, next question. Look at this question. Here we see the child presented with a blanching sandpaper-like uh, body rash, strawberry tongue. I don't even move to our next topic. When you say strawberry tongue itself, I don't even have to read the question. The first thing you should come to your mind is your scarlet fever, right? If you're saying scarlet fever, you're right. Okay, scarlet fever. So the, this also, sandpaper-like rash also is characteristic for scarlet fever. So when you talk about scarlet fever, which is the bacteria? It is your Streptococcus pyogenes. Streptococcus pyogenes, you know very well. And Streptococcus pyogenes means which one? That is group A. Sometimes they'll give you Streptococcus, sometimes they'll give you only group A. A, okay? Piari, Piari, group A, stripper. Piari, group A, stripper. Remember like that. Okay, what do you have to know? Okay, so group A, Streptococcus, right. Now the toxin will confuse you. That's what I wrote this. See, scarlet fever scarlet fever strawberry no everything is red in scarlet fever everything is red 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 so red means something erythrogenic no it should be erythrogenic erythrogenic scarlet fever means it's a scarlet means it's a red color red means something should be erythrogenic so will you got a clue red means erythrogenic scarlet red you know the, there are so many lipsticks so many things you know scarlet scarlet girls must be knowing better you know very well Red, red. So the red means erythrogenic. No, so your answer is should be group A streptococcus is right, and which is a toxin erythrogenic. So you got it. Please, this is the way toxin might confuse you, and to you know you might get fumbled. There. Don't fumble. Very easy. Anything with the skin staphylococcus. I told you the epidermis, uh, epidermal lytic, and you do exfoliation of your skin. Very simple. So it's staphylococcus. Scarlet fever means streptococcus, but scarlet fever means red. So red means erythrogenic. So your toxin is erythrogenic toxin. Of course, it's one of your super antigen also. So this is one of your super antigen. Okay. Right. Now we're going to the next one. Look at this one. Now, uh, here, this question, look at this. 56 year old diabetic patient. Diabetic patients will give you a lot of clue. Okay. Severe pain was the swelling and redness of the foot with mild fever. This is the picture that's given. This is classic. Which one? If you're saying cellulitis, you are absolutely right. Cellulitis. Okay, cellulitis. So this is different. Cellulitis, you know most of the skin features staphylococcus, but there are few conditions which is caused by which one? Your streptococcus pyogens. Okay, streptococcus pyogens. So answer is streptococcus pyogens. So now let's say what are other diseases? The diseases like erysipilla. Erysipilla is a type of cellulitis only. Okay, or the cellulitis and other one is cellulitis and other one is your necrotizing phasitis. Necrotizing phasitis. These skin infections are caused by your streptococcus pyogenes. Of course, the main is throat infection, you know, pharyngitis, acute pharyngitis. But skin, it causes these three, erysipelas, cellulitis, necrotis, and there's spreading infection, okay? Why spreading? Because in streptococcus pyogenes, there is this enzyme, if you remember, hyaluronidase, hyaluronidase. So that will break your tissues, break the subcutaneous tissue between the cells tissue. So the infection spreads very fast. So this is the main reason. And also remember in uh, Staphylococcus infection, you can see gross yellow color pus. But in Streptococcus infection, because of hyaluronis, it breaks the pus. So even the pus looks very, what, how it looks? It looks very serous discharge. The word serous discharge comes also, you should click what? You should think about Streptococcus. If it's a gross pus, Staphylococcus, and if you give serous discharge, that is 
because of hyaluronic enzyme, which is characteristic for your streptococcus pyogens, and it's characteristic for diabetic patient. When the diabetic patient question comes, you think about two, either streptococcus one, streptococcus also, other one is your pseudomonas. If it's a ear infection, you know, you remember malignant or it's external, diabetic patient, the answer would be pseudomonas originosa. Another the cellulitis patient like this, diabetic patient comes thing. And one more diabetic ketoacidosis also, we have mucormycosis. So these are three characteristic diabetic thing you have to remember okay well questions are there don't worry we are coming there but because you're just going before exam please these are some fingertips you know just keep in your mind okay that's it now we have to next question look at the whenever the question is big don't get uh, scared the big questions are easy questions actually easily you can answer look at this question a mother brings her 12 year old daughter to an outpatient clinic the child complains of pain related to joint joint pain is there for this 12 year old girl and then extremities. Girl itself gives you a lot of clue. And then the mother recalls her daughter was sick with a sore throat. Sore throat. Sore throat. That is your pharyngitis. Finish. Pharyngitis, joint pain. Pharyngitis, joint pain. What do you think? It is, I think if you are already thinking about rheumatic fever, you are absolutely right. You did the right answer. Okay. So, month ago, both recovered completely without medical attention. Now, the girl, and then the mother recalls the history of the sore throat. Then what happened? The girl was admitted to the hospital for further examination testing. And then some heart-related problem must have occurred. So, what they did? They did a cardiac tissue biopsy. And they give the abnormal results was seen. This is the image they have given here. This is your cardiac. Inside cardiac muscle, something like, like you know, some nodular type of thing, some body type of thing seen. So if you if you remember what is this from pathology, if you remember, if you say Ascoff's, yes, if you say Ascoff's body, Ascoff's body, then you're right. Ascoff's body or nodule, then you're right. Okay, Ascoff's body or nodule. Okay, body or nodule, okay. ASH, Ascoff's body or nodule. So this is a typical one. This is a reaction happens in the, uh, it's, of course, you know, it's an autoimmune, it's rheumatic for autoimmune. So this is a type of autoimmune antigen antibody reactions happens here. That's it. Okay. Not details are not going. Okay. Ascoff's body. So now what happened? Ascoff's body seen is that is related to heart. So that means which one? We know that it is something. Okay. Uh, before going there, this is a, like this will go. You know that streptococcus, you first of all, let's go this. Streptococcus pyogens causes two autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune disease. Apart from your pharyngitis and all your skin infection, it causes one is your rheumatic fever and other one is your which one? Post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. We go very short. Rheumatic fever usually comes after pharyngitis. It usually comes after pharyngitis. And post streptococcal glomerulonephritis usually comes after skin infection. Anything, cellulitis, erysipela, anything, skin infection, after skin infection. So rheumatic fever, we put the Jones criteria. That's what we're going to talk now. We're going to put the Jones criteria. Unfortunately, there's no any criteria, but you know, cola color urine. Cola color urine will be there. And you know, there is nephritic syndrome. Nephritic syndrome, that's what your color color urine, their hematuria, hypertension, edema, mild edema, other things in you know. And only the test you should know here, I'm going to show the anti DNAs, antibodies positive, anti DNAs, antibody positive, okay, skin, skin, remember because it's a skin, derma, D, D, skin, derma, D, DNAs. Here, rheumatic fever, so it's a, a ASLO. Anti streptolysin O data very simple because throat related, so uh, any ASLO title would go high. That's it. Okay, ASLO title goes high. That's the catastrophic. Now, Jones criteria, do you know this one? You must have studied a lot in medicine. I'm not going to repeat again and again. It's just only for students who think they've forgotten. Okay, J for joints, J for joint. Joint means you know, which all we talked about that is the, the patient now came with that only. That especially uh, 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 the, the big joints, you know, the big joints may they have the. Uh, joint arthritis will be there. Okay, migrating arthritis. You also call this migrating arthritis. I'm not going to detail here. Migrating arthritis, number one. O for O is like a heart. Heart may valves are affected, but especially the most common is what? Mitral stenosis. Okay, mitral stenosis. Any anything can happen. Even IOTQ, anything can happen, but mitral stenosis is very, very common. Commonly happens. Okay, N for nodule. Which nodule? You know that's a subcutaneous nodule. Subcutaneous nodule. Nodule. Okay. E for erythema marginatum. Erythema, not migrants. Erythema marginatum. Migrants will come in your Lyme's disease. We go there. There's a question. The marginatum. Okay. Yes for yes comes for Sydenham's chorea. Sydenham's chorea. And I'm not going to call it. This is a major criteria. This is the major criteria. And then you have minor criteria. Also minor criteria. I'm not going to talk again because this is all medicine. It's only for quick revision. Fever, increased WBC, increased CRP, increased ESR, and in tachycardia, and the joint pain, etc., etc. All these things. Okay, this is minor criteria. So you know that there should be one major, uh, one major plus two minor, or just two major. With what happened? With you should have a 
throat culture positive or it should be aslo titer positive these are the criteria for the uh, jones criteria for rheumatic fever okay so now here here they have given directly if this is asgoff's nodule then that means what is the disease common here which is to rheumatic fever in rheumatic fever the most common disease is your mitral uh, valve disease so that is mitral stenosis mitral stenosis okay for me i always remember from my uh, pgdm ms when you are doing ms your the, the examination which you are preparing is ms md only no so mitral stenosis means there should be mid diastolic murmur so look at this question they said the patient must have at which type of uh, murmur okay the friction rub here through the friction rub no you know that because i'm not going to say friction rub and all it's common in the viral myocarditis pericarditis i'm sorry it is in the pericarditis your pericarditis okay and the harsh crescendo descendo this crescendo descendo and all uh, this comes in your aortic you know in any aortic wall disorder you know in aortic uh, stenosis it comes right aortic stenosis okay so this is an aortic stenosis here, uh, uh, sorry, it's aortic regurgitation. So it's aortic regurgitation. Okay, you have to uh, clearly see this one because it's not matter. I'm going to talk only this one. Mid to late diastolic murmur. That is the right answer. Just MS, I told mitral stenosis means you'll have mid diastolic murmur. Okay, mid diastolic murmur. So this is in your eye. Uh, this one, the crescent of descendant will come in aortic regurgitation, other things. Okay, okay. Now, next one, mid systolic click. Mid systolic click, you know, this is very common in your. Uh, uh, in your PDA, pattern ductus arteriosus, PDA, okay? Yes, okay. So at least remember for us important is my topic rheumatic fever and mid -tosinus. So I'm going to stick with this. mid diastolic murmur is characteristic best here in the apex. So that would answer. So this child must be having this murmur only. Okay, finished. Okay, so these are the few things they can ask you question like this. So be careful. Asgov's nodule, we got rheumatic fever in my uh, the lesion and then this thing. And uh, you know, Asgov's nodule can happen anywhere in myocardium, pericardium, uh, endocardium, anywhere you can have the Asgov's body. Okay, right. Next question. Now, now uh, here, let's go here to our topic. A newborn child who developed a symptom of sepsis. He had a sepsis. Okay, fine. You know that sepsis ka will come. Uh, and then uh, our, the blood culture was done. Blood culture was done. Then what happened? A gram positive cocci was seen in the chain. Gram positive cocci. So you know that anything chain, who wears the chain? Strippers. So it's a streptococcus, some streptococcus. But now what happened? They said camp test was positive. Hippurate was also positive. Okay, now let's go to, and they given the picture. This is the camp test. Then this is the camp test. In camp test, what you do? See, this is the, the uh, before coming here. Let's come here. So look at this picture. This is one. It will give you one clue. First of all, who is this? This is a boy. He's from which place? Agartala. A G A R T L A. You can ask Agartala friends. Your Agartala friends. Okay, from Tripura. Uh, this is Agartala boy. What he's doing? He's having a camp. With what? Hipporite. Hippos. Got it? Oh yeah. B for it's a group B streptococcus. Agartala because streptococcus agalactiae, because you will always confuse with group A and group B. Group A is pyogens, but group B is agalactiae. CAM because CAM test is positive. Hippo because hippurate hydrolysis is positive. Very simple. One question for sure. You can easily score with this clue. Boy Agartala, he is camping with a hippo. Finished. He is crazy. He is camping with a hippo. Now look at this here. Now you come here. So, camp is positive. Camp may what you do in the center of the blood agar plate, you put the Staphylococcus aureus. And this one, this is actually group which is giving positive here. Uh, which one is this? This A means it's not group A, okay? This A. This is the your this is your Staphylococcus agalactiae, which is giving positive. This is other organism. It could be Staphylococcus pyogens or anything which is negative. It becomes negative. So, agalactiae. So, your answer is Staphylococcus agalactiae or they might give you simply group B Staphylococcus. That is also right. So, that's what I say. Boy from Agartala. Okay. He have camping and he's doing what? The, uh, he's doing the hypocrite. He's with the hypocrite. Okay. Next question. Next question. Now, uh, once again, I'm going to come here. Yes, look at this. A patient working with the animal skin, animal skin. See this question. This topic will surely come when they say animal skin itself. Your mind should think which disease. Automatically, it should think about which one. Your anthrax. Very good. Okay, anthrax. So, patient developed a painless papule. See, this is a painless. This is a papule like this, which happens surrounded by vesicles and ulcer. Progress to do a painless necrotic tissue. This is characteristically called. Which one? S char. E S C H A R. S char, which is characteristic for two diseases. One is your anthrax, and other one is in your 
uh, in your which one you remember anything scrub typhus scrub typhus okay scrub typhus and anthrax you see sr positive okay that's fine now here uh, which of the following is not supporting the diagnosis so for that what you have to do whenever anything related to anthrax comes you have to live uh, you have to think about a south indian actress andrea okay andrea andrea jeremy her name is anthrax andrea anthrax and of course is ex boyfriend our madhavan madi we call madi okay very simple now you know well, only thing is that I want to add few things to this beautiful girl. What are things I'm going to add? That is very, very important. First of all, she is, see, first of all, look at her. She has this medosa, beautiful medosa hair, okay? So that is medosa. This is a medosa, medosa head she has, medosa head, number one. Number two, she has this beautiful pearls. She has this beautiful pearls, okay? Pearls. Then on one hand, she's holding a, Bamboo stick. She is holding a bamboo. She is holding a bamboo. On the other hand, she is holding this and she is holding a tree. She is holding a beautiful tree. Okay, beautiful tree. Okay, now where we are going? Medusa head colony. This is your typical Medusa head colony. One question. Okay, she has a Medusa head colony. This is a Medusa head colony. You go to know any blood agar plate, you see this Medusa head colony. Medusa head. I am not going to try to know. You know that Medusa head colony. Number two, bamboo stick. This is the bamboo stick up here. This picture can be given to you. Bamboo stick up here is characteristic for which bacteria? Anthrax. Andrea has a bamboo stick. Okay. Next, look at this. This reaction is what? Pearl. So that's what she, we put in a beautiful pearl because this is pearl-like reaction. In, in penicillin agar, PP, in penicillin agar, you get pearl-like reaction colony. Pearl-like reaction or pearl colonies. Okay, pearl-like reaction. Bisected pearl will come in your bordetella pertussis. That's a different story. We'll study there. One more question there also. Now this one. And this is an inverted pear tree. Inverted pear tree appearance also. Who has inverted pear tree? Andrea. Anthrax. Inverted pear tree appearance. Okay. Now, Ma, what about Maddie? Why did you bring up Maddie? Simple because you remember McFadden's reaction. Maddie, McFadden. Maddie, McFadden. Sounds very similar, no? So, McFadden's reaction. McFadden reactions means it's basically what it is. If you add a methylene blue stain, these bacteria is having a capsule. You remember, it has a very good capsule, but only capsule, this is only bacteria, which has a polypeptide capsule, usually polysaccharide. But this is the only one way of polypeptide. That means what? A for amino acid, A for anthrax. A, A. Polypeptides are made up with polypeptides, protein. Protein made for amino acid. Rest all other. So that's what this is special. McFadden reaction, when you add a methylene blue, you see the staining of the capsule. That's what it is uh, called McFadden reaction, uh, polypeptide. Okay, it's made of polypeptide. Now you go to answer all the questions so tell me this first of all the capsule is made up of polypeptide right it's right they are just not wrong only they ask poly because it's made for amino acid especially glutamate don't forget glutamate if they give also please remember glutamate amino acid is more common on agar plate medosa head colony with prostate glass are definitely yes medosa head with prostate glass is same meaning gram staining mainly to bamboo stick appearance definitely yes right next one it is an anaerobic spore bearing now they got you here now you will be confused definitely it's spore bearing it's right anaerobic definitely not and with the turner spore definitely not why because if you remember remember i'm going to write it here we have bacillus and we have clostridium clostridium we already spoke about it once again i'm repeating Closed stadium means close. Close means what? No oxygen. No oxygen. Remember the closed stadium, no oxygen. So that is anaerobic. Your bacillus, anthrax, bacilli, that is our andrea, she's pure. She likes to breathe, no? Aerobic. Pure. Aerobic. Okay. And here, the spores are center. The pores are usually center and not bulging. Not the post, not of course, and we are super thin. She's not bulging, she doesn't have any fat, so it is central and not bulging. Not but remember, Andrea is not bulging, she's not having any fat. But in closed stadium, if you have different type of post, usually terminus of everything is there, and also it is what mostly it's a subterminal and <coughs> bulging, it is bulging out. Okay, so that's what they caught you here. So, this is your your answer should be this is a wrong it's an aerobic spore bearer with. Central spores, either bacillus anthrax or bacillus cereus, doesn't matter. Any bacilli, it is center, BC, bacillus center. Okay, so that's what you remember like this. Okay, this is very, very simple. Now you got with this also. Now, next question, next question. Let's go to the next question here. 
a patient developed nausea and vomiting within five food poisoning happened within five years uh, one to five hours i would think only two bacteria one is bacillus cereus and the other one is my staphylococcus aureus i will think only these two bacteria but the clue is the food which they ate he said after having fried rice you know fried rice chinese fried rice means automatically your mind will think which one automatically your mind will think about fried rice so this is a chinese fried rice bacillus cereus is a chinese fried rice but if it is more than six, this, this is within six hour fried rice. This is, we are talking about emetic type, emetic type of bacillus cereus. When you talk about the, uh, the diarrhea type, that will, that is due to kebabs. That's due to kebabs and steaks and all. That is off, that will take almost 18 hours. It's longer, okay, it's more than six hours, okay. Six hours to some 14, 18 hours. Um, and when you talk about staphylococcus, I just told, alu pastry, you know, alu means alu potato salad. Now, alu salad, I'm writing, it's a potato salad, okay. Potato salad, pastry, cream, all the substances. So, I always say, if you forget also, I always say in my class, be serious while eating Chinese fried rice. From which restaurant? Maipa and Pemba restaurant. Maipa and Pemba. Maipa, Pemba, South Indian, very popular Chinese restaurant. This, this name will be and Pemba restaurants. So they are Chinese, related to Chinese. So you will have a clue here also. So these restaurants so don't eat food. That's my answer. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, the selective now false statement they told so this the organism is basically serious very good now selective media is maipa pemba just now i told maipa pemba is a cultured media but we made it as maipa pemba restaurants because in restaurants you buy a fried rice you will get what <coughs> basically serious so maipa pemba right answer it is acting through this is a emetic type no this is a emetic type emetic means vomit no em vomiting vomiting no in hindi you say the throat gala gala you know gala is it is a gala or gala you know gala so gala is the cyclic gmp so it's right so vomiting is through gala emetic type so vomiting through gala so this is cyclic gmp is absolutely right if it is diarrhea then diarrhea will go through anal 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 no anal region so for that it is amp cyclic amp Okay, here cyclic GMP is perfectly, absolutely right. Now it the act by inhibiting 60 years. So this or this, this is right. Act through inhibiting 60 years unit. No, wrong. 60 means 60 is 60 goes to who? Sexy Sheila anti. Sheila, Sheila, when I say Sheila, Sheila, it is Shiga, Shiga, Sheila, Shiga anti or Sheila anti, whatever you want. Shigala. That is for Shigala toxin acts through 60 years unit. Okay. Spores are located center. Absolutely. Any bacillus, any bacillus, the spore just now I told even for Andrea, she's thin. Bacillus anthrax. Same here also, bacillus, it is center. Center. Okay, BC. Center. So that's also right. So your wrong answer is this. That is for the Shigella dysentery is caused by this one. Okay, finished. We are done. Now you are so very clear. Okay, definitely expected question. You know, bacillus serious 100 times. They have asked every time they ask for examiner's favorite. So at least this mechanism don't forget. If it's a vomiting type gala, diarrhea type means it is to cyclic AMP. And that is due to kebabs and sticks. This is due to fried rice. Okay. Fried rice, fried pasta, whatever, anything related with the Chinese food items, noodles. So ideally, fried rice. When you re-eat the fried rice, you get the infection. Okay. Now next one. Next one. Uh, the patient with history of blunt trauma. With an uh, uh, old iron rod, finish. You know the blunt, any iron rod means the first thing. When you get the injury, where you will go? You will go to emergency. And emergency, what is the first injection they're going to give you? TT, tetanus. That means we already got a clue. It's something related to tetanus. But let's read the question. They developed the history of spastic, spasm. So it was spasm means it is related with tetanus only. Tetanus is only spastic. So which are the following? So that is uh, true regarding the disease. So the disease is tetanus. This is tetanus. The patient's spastic means like this. What is this? This is called as that. So many names are there. Rhesus sardonicus. You call this Rhesus sardonicus or log jaw. So many names. Log jaw, Rhesus sardonicus and uh, uh, spastic face. Devil's grin. Yeah, so it looks like devil's face. Devil's grin. So many names. Okay. So at the end, what? How this tetanus happens? You know. It is basically due to what? Inhibition of the inhibitor mediators. That is your GABA and glycine. This question also will be asked. Okay. And the toxin name is what? Usually tetanospasmin. Tetan we have lysine also for tetanospasmin. And yes, for heat stable. So it's a heat stable. Yes, for heat stable. That sometimes they ask. Tetanospasmin, tetanus toxin. That is inhibiting GABA glycine. That leads to what? Spasm. Spastic paralysis. Placid will be the uh, botulinum. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's go ahead. Now we'll talk about this one now. Look at this. Yeah, sorry. 
Yeah, the toxin inhibits, uh, which is true. The toxin inhibit, uh, yes, it's no, not at all. That is the botulinum. That is clostridium botulinum causes that. Here, tetanus inhibits your GABA and glycine inhibitory mediator. That's what inhibition gone. The, the spasm becomes more. The force of this organism is tennis racket appearance. No. Here, uh, we have terminal spores. There are two. Terminal T for terminal and we have two organisms. What are they? T for one is your clostridium tetany and other one is your clostridium tertium. T R T I U M. Okay, I'm going capital R here. Tet tet. What you do if you want to make a sound in a drum drumstick? If you want to use, if you want to make a sound, you have to use your drumstick and do what? Tet tet. Tetany tet tet. Right? Tet tet. Easy. The tertium. It is racket. Tennis racket. Tennis racket appearance. And one more thing. Where else we have tennis racket? Giardia. Don't forget giardia shape. Also a question can be asked, which is tennis racket appearance. Two tennis racket. Tertium. Tertium. It's not. They never ask so much because uh, pathogenically it's not that much. We have not seen. But tetany drumstick is definitely you should know due to tet tet sound. And uh, this one racket tertium racket. So giardia also has a tennis racket because gia girjata hai because you hit with a tennis racket. We'll go there. We have questions there also. Don't worry. Okay. Yes. Now it causes opistotonus in children? Definitely. Yes. That is right answer. Opistotonus. The child will get opistotonus. And here next option is uh, aerobic terminal spore. Terminal is right. Spore is right. Aerobic is wrong because all clostridium. Close means close. No oxygen. If you close the room, there will not be any oxygen. If you close the car, anything you close, no oxygen. So, close to no oxygen. So, your answer is opistotonus in children. Very simple. You would have easily scored it. So, this is the thing. Close to in children, two diseases. So, this is what? This is the opistotonus. If they give this position and they ask about the disease, it's a stephalo. So, close to tetany. Cause by close tetany. This is called, look at this baby. They already written floppy child. This is because of what floppy child, floppy child syndrome. That is due to, that is due to flaccid paralysis. Here it is, opposite one is spastic paralysis. This is the child goes down drools because it's flaccid. So it's a flaccid paralysis, which is caused by clostridium botulinum. Okay. So this picture or this picture, if you get, you're very lucky. Okay. Flaccid in tetany is because spasm. So it will be tonus. It will be tonus, tetanus tonus. Okay. Floppy, FF flaccid botulinum. Finished. Very simple. Now, next one. Look at this question. It's very easy and you know it. Look at this. A two-month-old child, a two-month-old child, um, a small child, here a symptom of floppy movement. Floppy means itself, that is, they're talking about the flaccid paralysis only. Flaccid paralysis. One clue, already close to botulinum. You got it, but still, let's wait. The baby is crying, drooling because of dysphagia. Dysphagia and difficult in defecation, constipation. There is constipation. If you remember, everything is D, 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 diplopia, diplopia, dysphagia, dysarthria, everything will be there, but there will be one thing you see that is constipation, no diarrhea. Remember, no diarrhea in clostridium botulinum food poisoning. That is very characteristic. No diarrhea. This is the only exception. Okay, diarrhea. That's what I said, constipation. They already given. And the mother gave history of raw honey feeding. Raw honey means, that you know, raw honey means one disease. If you forget also, bottle of honey. Bottle of honey, remember like that, bottle of honey or bottle of which food? Canned food. Okay. For canned food for adults, bottle of honey for children. Okay. So you already got, but they told to find the false statement. So it's a close to We are talking about the close to botulinum. Why I told bottle? Because botulinum. Botulinum is the organism. So bottle of honey, remember like this. If you forget also honey, I forgot. What it is? Bottle of honey. So, botulinum. Easily you got it. Okay, botulinum. So, the child level of flaccid paralysis, very right. This is right answer. The organism cultured in cooked media, of course. All the clostridium, if you want to culture, you go in which media? Robertson cooked meat media. Robertson cooked meat media. So, this question also cooked meat media. Full name is Robertson cooked meat. They do it right. The infection is due to preformed toxins. See, that is a twist there. No, it's not due to preformed toxin. This is directly due to spores in. Children, it's due to spores. In adults, it is direct to toxin. See the so this is the wrong answer. 
In adults, the same disease occurs due to intake of bottled food, right? That is what preformed. They already have a preformed toxin. They have preformed toxin. The toxins already released there. But in case of children, it is the spores which is going inside and then it's released and cause all the symptoms. Here in other in adult may it's already the preformed toxin goes. So that's what it's all different. Okay. So remember, so this is the wrong answer. This is your remember. Okay. Bottle of canned food for adult, honey for the children. Bottle, bottle, clostridium, bottle, linum. Easy, very easy. Okay. This is the expected question. Be careful. Don't miss this. Next question. Next question. I see that I don't even, I'm not going to the question. I'm seeing this picture. And what is coming in my mind? I'm seeing a blister, redness, and something, you know, like a round on bulla type. So that is definitely what this is a and, and some gangrenous thing, crippled, which, which bulla gila all comes. No, it's already gas gangrene. Already, I'm going to say it's a gas gangrene, but let's go to the question. The patient with history of RPA, iron rod injury, you went to tetanus, but road traffic injury, and the patient came to emergency with severe pain, crepitus, foul smelling discharge with a history. He had road traffic injury, and later he had developed infection. Pain, crepitus, one word is enough to say that this is a Gas gangrene. Crypitus means gas only. No. So that is the gas gangrene. We got it. Gas gangrene. Foul smelling discharge was a catastrophic. The discharge was sent to the lab for diagnosis, which was following is not supportive of this clostridium PCS. When it is gas gangrene, what is the thing you coming in your mind? Which is the organism which should automatically come in your mind? You should, if you're saying clostridium perfringens, you're right. Clostridium perfringens, I'll give you a short cut out, remember, or well child. You can also call clostridium well child. So the first thing which you have to come in your mind, close and perfect, is Nagarjun. Okay. First of all, this is uh, this is our Mr. Perfect. Perfringe is Mr. Perfect. Who is this? He is our Naga. Nagarjun. Okay. Naga. Naga. I'm going to say Naga. Look at him. He has a beautiful target. He has a very good movie. See, he has a very good target. Very good target. Second one, you see, he has so many cars, 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 full of cars. He's a car lover. Only thing is that sometimes he's a bit crazy. You know, sometimes he's a bit crazy. Why? He does a cam, but reverse. He does it reverse. And believe me, he is very late, non-motile. He never moves at all. Okay? No, never moves at all. And, of course, he's rich. So, he has what? Lot of clubs. He has club, cars. This is his favorite. Clubs and cars is his favorite. He likes. Okay. And some, why crazy one more? He drinks, you know what he drinks? He drinks litmus milk. Instead of normal milk, he drinks litmus milk. Okay. So what happened to him? In movie, he got accident and he got gas gangrene. Okay. Does it make any sense why I'm telling this much story? Yeah, you will have to know this. No other way because you have a question based on this Nagarjun story. So Mr. Perfect, because it's a clostridium perfringens. The first clue is it's a clostridium perfringens, Mr. Naga. Okay, why I say Naga? This reaction you saw here, that is Nagler's reaction. Not Nagleria fauleria, that's a parasite we're going to talk there. Your question is there also. This is a Nagler's reaction, number one, okay? That is basically an egg yolk agar. This is an egg yolk agar. You see this, um, this is a type of neutralization reaction. Toxin, antitoxin, neutral. N for Naga, N for neutralization. N for Naga, N for N. Easy, one question. Target, he has a target. Why? Because you have double zone hemolysis. On blood culture, when you have double zone, that is, you have to remember Naga. He used, target is very good. You have a target lesion, bull cell lesion, that is, you will see it where? In the um, uh, Lyme's disease also. Uh, Erythema migrants, we call, okay, target lesion. That's different. Here, we have double zone of hemolysis for Naga. Mr. Perfect, close chamber fringes. Car, car ship, bamboo stick, who is holding? Andrea, anthrax. But cars, who is the owner of the cars? Nagarjun. He has so many cars. And of course, club-shaped spore. This question was also in reason. FMG, they were asked. Club-shaped spore, can they be asked? And clubs and car-shaped comes automatically your mind should think about Nag Nagarjun. Okay. Yes. Sometimes they say, see, uh, car, even Andrea also has a car. Even Andrea also looks like a car appearance, but more bamboo stick there. Andrea, go. Car, it comes, you think about Question perfect. Because they'll give you a history, so don't worry. You'll have gas gangrene picture. Hey, why is it a litmus milk is positive? It permits a litmus milk. You get some frothy things in that litmus milk. Camp is reversed because in center, instead of Staphylococcus aureus, here what we are, you are putting clostridium perfringens itself. That's the only idea. Usually, camp, you put Staphylococcus aureus. But in reverse camp, you don't put that. You put what? You put the uh, clostridium perfringens itself. 
that's it okay non-model non-model okay so you get this uh, butterfly shaped or arrow shaped it's a camp test okay and it's non-model it's only non-model plus student remember uh, it's a non-model uh, thing okay now let's go to the options now you will answer me very easily you don't even have to think use your brain for micro it's the easiest subject like your top five very easiest subject like derma or uh, radio or whatever you think it's easy that subject okay hmm. so double zone i told double zone is basically target so nagarjun has a target he's right this is right Nagas reaction, Nagarjun. Of course, Naga, Naga, Nagarjun, Nagas. Definitely right. Camp is positive. That will cause a problem. See, it's not a camp. It should be a reverse camp. So if you don't hurry and, oh, camp means closing. No, reverse camp because Nagarjun is crazy. He doesn't make the camp normal. He reverses the camp and you put. The other camp which we studied before, that is uh, Agartala, the boy, boy from Agartala. Agar step across Agalati, camp positive. That is right. But reverse camp is only for Nagarjun, Naga, Mr. Perfect Perfringens, okay? And he has a box curve, definitely. Box curve appearance or club-shaped spore, both are right answer. So your wrong answer is camp. It's not camp. It's a reverse camp. That question can be asked. And so be ready. Don't make mistake, okay? Next one. Next one. Uh, now the next question is, look at this question here. Here, while well, the hospital is for a treatment, where well, the hospital is for the treatment, uh, uh, excuse me, one second, sorry. Just a second, just a second. Uh, let's continue. Let's continue this topic now. Uh, one second, sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yes, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Just a second. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Sorry for uh, this thing. Uh, I will stop now. Okay. Look at this question. While hospitalized for a treatment of an episode of aspiration pneumonia by antibiotics, 45 years, oh, it's a very interesting question. See, the patient was admitted for aspiration. He was uh, for treatment of an episode of aspiration pneumonia by antibiotics. He was treated with some antibiotics. And this 45-year-old man, he have episodes of severe bloody he has severe non-bloody diarrhea. So first thing is he had diarrhea and with lower abdominal pain. So there's an antibiotic history, first clue. Second clue, he was having a diarrhea in hospital only after antibiotics. So the temp they what it is, the temperature fever was there, 104 degree Fahrenheit. And CT was done, uh, the, which showed, I mean, CT of abdomen, pelvis with oral IV contrast they have done. They have seen this, this marked diffuse colonic thickening. Okay, you already got a clue. Which disease strikes you? Antibiotic associated diarrhea. Antibiotic associated uh, diarrhea. Antibiotic associated diarrhea. That is basically which one? Which is caused to antibiotic means which one it clicks? It is the yeah, Clostridium difficile. Difficile. Okay, difficile. Clostridium difficile. That is antibody you take your colon, you get a diarrhea. It's also pseudomembranous colitis. If you remember, pseudomembranous colitis. Excuse me, colitis, pseudomembranous colitis. Okay, so Clostridium difficile, antibiotic. So you see here, here this, the thickening and all happens because of that only antibiotic. Now you know when you talk about this disease, it's usually due to C. C for Clostridium, it's caused by two important, which is the one is your clinda and the other one is your other one is cephalosporin. Cephalosporin is the most common cause. This is the cause, most common cause, most common cause. Okay, it's a clinda and cephalosporin. Okay. And of course, ampicillin amoxicillin also can cause the treatment. What is important for treatment? In treatment, what you do is that. Second. Ah, for treatment, now for the treatment, one second, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Now for the treatment, what is the main treatment you're going to give here? It is either metronidazole or you're going to give what? You're going to give the vancomycin. Vancomycin, this new made new drugs also. I'm going to stress on that here. Metronidazole vancomycin commonly given. Now let's see. The vancomycin is now the you they say which is a true statement. So vancomycin is the main antibody causing this cancer. Vancomycin is causing this. No, vancomycin is a treatment. The cost of it is clindan cephalosporin. Okay. The organism produces an exotoxin that kills the enterocyte. Absolutely right. This is the right answer. 
that's the reason you have this colonic diffuse colonic thickening under because this uh, exotoxin produced by clostridium difficile, it, this is the reason it causes this. Okay. Now, clindamycin is used for treatment? Not at all. Clindamycin is a causative agent. Clinda and cephalo causes the thing. That's so wrong. The causative organism is, they said, it's a gram negative. Is there wrong? Because this is a gram clostridium. All gra clostridium, if you remember, McDonald's. If you remember, McDonald's. You remember, McDonald's, positive people go to where? Do they go for? McDonald's C is clostridium. So clostridium all are gram positive. So it's not a gram. That's not the wrong answer. So your correct answer is yes, clostridium difficile produces exotoxin that kills the endrocyte. It's a right. Okay, it looks a bit tough, so bit, but it's not tough. It's they basically they're asking the clostridium difficile. When you take antibiotics, you get clostridium difficile infection. Okay, that's it. Very, very simple question. Careful, easy question. This could be a scoring question also. Okay. Next question. Look at this. This you will by seeing the picture only, you will say. So there is some membrane is there. It could be true membrane, pseudo membrane. We'll see now. So a five-year-old child from a village with no history of vaccination. When there is no vaccination, means which are the vaccine you will think you will be thinking which vaccine? Either BCG or polio or the common polio, and other one is your DPT or the common vaccines we give in the childhood. So they say there is no vaccination history. It means any of this is missing. BCG. Okay, let's see. But what's the symptom? Now comes to the patient with because of two days history of fever. Fever was there. Sore throat was there. Shortness of breath was there. Shortness of breath means itself. You have to think something. It could be uh, any bacteria throat infection. But now they saw the pitch on physical examination. The patient found cervical lymphadenopathy. Okay. Okay. Good. So, and sore throat is one clue that it could be a normal streptococcus infection or it could be diphtheria also. But here the clue is thick gray tissue like material covering the tonsil. That is enough. So they have taken this material. Some this material was there. So most likely this is what this is. It could be a memory tumor. But here, based on the no vaccination history, I am going to think about diphtheria. I am going to think about diphtheria only. Okay. Rest all uh, not uh, BCG polyneural choke. It is not with this symptoms. Even if the vaccine is not there, you will have other symptoms. Lung symptoms if it is TB. Polio means. Uh, paralysis or something but here it is a typical throat infection they've given and membrane was there so that is enough this is a pseudo membrane pseudo which will bleed you know you know right diphtheria you get a pseudo membrane because in streptococcus or true membrane doesn't bleed here pseudo membrane will bleed all the pseudo people will bleed remember like that all the pseudo false people definitely god will punish them they will bleed not uh, here here is a child it's just something pseudo membrane will bleed one clue now you know that the media which is for the diphtheria, they asked which of the uh, culture media should be used. So this is a diphtheria. So which media I'm going to use? You know the clue. I always say, I always repeated you many times. Yes, we'll go there before going here. Uh, this picture. You before seeing the picture only, you have to tell me now. What is that? This is a low plus and blood culture you can use. The other one is telluride agar. Low plus and telluride culture. We'll talk about this media now. Low plus and telluride agar are the media which is used for diphtheria. LJ media is for tuberculosis. Bordered gangwa uh, is for your border to love pertussis, border pertussis. Chocolate agar with factor with that is for H influency, H influency. So these all are not used. So this is the typical diphtheria. Now diphtheria, I tell you one quick revision because you expect a question from here, surely. This is bull neck. Diphtheria means bull neck, okay? Diphtheria, we're talking about diphtheria shortly. Diphtheria, cornebacterium diphtheria, bull neck. Number two, this is your LSS media, low, low plus serum slow. That's what I always say to you, whenever diphtheria in the ward, you tell the, in the, 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 the doctors in the ward, the junior doctors tell the doctors not to low, you have to, doctors, you have to tell the doctors, tell doctors not to low hormone in diphtheria outbreak, okay? So tell because this is a telluride agar. The telluride agar, that is potassium telluride, okay? This is basically potassium telluride agar. Low because low plus serum slope. Low plus serum slope. Serum slope, okay? You can get picture of this also. You have to know serum slope. Now here you see, here this is, this way one clue is there. Low plus F is there. Hef means fast, no? So for fast growth, within six, within eight hours, fast growth, you use low plus. Okay, that is basically, this is the enrichment. This is enrichment media. But this is potassium telluride is selective media. Selective media, but selective media will grow after 48 hours. Remember that. 
If you want a fast growth, put it in LSS, but it's not specific. Okay. But you want a specific selective media, put it in the potassium telluride agar. Okay. That's it. So this could be, they can ask you this or this. They can give you the picture of this, this white color or this black color called this potassium telluride. Finished. Okay. Now you know the stain. Uh, you, the most important thing is that, okay, the most important thing here, you know that the granules, what is that granules name? It's called Babes Ernest or uh, volutin granules, anything, okay? Ne? So I'm not going to write Babes granule. So now what happened? You stain with which one? Albert stain. Usually Albert, we can use Ponders, Nasers, uh, Midland Blue, everything you can use, but the most important thing is Albert stain. Okay, okay. So now, uh, now when you talk about the um, uh, Albert stain, so this is the thing. What letter? Chinese letter. The first, this is, this is another important question they can ask you. Chinese letter. Number one. Chinese letter or cuneiform pattern you call. That question can come. This is the electrical precipitation. The next picture which you are given is electrical. Remember electric, uh, this theory is like electric current. Na? So LX gel precipitation method. It's already written here. That is also for uh, for your uh, diphtheria. Diphtheria is like electric. And this is a which test? Schick test. Schick test, very important, frequently asked question also. Okay. Schick test, type, uh, type 3 upper sensitive reaction. This is basically, uh, you you know that the, the shock, uh, uh, it, it checks the what? Susceptible. The shortcut is spin. S-P-I-N. It means if the patient is susceptible, you will be positive. Susceptible means spin. Susceptible means positive. The sheet test will be positive. Like this, you'll get the reaction. Uh, this firm tissue, will, the skin may, you'll get this uh, uh, reaction. Okay, heart tissue. If it is immune, if a patient is immune to diphtheria, then it will be negative. Negative. That's the clue. Okay. Negative. Remember like that. Okay. If it's immunogenic, that's what spin. S for susceptibility means positive. Immunogen if it is immune means they are negative. That's a chic test. This all chic, elect, uh, this babes, everything will come in diphtheria only. So that's what I put in this question. Now one more question so that you will not make any mistake in this topic uh, related to this only. You're going to talk with, excuse me. Ah, uh, here, which of the following the statement is false regarding the bacteria causing pseudomembrane in throat or tonsil? Pseudomembrane means it's a diphtheria, diphtheria, diphtheria. If you forget also, Chinese people are fake, fake, fake. Chinese, Chinese people are pseudo. So diphtheria, remember like that, okay? Diphtheria, this infection. The bacilli has Chinese letter or cuneiform pattern. Definitely right, okay? Chinese letter or cuneiform pattern on staining. One thing, right, okay. Next one, they produce volutin granules. Volutin granules are otherwise also called babes, earnest granule, babes. Uh, earnest granule, also called as volutin, one is volutin, metachromatic, metachromatic granules, or also called storage granules. There's so many names, these all are right. Okay, so this is uh, this is right, this is also right. And then biotypes might is produce daisy. It will come to this before that next one. The toxin causes ADP ribostation EF2 factor. Definitely repeatedly asked question. You know that there are three toxins which causes decreased. Protein synthesis, okay. Decreased DPS means decreased protein synthesis. So what are the three? D for diphtheria, D for diphtheria, P for pseudomonas, pseudomonas, S for shigella, shilanti, okay, shilanti. So all cause different, but how the mechanism is differing? DPS means this D and P, diphtheria and pseudomonas. They act by inhibiting the EF2 factor, elongation factor, ADP ribose EF2 factor, okay. But Shigala, yes for yes for 60, 60, so 60, 60 s yes unit. It inhibits a 60 s yes unit of the ribosome. That's it. Okay. So one question definitely asked. So this is also right. So which is wrong statements type C. Why? Because the biotope mites will produce daisy egg colonies. No. Mites produce a poached egg colonies. Poached egg colonies. Okay. Because daisy head is produced by which one? Daisy. When you'll put a daisy flower, daisy, this is graveyard. Graveyard me, what you put? You put the daisy. If someone died, you, you put flower, daisy flower. No. So that means which one? Gravy step. In gravy step, you will see the trade color. And of course, with the frog in the media step. If a frog had colonies in the media step, poached egg, mighty poached egg, mighties. And then gravy me, graveyard, you will put the daisy flower. So this answer should be not mighties, it should be your gravies. Danger, the most dangerous biotype. Okay. Okay. So this is for extra knowledge. So you can have it. Our rest all. Expect the question. And one more thing, all the granules, how do you stain? That's I told you. Pan, you have to remember pan. Pan for ponders, Albert, Nezers. Okay. Ponders, ponders stain, Albert stain, Albert stain, and then your Nezers stain. Nezers stain. That's it. Okay. Simple, simple, easy. Okay. Diphtheria we have uh, studied. 
you got enough. That's enough. You will answer all the question. Look at this question again. Again, here HIV positive patient with history of intake of unpasteurized milk. Unpasteurized milk. Whenever unpasteurized milk, I'm going to think. What are the disease I'm going to think? I will think about brucella and I will think about uh, coxella. Coxella and I also think about one more thing. What listeria? These are the few unpasteurized uh, clue. And then the child developed fever, uh, the, not the child, this HIV patient developed fever, neck rigidity and headache. Typical meningitis. First clue, meningitis, unpasteurized milk is another clue. Okay, this is first clue, unpasteurized milk, immunocompromise is fine, meningitis is another clue. The image was shown, the CSF first image was shown, they have seen what? Gram positive. You know that violet color means gram positive, no? This is a, any violet color, basically it is gram positive. If it is pink color, then that is gram negative. Okay, violet people, calm people are purple in color. Who are good, positive people are very calm. So they are purple in color. Angry people, negative people are pink, very red, red. So it's pinkish. They look very pinky. Okay, so violet. So violet color, you remember that. Now it's, it's a gram positive bacilli. So there's only one bacteria, gram positive bacilli in CSF. So before going, they have given you another clue also. See, they have given you differential motility. Active at 25, non motile at 25. They have given you two clues. One is the CSF clue, other one is the motility. By this itself, you should get, even if you forget also, gram positive. Once again, I'm going for McDonald's. McDonald's, gram positive people go to McDonald's. So remember this L, L stands for listeria, right? This is listeria. So any, if you remember, listeria causes, one of the cause of meningitis main in gram positive bacilli is listeria, especially in neonates. But in immunocompromised patients also. Okay, remember it's a, not very common. First neonatal means most common is E. coli and group B e streptococcus, you know, neonatal meningitis. Okay, when you talk about neonatal meningitis, neonatal meningitis, you should remember first most common is Escherichia coli or group B streptococci, that is ugly active we're talking, and then the other one is your listeria. It should come in order. Listeria is third common, but it causes meningitis. And one more characteristic feature is what? It has two types of motility. What is one is the differential motility. Other one is what? Other one, if they, instead of they give you one, which motor? Tumbling motility. Remember, tumbling. Tumbling motility also. Tum list. You know? I remember tum list. Tumbling, tum list. There's already clue. Tumbling motility, tum list. Listeria, anything. Okay. Already clues this, so you don't have to worry. So your answer is listeria monocytogens. Okay. So to confuse with L, they have given a legionella leptospira. Leptospira is a spiral. It's a spiral. Okay. Limes, it comes, uh, uh, it causes totally the Beals disease. We'll go there. Brucella, not brucella here. Brucella doesn't cause meningitis. Legionella causes pneumonia. Okay. Not this. So that's also out. Atypical pneumonia. So that's also out. So your answer should be your listeria monocytogens. Next question. Look at this. Ah, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Now look at this question. Now before going, I am seeing something like this. Some discharge is there. Some swelling is there. You see this before going. There is a swelling of this patient. Plus there is a oh, discharge. You know, there is a discharge here. Now let's see. It could be a fistula also. Something is there, and then there is a discharge. So now let's go. The patient with history of dental caries and extraction was then dental caries and extraction. And developed a facial and cervical abscesses. Facial and cervical abscesses developed. Okay. And then the drain through the sinus. That's what I told. Some fistula sinus tract. There was some sinus tract is there. And then from the sinus tract, they, they discovered this yellow sulfur granules. Yellow sulfur granules. Which is the true statement regarding this. First of all. Sorry. So first of all, whenever you have this type of discharge things and all. When granules, you call it as mycetoma. Right? Mycetoma. In mycetoma, it can be due to, uh, you call it as actinomycetoma, actinomycetoma, other one is eumycetoma, eumycetoma. Actinomycetoma is bacteria, it is bacteria, okay, bacteria. Eumycetoma, E, after E comes fungi, so it's due to fungi. Here, the discharges are yellow color, yellow color granules. Fungi it will be black color granules, okay? So that's one clue. So now we have to know this is sulfur granules, which is something black. So actinomycetoma means itself, the, the one battery which has to come in your mind is actinomyces, actinomyces. Actinomyces is really, in a revision I have talked about actually more, now I'm not going to detail. Actinomyces, again, if you remember, it comes into the McDonald's group, gram-positive McDonald's, not McDonald's. There are two A's. If you remember, one is for anthrax and other A is for actinomyces. So it's a gram-positive bacilli in filament. Definitely right. This is the right answer. But the, yeah, you're right. 
What about its acid positive? No. Acid positive, who says with this no cardia, which is friend, that is the acid post positive. No cardia, if you remember, no cardia doesn't cause skin infection, it can cause skin infection, but mostly it causes lung infection. And aerobic uh, acnomyces is not, because acnomyces, no cardia is aerobic. This is anaerobic. It comes close tridium and acnomyces, they are aerobic. Okay, so remember, okay. If you remember cab, bacteroides, okay. Bacteroides, there's close tridium and acnomyces 3 are anaerobic. So it is wrong. Cortimoxy, but no, we give it penicillin. Penicillin is the treatment for acnomyces. Or for gram positive, some of penicillin is working. So for acnomyces, it's working. So it's a gram positive baseline filament. That is the right answer. It's a gram positive, definitely. And it's a baseline, not cocci. Cocci only step down, step below. So this is right in filaments. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to stress too much. You see the picture discharge like this. Sulfur granules are coming. It is acnomyces, which is acnomycetoma. Okay, that's it. Now, next question. Look at this question. Here, they've given the questions are big. Answer will be simple. Remember, that's what I'm stressing again and again. Look at this question. Here is a 45 year old man with HIV positive. It's a HIV positive. Present with physician with a recent onset of abdominal pain and diarrhea. Pain and diarrhea was there with increased uh, level of general fatigue. Uh, general fatigue and uh, night sweats also was there with non specific symptoms. It looks more like a tuberculosis symptom, you know, weight loss, uh, you know, because it's HIV. So the pain, weight loss. Uh, sweats and all common looks more like a tuberculosis fine that is one clue but physical examination showed fever lymphadenopathy weight loss was there the blood sample was taken and then showed the presence of non-branching bacilli stains positively for zealous syndrome so <clears throat> until now i have only two things either it is mycobacterium tuberculosis or other one is it's mycobacterium uh, avium mac complex no mycobacterium avium complex avium intercellular complex these are the two things clue for me based on uh, till now i have only these two so in zeal nails and positive everything okay so i'm going to cut here acnomas is really no it is not for hiv patient especially in this case not mycobacterium tb yes or this marino will go swimming pool granuloma i don't have to do anything with the swimming pool swimming pool granuloma and i don't have any link so this also out so in these two what is the only clue Excuse the CD4 cell count was 50. So you know that CD4 less than 50. Two diseases are very, very important. One is this MAC complex mycobacterium avium, it is the severe which causes a TB. And second one is cytomegalovirus. And third one is JC Penny. You might read this, but you have questioned that was JC. This is uh, JC virus. Okay. Uh, John Cunningham's virus, JC virus. These are three common ones, but two, these two are very important. So I'm directly going to mark the mycobacterium avium intercellular. Otherwise, it could be microbiome TB also, right answer, based on all the symptoms. But the CD is, here the, the, the microbiome TB, if the CD is less than three, less than uh, 500, between 300 to 500, then I would think about it. Here it is, here it is given less than 50. So I'm going to think of avium intercell, which causes severe form of tuberculosis, okay, in HIV patient. Finished. Now we got it. So the clue is there only. So based on this, you will easily find it out. Okay, next, next question. Uh, look at this one. A 45 year old immunocompromised patient could be a HIV patient, you know, immunocompromised, came again with fever, night sweats, weight loss, cervical lymphadenopathy, swelling more than two months. Okay, so he had extracellular lymphadenopathy also, extra pulmonary uh, TB. A biopsy was done. Biopsy was done. Okay, so it's extra pulmonary TB. And then they showed the following lesion. They have shown you this lesion. See, something like this. Something, you know, you can see a lot of this uh, uh, immune cells around neutrophils, a lot of uh, uh, infiltration of the you know, monocytes and everything like this round, round, it has come. This is basically what you could change. It formed a giant cell. Okay, macrophages and all together, they form this giant cells. Okay, like this. This is basically Langhans cell. Lang, it is asked in your, uh, this question was asked in your recent, this one, which one in your? Uh, FMG exam, Langan cell, not Langerhan cell, not Langerhan. Langerhan is basically dendritic cell, which is normally present in TB, not yet. So, this is out. So, this answer is Langhan's giant cell with my, caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is a multinucleated giant cell also, but uh, it is not, uh, this is the picture is more TB. So, TB is the right answer. So, not measles, not herpes. Okay. Herpes, those two, you know, Sangs, Mayor, you do use multinuclear. Uh, in uh, measles, they are talking about Vartin Pinkindley cells. So, this is not from the uh, buccal mucosa or anything. Okay. A skin lesion. So, this is from the, they, they have taken from the lymph nodes. They made this biopsy and it was giving this picture. So, this is a Langan cell, giant, multinucleated giant cell only. So, it's called as, we call this Langan's giant cell and TB. That's it. Okay. So, this is an extra pulmonary. TV case.
Next question. Another easy question here. All of the polymer diagnostic methods of microTB except you know that when you usually microTB, you get a sputum sample and you do what? When you sputum, you're getting you two things. You do what one Petrov's method to uh, clean the uh, your the sputum. You're going to add sodium hydroxide and you're going to add NALC technique. Any uh, NELC, NELC, NALC technique. Okay. Uh, like, uh, NOH and this, this is one is to de-sterilize and want to make it thin to make it uh, the you remove all the um, unwanted debris so that you'll get a pure sample you get a pure sputum you know to break the saliva out we are using this thing now this is to lyse lyse the uh, all the sputum sample car now this is a, a NOH is which will kill the common cells okay kill the common cells so pure sputum you get then you put it into other tests so you do a lot of tests but now which are the diagnostic back back alert and midget yes definitely back alert midget are automated cultures now automated culture automated culture systems so because we have uh, the real culture we do lg media we do the uh, the proper culture media okay the manual which you do automated may you do back alert midget gene expert definitely a gene expert is basically type of pca that's called cbnet CB net, you know, it's like this type of C looks, it's like a C, a CPCR. We call CB, you know, cartilage based nuclear amplification test, nuclear rate amplification test, nucleic acid amplification test. Line probe, I say definitely yes. Line probe, I say may, you will find all the drugs uh, resistant. All the drug resistance can be seen. In gene expert, only rifampicin resistant you can see, only rifampicin resistant apart from uh, the uh, diagnosis. Uh, in this one, uh, in uh, line probe, I say, you can for everything. You can check for everything. Okay, that's one good thing. A nine banded armadilla, nine banded armadilla is not for micro TB, it's for your micro -tube. Leprae, even leprosy people live in the armadilla animals in the forest. Okay, like that, you remember. Okay, nine banded armadilla. So, this is a wrong answer. Okay, so back to like midget for culture, right? Gene expert, a CB net is also right. We use it. Line probe also we use. These are the test views for microtub, but not the nine banded armadilla. This is for microtub lepre. Okay, got it. Next question. Match the following. This is a single liner, so you know already should be in fingertips. Whenever see kansa see, I always say kansa kansa got TB. So these symptoms are more like a TB. So your answer should be this. So this is A. Okay, A. TB like symptom. Philly. Phil. Phil. I always say Phil. Phil. What he does? Phil. Fortuner Carmen, he took he took IV drug, IV drug, he got a drug, IV drug, and he got abscess, and he was driving what? Fast, he driving rapid is Fortuner car, okay, it's Fortuner car, and he got Chalan, okay, Chalan, okay, basically I want to say this is comes in the rapid growers, this Philly comes in the rapid growers, Philly, Phil, Philly, okay, and it's a Mycobatrium Fortusium, Mycobatrium Chalone, all these groups, okay, so these are few things you should know, these are the rapid group, we call this rapid growers, Okay, mycobatrium fortuitum, fortuitum, and mycobatrium chelani, mycobatrium chelani. These are the and uh, fili. So they are basically cause the injection abscess. Injection abscess case will go. Okay, B. Okay, injection abscess caused by rapid growers. Especially we are talking about mycobatrium fili, fortuitum, chelani. Okay, these are very common ones. Okay, Marinum just now we put swimming pool. Mary swims. Mary swims in the swimming pool. Mary. Mary likes swimming, so swimming pool. Scrofulatium is basically lymphadenitis. Okay, scrofula, scrofulatium. They come under mycobacterium tuberculosis only. Okay, so scrofulatium, especially uh, scrofulatium comes, uh, it causes the lymphadenitis. Okay, that's it. So these are the, uh, um, these are basically the non uh, mycobacterium tuber uh, non uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. That means non tuberculosis causing mycobacteria. Okay, other than uh, TB, what are the diseases? These things. Okay, now next one. Here, a patient present with a diffuse nodular lesion. So this is the patient with a diffuse nodular lesion. You can see it's more when you're seeing picture, automatically your mind should think what? About leprosy. Okay, leprosy. Fine. Now, which of the following is false regarding this disease? So regarding the leprosy, which is false, you have nodular lesion. So now, first of all, leprosy. Uh, so leprosy may be just which form? We have the two forms. You know, we have TT form, BT, ET, but more characteristic is TT and uh, LL is the, the, the extreme ones. No, So you know that TT is usually mild. You, you, so it's palsy bacillary. Less, less than six bacillary. Here it is multi, many bacillary. That's what you get this type of lesion. Here you have just skin, you know, pigmentation, hyperpigmentation, hyperpigmentation. Here you'll have all the nodules. Here... One thing here, the cell mutant immunity is weak. Cell the immunity here, sorry, the immunity is strong, high. You know, here the bacillary is less, but the immunity is more. Here the immunity is less because the immunity is more. Here the leprement test will be positive, but in leprement test, immunity is less. 
So lepromin test will be negative. That is the main thing. Okay. Now we'll see. So for leprosy, it's a multipistory LL. Yes, right. It's a multipistory. Cell mate immunity is weak. Definitely weak. That's what is getting this methylation. Lepromin test positive? No. That is the clue. Lepromin test is positive. You know, it's a type 4. Lepromin and tuberculin are type 4 hypersensitivity reaction that you know. So it is positive only for the TT form, not for the So it's positive for TT, not for LL. So that's wrong answer. 5 percentage? Yes, definitely for mycobacterium tuber, mycobacterium uh, leprae we are using. This is also called as fight for aka. F for 5. F for fight for aqua technique, we call fight for aqua technique. We use the cold method. We instead of uh, we don't use 25 percent sulfuric acid, we use 5 percent sulfuric acid only. 25 percent is for microbiome tuberculosis. So that is also right. So lepromin test, please remember lepromin test is negative for LL form. At least remember that one word, okay? And immunity is low. For chic test, may shortcut is spin. For lepromin test, ka, LL may lepromin is negative. That at least that point you have to remember. It's an extreme one. Okay, right. So you got this answer also. I know you know. And this one, this is also a very important question. Easy question. Many times causing confusion. Which of the following are true regarding lepra reaction? Okay, the shortcut is very simple. L E P R A. So you have total what? Five. Total one, two, three, four, five. So five letters should be there. So type one plus dash should be this. And type 2 lepra reaction plus dash, you should get 5. So how much type 1? You have to add 4 to become 5. So type 2, you should add how much type? 3 you should add. So that means these are the hypersensitivity reaction. Very simple. So uh, lepra type 1 reaction shows type 3 wrong. Lepra 1 should have 4 hypersensitive reaction. Lepra 2 shows 4 wrong. It should be type 3. This is also wrong. See, it should be 4. This question was asked last year uh, in the, uh, the need PG also. So remember, okay. So it's very easy. So uh, now what happened? Type 1 is common TT. Uh, type 1 is common. First of type 1 is TT. No. Type 1 is common in BB. This is also wrong. Okay. BB. BB cream. No. Remember always first thing. First thing you have to remember when you're going out of the room is BB cream. The girls knows that you can ask sunscreen or BB cream. Okay. So first is BB cream. BB cream. So that's also wrong answer. Type 2 leprosy? Yes, definitely. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Type 2, the extreme one. So LL will come. So this is, a, this is the right answer. So to confuse you, they'll ask this type of questions only. So please be careful and get it right. Okay. So this is, this is the right. So definitely you'll have a lepra reaction. So be careful and know this question. Okay. Yes. Now next. A uh, um, three-year-old child was admitted with a complaint of high fever. Uh, admit with a uh, complaint of high fever, it's a three-year-old child, not a new unit, vomiting, irritability, petechial rashes with kernig brudinsky sign positive. First of all, the child has meningitis. Okay, meningitis. Now they told, CSF on gram stain, they showed this picture. They showed this inside the gram stain, there was the PMN cells, neutrophil cells, and with neutrophil cells, you see this diplococci, and it is a Gram negative diplococci. It's a gram negative diplococci. Whenever you have gram negative diplococci, you think about nasiria. Nasiria. And nasiria may gonococcus will be causing the sexual transmitted disease. So the only possibility is meningitis. Nasiria, meningitis, or meningococcus. So we got the answer. We got the clue. This is a typical nasiria meningitis uh, causing meningitis infection. Now, nasiria meningitis, we're going to talk about it. Optochin and inulin positive? No, that is for streptococcus pneumoniae. Wrong answer. As a complication, because water can perineum? No, water can perineum is catastrophic for your nasiria gonorrhea. Here, what is the complication of this one? Nasiria meningitis. Remember, water house prediction syndrome. Water, water, so don't get confused. Water house Friedrich, Friedrichsen syndrome. Excuse me. Water prediction syndrome. So this is also wrong. This is for gonorrhea. That's a wrong statement. Need X and uh, V factor. X and V factor is basically for H influence C. H in the hemophilus. Hemophilus. They need. They from blood. They need these two factors. X and V factor. That's also wrong answer. It causes disease in the membrane attack deficiency complex. Yes. Complement, if you remember, C5 to C9 complex deficiency, the most common disease is nasiria, any nasal infection, but typically we talk about nasal meningitis. This. So that is the right answer. See the twist here. Okay. And if you remember, one more sign also, this particular rashes 
uh, when it is sepsis, it spreads also called purpura fulminans. Purpura fulminans rash, water house prediction syndrome. These words are characteristic for Neisseria meningitis. Don't forget. Okay. So, it is uh, in complement uh, membrane attack, the final complement, you know, the total membrane complex, you say, you know, final membrane complex. See if it's in deficiency, me, this question also asked. Complement deficiency, me, it's common. So, this is the clue. So, you got it. Okay. So, don't make mistakes. So, this is another uh, easy question. You can't make any mistake. So now look at the next question. Read the next question. A 26 year old, a 26 year old male with a history of unprotected sex. Sorry, one second. Ah, yes. A 26 year old male with history of unprotected sex. With the multiple partners develop the urethral discharge and painful urination. Okay, urethral discharge, painful urination. Gram stain showed the following image, which is false. Okay, unprotected sex means of STD. And you are seeing here urethral discharge. So that is urethritis. When you talk about urethritis, two diseases only. What are they? One is your gonococcus, gonorrhea, nasiria, gonorrhea. Other one is your chlamydia. Chlamydia. Okay, these are the two infections you have to remember. Other urea plus one, there's a rare, don't take it. So, urethritis is only these two. This better is very, very common. So, here it is intracellular. You see inside the cell, you see diplococci. Okay, so it is what? It is basically, it's a kidney shaped diplococci. Kidney gram, again, gram negative, kidney shaped diplococcus inside the thing. And that is to a patient's urethral discharge. May if you're getting painful discharge, it is definitely gonorrhea, nasiria gonorrhea. Okay, we are talking about nasiria gonorrhea here. In nasiria gonorrhea, what's the treatment of choice? Septriaction is the treatment of choice? Definitely right. Tire Martin media can be said to be definitely right. I told Nisha's boyfriend, Nisha, she, uh, Nisha, what happened? Her boyfriend is from New York. He's a chocolate boy. He's a chocolate boy. Chocolate boy from New York named Tyre Martin. Tyre Martin. Okay. So what are the media? Chocolate agar you use. Modified New York agar you use. Tyre Martin also you use. Okay. And uh, 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 one more thing. Carry player are used to transport? No. Which is the transport media? Emmys and Strouds. Because Nisha aims to start marrying start loving his new York boyfriend tyre martin okay aims emmy starts this is in the discussion class up there now i'm not going to stress if you have time go through it otherwise it's okay fine now only i will discuss everything you're interested to me and perihepatitis is one of the rare complex yes for both colon and chlamydia perihepatitis basically is called fitz hugh curtis syndrome fitz hugh curtis syndrome Curtis syndrome. Okay, remember so that's the right answer. So wrong answer. Carry Blair. Carry Blair is whose favorite? Who carries the carry bug? Vibrio cholera. Vibrio's favorite media. Okay, Vibrio's transport media is the carry Blair media. So here it is the Emmys or Strouds media for gonococcus. Okay, so that's the wrong answer. So you got it. Septriaction. You have to remember. You uh, nasiri for to kill. You have to use the axe. Axe to kill the nasiri gonorrhea. Okay, finished. Okay, septriaction. Right. Next question. Look at this question. You must be already knowing the answer. I know that. That still will revise. Which of the following is true regarding this gram negative cocobacillus causing this, some gram negative cocobacillus causing this condition? So, what's the picture they've given? They've given the arrow mark also. So, this is a, this looks like what? Your thumbprint. No, so thumbprint appearance, thumbprint, thumbprint, that is typically what? Epiglottitis. Epiglottitis in x ray, you're getting epiglottitis, acute epiglottitis. The most causative organism is what? H influence C. Step pneumonia also can cause, but H influenza is the one commonly we are talking here. Okay, acute epiglottitis. Now needs only X factor. It's a it's a it's a graminitic cocobus. I remember. Okay, does it need only X factor? No, it needs both X and V. Only X is parainfluenza, and only V is um, uh, only V is. Uh, yeah, uh, you have other things also. Parent is a degree. Degree needs X factor. This is degree needs X factor. And parent is five factor. In H influenza needs all the factor. Okay. And if you remember, and it shows the satellitism in blood agar. Yes, true. I told you if you remember, my, uh, I, I told you when you talk about hemo, fill as, fill, I told you to remember Michael Philip, no? The swimmer, the great swimmer. So, Philip is very rich. Guy. So, he's, he has what? Satellite. Remember, he has satellite. And one more satellite, sat, sat, satellite. That is 
sat sat uh, uh, standard agglutination test that is brusella there is also one satellite okay and satellite shape uh, uh, space vehicle the space vehicle is coming for your space vehicle this yes. so satellite space vehicle that is your adenovirus so these all are some clues regarding the satellites okay space vehicle is adenovirus satellite lesion satellite in blood culture plate you see you, you in a blood culture you streak the staphylococcus aureus you see this dot dot dot, dot colonies around the staphylococcus aureus staph gives basically staph gives it's a hemo it gives its heme substance for this thing to grow well that's it for the hemophysic grow well the satellite is so satellite is some means again michael philip fill 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 us okay satellite he has a satellite and space vehicle adeno adenon adnan swami that we know in adenovirus we talk about it and the sat is for brucellosis these are all related to sat 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 okay it's fine and you i know that you will not forget it no effective vaccine no, of course we have effective hip vaccine no hip vaccine is given along with hepatitis b vaccine pentavalent mix included a h influenza b b this vaccine is there. so it's a wrong answer yes it just has a very good h influenza is almost eradicated it's very good response because of hip vaccine it's a wrong statement no effective is wrong it has effective that's a hip vaccine grows in body but not at all border jingo is for your pertussis it's not for your h influenza h influenza grows in the media uh, uh, there's a lot of media uh, specifically it grows very good in your chocolate and blood agar itself okay but the agar name is called field sagar f i l d e field sagar h influenza goes very well okay so that they don't ask much don't worry so remember these things satellitism you should know and epiglottis is thumbprint appearance you should know thumbprint in here thumbprint in the culture media is your borotula pertussis that we will go in a while okay next question look at this question expected question this also 22 year old man painful genital ulcer so it's a std definitely an std disease std disease first clue is std disease and yes painful so first of all whenever you have a painful genital ulcer when you have a painful genital ulcer you think only two diseases no you think only two diseases what is a painful genital ulcer one is your hemophilus ducri Hemophilus ducri, you know, cry, cry, you cry when there is pain, no? So ducri, hemophilus ducri. Other one is your herpes simplex virus 2. Ducri may this causes chancroid. Duck is soft, no? So soft chancre also you call it. Soft chancre, not hard. Hard chancre is syphilis, it's no pain. Here we talk about soft duck. Duck is soft, soft at chancroid. HSV2, it is, you, you don't, uh, it's, a, it's a virus. So you do only sang smear for that, which have multinucleate giant cell. Okay, so this. So now based on the clue, see this. You are getting this like a tram track. You see this appearance. If you see here, it looks like a railway track. Okay, railway track. So like this. This is the thing. The patient. If you see exactly, this is the painful ulcer. This is this was a chancroid. Dukri cry. So chancroid. So look at the duck, ducks, ducks. So it's a dukri, hemophilus dukri. Duck is going in a road, tra road track or rail track, road track or rail track. Like this, you see the appearance here. It's like all the bacilli, it's arranged in a track, na? like this track. So road track appearance, very simple, okay? So soft, first of all, it's a soft ducky, soft ducky, because soft chancre, walking in the rotor. Everything is a question. Soft ulcer, uh, so, which is painful, and rail or road track. So your answer is hemophilus ducri. Okay. Hemophilus uh, ducri. Okay, cry, cry, cry. Herpes simplex means you can't do stain. You'll have a multinucleated giant cells will be seen. And what about these two? These two are painless. So it's already out. They are painless ulcers. So it's already out. Okay. So the painful ulcer, these two, rest all are painless ulcers. So only two things to remember. Herpes you know, viruses are always painful. And duck cry. You're crying because of the pain. That's it. Rest all other ulcers are painless. Simply if you want to say in the last moment revision, remember like this. Okay. Right. Now next question. A two-year-old child present to the emergency room with a three-day history of coughing attack. Coughing, coughing, coughing. Too much coughing attack followed by vomiting. Okay. And her parents especially concerned because sometimes she goes blue. There is, uh, she sometimes becomes blue. See, that is enough. This is almost what oofing cough. Coughing attacks means it's a, that is oofing cough. Oofing cough. No, sorry. They have, uh, they do 100 day cough, how many, yeah, it's a three days cough, you know, it's a three days cough, so you can't go for the oofing cough now, okay, let's come here, let's see, this is basically a three days system of coughing attack, okay, her parents are especially concerned sometimes, and she's a, there was a febrile, one thing good, uh, and this is, a, yes, it's right only, see, the coughing attacks means itself, it is a sort of oofing cough only, 
whooping cough or barking cough all are right this is characteristic which one pertussis 100 day cough no 100 day cough whooping cough barking cough everything it goes towards your pertussis okay the pertussis so here the uh, wbc is increased okay fine bacterial infection was diagnosed now which of the following is result of the exotoxin now the question is very nice so they indirectly say it's a pertussis now they're asking how this toxin works how does this toxin work the shortcut for this is one is dps we talked about another way of how the toxins acting here is which of the cyclic amp mechanism if you remember we made that clue c for cholera a for anthrax e for e uh, m you make it as like a e so it becomes e coli and p for pertussis got it finally we got it so this is another way of how the uh, one is through, that is to decrease protein synthesis one mechanism now cyclic amp say one mechanism so now how this pertussis works where we are seeing cyclic amp you see block the release of acetylcholine no this is not this is more for the botulinum toxin in that element no this we talk this is only your diphtheria and other one is your pseudomonas will work in this way careful uh inhibition of g protein to increase cyclic amp exactly that's what we got cholera anthrax mica so one question will definitely come from this mp so answer is there only c for cholera a for anthrax m m becomes e so e coli and p becomes pertussis very very simple and the release of uh, liposa you would know this doesn't make any sense okay that's it so this is the inhibition g protein to increase the cyclic amp finished very very simple okay so now pertussis toxin acting to this mechanism that's it Pertussis. That's a border log again. We're going to talk now. We're going to talk that also it's going to come. Uh, now, next question. Look at this. A smoker present with a symptom of that, that in bottle of purchase only, we're talking about a thumbprint appearance in the cultural media. Okay, mercury, uh, aluminum paint appearance, in gram stain, may you see this thumbprint, all those things in that purchase only. Okay, now next question. A smoker presented with a severe uh, lower pneumonia with fever, pneumonia was there, GI and CNS symptoms. See, multiple, especially you see, there is a respiratory symptom plus diarrhea is there. GI symptom means they're talking about diarrhea. And first clue, whenever I get this clue itself, I will simply jump into what Legionella. Only legions have this type of thing. But unfortunately, AC cooler, they didn't give because ideally Legionella comes with AC cooler only. We already talked so much. You know one thing. And here the next question is, Charcoal yeast extract. Charcoal is basically, it's called, it's called buffered charcoal yeast agar. Okay. So I always say legions means they are the army people. They live in the poor AC cooler where condition is not so good. And other one is they drive in the bicycle. You know, bicycle, B-O-E-C-L-E. You know? So that is what? Uh, why? You know? So B-O-E-C-E media. B-C-Y or charcoal yeast extract. So the, all the clues you have. This is going towards your ligonella pneumophila. If it's mild form, we also count as Pontiac fever. Pontiac fever given option also is right. But it's a mild form. Ligonella is the it's a atypical pneumonia, which is characteristic in the uh, AC cooler contaminated. It's not working good condition. So there you can get Legionella very, very easily. So your answer is Legionella pneumonia. Very, very simple. Okay, very easily you found it. Okay, yes. Uh, just a second, just a second. Yes. Okay. So now this question is over. Now next question. Look at this question. Now, 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 again, before going to the question itself, you guys have to see and tell me. So this is a year, say, you can see it looks something, the discharge is coming out. So this is what it is external. But very, it looks severe. So if it's severe, then I will go with the malignant or it is external. Malignant or it is external. I will think about it. Okay. Now the question. Diabetic patient. I already gave you clue. Diabetic patient came to ENT department with profuse discharge and severe pain from the ear. Anything to ENT patient coming with profuse disease, the first disease you should come into your mind is pseudomonas only. Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay, pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay, automatically it has to come. It's common. But clinically also, any case coming to us with ear discharge, when we culture and grow it, it comes as pseudomonas only. So what happened on the culture? Uh, the colony showed green color pigment. That's what. And oxygen is positive. So pseudomonas aeruginosa only. So the selective media is, before going to the that thing, let's let's revise a little bit of pseudomonas. So whenever I get pseudomonas, whenever the disease pseudomonas come, I tell my students to please remember our Ekta Kapoor. 
एकता कपूर एकता कपूर दी एकता कपूर द म्यूजिक द मूवी द मूवी डायरेक्टर यू नो हर एवरीवन नोस हर पॉपुलर एकता व्हाई आई स्टार्ट विद एकता बिकॉज़ द डिजीज कंडीशन कॉल एक्टिमा गैंग्रीनोसम दे आर नॉट आस्किंग दीस डेज गैंग्री gangri no in my times is frequently asked a question nowadays i don't know they forgot or what so please expect this question okay ekthima this lesion this this very gangrenous lesion is called ekthima gangrenosum one condition but apart from that ekta everything is colorful with her colorful that means i want to say this green color pigment producing by very few bacteria for example staphylococcus aureus if aureum is gold gold pigment other one is the pseudomonas which produces pigment number one number two. So, and then everything is colorful. So this blue color is oxidase test. Oxidase test is characteristically positive pseudomonas. And where Ekta goes, she goes very different place. She goes to Shanghai. Where she is rich, she goes to Shanghai. And there she what? She goes to swimming pool. Why swimming pool? You get swimmers here. Okay, swimming pool. She like in Shanghai. She goes to swimming pool. Get swimmers here. Okay, and everything is colorful with her. Blue pus, green pus, any pus pus colorful. Blue pus, green pus. Such as the green pus. Everything she gets pus pus pus. All colorful things she gets. another one you to remember she is always ready at the set movie set she is ready why is it set remind agar unfortunately in the movie set she usually gets what burns because in burns patient this is very very common movie set she get but everything will take a couple just make yourself some story okay pigmenting she goes to shanghai and gets shanghai fever and there she goes swimming and she gets swimmers here different type of pus okay all these things come set remind and burns patient set remind agar is a classic vein agar burns and all this stuff that's it okay so this one important thing you should remember very very commonly now love about this disease Yes. Now look, you want to answer. Cellular media set. Me, I just told. Okay, our uh, Sudamans original sir, Ekta Kapoor. She is always ready at the set. Movie set. She is ready. Set. Movie set. So set remind. Fine. Correct. Ekthima. Just now I told. Sudamans means you remember Ekta Kapoor. Ekthima gangrene. Now there are so many illnesses. Ekthima, erythema, ekthima gangrenous, ekthima migraine. So many, so many things. So at least this way you not forget. So um, okay, ekthima gangrenous. The common cause, and then this is also this is right answer. Ekthima is right answer. Most common cause in burns patient definitely yes, right. And uh, it causes the staggered stones in U T staggered stone. Not at all. Who causes the staggered stone? This is basically phosphate stone, thick phosphate stone with good prognosis. The phosphate stone causes the proteus, proteus, not pseudomonas. So that's a wrong statement. Remember, we have question staggered stone association come. The good prognosis, big big stones with the stag horn. You know the deer stag horn will come. That is catastrophic for your proteus species, which causing UTI. Okay, the urine is alkaline urine. If you remember alkaline urine and all those things, so and the very good prognosis of triphosphate stone. That is your proteus infection. Okay, now next question. Ah, so Sudamanas, you got. Now look at this E. coli, Escherichia coli. You can expect one question, so I made to match the following type. Okay, so enteropathogenic P. P means pediatric, no? So pediatric. E. If we talk about Escherichia coli, E. P. is different type of Escherichia coli, which disease they are causing. P. is pediatric. So diarrhea in children. This is right. Okay, A. Option E. E. I. I for invasive. Who is invasive? I always say Serena is invasive. Serena is very very invasive. Okay, Serena. Serena is invasive. So Serin test positive. Okay, E. I. E. C. Co. Serin test positive. Invasive. Okay. Ah, uh, this is like shigal shigal like toxin. This is like shigal like shigalosis. Shigal like toxin. K for H for you know that is your entero hemorrhagic. Entero hemorrhagic means of course automatically you will go to hemolytic uremic syndrome. Who's na who's syndrome? Okay, H is a, a dangerous one which goes shigal like dysentery and ah uh, uh, classically causes. T for T already have a clue. Travelers diarrhea. That's it. Okay. So very very simple. This is B and this is C and this is D. Okay, that's it. Okay, A B. It goes like this: B, invasive serine, H, C, and then the C. Right. Okay. So this please remember. They can ask you shortly something to confuse you. So in this way you will remember it. Okay. Fine. Next question. Look at this question. Here is interesting question. Again, to be easy, don't have to think too much. Ah, huh, go ahead. A five-year-old uh, boy develops diarrhea after eating at the fast food restaurant. Okay, he ate in some restaurant, and the following day, his mother notices he seems lethargic. He was lethargic, and brings him to the hospital. And then his blood pressure was one now one fifty ninety. Okay, little bit high is fine, but look at this. Hemoglobin has gone down. Yes, that is enough. Your hemoglobin has decreased. Platelet also decreased. Okay, platelet decreased. Fine. Ah, uh, creatinine level is increased. Creatinine is increased. Creatinine is increased. Creatinine means indirectly it is also urea. No, it's a kidney related. So hemoglobin low. And this thing means what it is? 
हिमोग्लोबिन शुड बी हेमरेज हेमरेज है ना हेमरेज वेन क्रिएटिन यूरिया मीन्स देन देर शुड बी हेमरेज मीन्स दैट इज हेयर इट इज हिमोलाइटिक इज हिमोलाइटिक ओके यूरिया यूरिमिया हिमोलाइटिक यूरिमिक सिंड्रोम so you got already clue they indirectly gave it basically hemolytic uremic syndrome so who is caused by the most common bacteria is your escherichia coli followed by shigella okay escherichia coli both are right answer your escherichia coli me eh ec is the catastic one which i spoke okay so now your answer is escherichia coli very simple so with everybody can campylobacter diarrhea rota basically everybody can cause diarrhea but this picture hemoglobin low urea going high is catastic for eh uh ec escherichia coli okay simple so you see one easy question this expected question no no missing this question hemolytic uremic whose syndrome comes automatically your brain should think about h e h e c and uh, escherichia coli okay right next question now go to the next question uh here a 15 year old patient recovered from diarrhea a week before just week before he recovered from diarrhea now admitted with a complaint of muscle weakness whole body it's striking something diarrhea was there muscle weakness was there joint pain difficulty in breathing and swallowing so it means something related with the muscle only related with muscular it's some uh, muscle and uh, nerves related only neuronal problem nerve related problem that's what breathing also problem so mainly muscular but then something is there with the neuromuscular system okay which of the following is not catastic so now anything after diarrhea this symptom comes what it is called it is called gbs gullen barre syndrome very common after viral infection usually but after bacterial infection also so when you talk about gullen barre syndrome here with the diarrhea history which is the bacteria you are thinking if you are saying campylobacter jejuni you are absolutely right campylobacter jejuni campylobacter jejuni is the common bacteria but virus the most common is zika so when you doing cam you get gullen barre or when you eating zika noodles you get gullen barre remember like that okay campylobacter i always give you club gully boy remember gully boy gb gully boy gully boy is your ranveer singh ranveer singh goes with his darling alia bhat in that movie from poor nowhere nowhere he becomes a star okay that one okay with so gullen barre camping so uh, ranveer singh with uh, alia they go for camping and they eat zika noodles and they end up in gullen barre syndrome like that you remember it's, it's, it's up to you see last moment you should be on thing you have to remember where like this in me So now Gullen Barre syndrome. As I told you, when it about the Campylobacter, when you're doing a camp, you know Campylobacter the inside camp. Inside camp, what happen? You have temperature is high because it's closed, so temperature will be high, but oxygen will be low, huh? And CO two also will be high. Okay, these are the clues. Why I say the bacteria survives at forty degree? Absolutely yes. This is thermophilic. It's a thermophilic bacteria. Temperature will be forty degree. Yes, it will survive. And it's micro aerophilic. Oxygen is low. That option is not given. Grams of seagull. Yes, you see around the camping, you see a lot of seagull, seagull birds, you know, flying. Okay, so that's also right. Darting definitely. That's what I told in Gully Boy. Ranveer Singh go go with his girlfriend darting. See, this darting is also seen. Viva darling, Viprio Palra also. And Campylobacter, both are right. Both are giving Campylobacter. Ranveer Singh with this darling Alia Bhatt go for camping. Then in Vibrio, Viba darling, darting mostly. So both are right. Okay. Alkaline peptide water is used for enrichment media. Absolutely wrong. Alkaline peptide water is used as an enrichment media for which one? Vibrio, Viba. She drinks Viba darling. She drinks alkaline peptide water. She is a darling, darling Viba. Vibrio, cholera. will never ever forget okay that's it so we uh, so these are the things so darting mode everything is right this is wrong answer this is for the campylobacter jejuni so after diarrhea when you getting gullen barre remember campylobacter jejuni or if it's virus zika virus zika noodles ke baad you'll get gullen barre syndrome these are the two things you have to remember no other option okay now next question next question if you remember here uh, look at this question the 42 year old with a history of eating food on the streets a street side is eating something he got fever on and off severe body ache relative bradycardia you know relative bradycardia now is getting a lot of problem again and again they are asking this relative bradycardia frequently so relative bradycardia headache rose spots and all are there now this more clearly they have given so with the five days and then uh, uh, last five days last five days is a very important it's within five days only getting all the symptom which is very catastrophically or typhoid fever typhoid fever he got with the uh, increased pmn cells etc etc which will be the best test at this time of illness okay this is actually i'll move my picture a little bit sir so which is the ideal test their question is which is the ideal test okay ideal test so ideal test is you know the shortcut for typhoid fever is basu 
basu b for blood culture a for antigen antibody detection that is vidal test vidal test yes for stool and urine culture stool culture urine culture blood culture huh? blood culture okay culture culture so first week in the first week the best is blood culture second week end of till second end of second week vidal test third and fourth week it is stool and urine but here it is five days only that means it is still first week only so your correct answer should be blood culture vidal abhi vidal it's not ready vidal test will be ready one week because it's less than one week no so blood culture blood culture or bone marrow culture blood clot culture everything is right answer only okay so you can write blood culture okay typhoid fever caused by salmonella typhi that's it okay fine next question look at this frequently asked question also this one uh, here uh, all the culture media is common for both salmonella and shigella except yes remember in salmonella shigella to write shortly sh salmonella and shigella the common media for both uh, for transport you know for transport media they use sax buffered glycerol for transport we sax buffered glycerol okay and for enrichment we can use what selenite hef or tetrothionate tetra thionate hef broth broths are used for enrichment okay for uh, transport enrichment and the selective media in selective media dca media can be used or you can do xld media xylosylicin deoxycorbit uh, media can be lysin deficient xylosylicin deficient media can be used deoxycolicitrate agar can be used xld ss agar you can use but all common exception is exception is your which media which media that is your uh, mul, uh, the, if you remember wilson blair okay wilson blair okay wilson is basically bodyguard for only salmonella only salmonella remember only for salmonella salman ka only for salman positive wilson is a bodyguard only for salmon not for shila not for shigella so that way you remember so only media which is common uh, all are common except is wilson blair this is only for our salmon cut wilson the black guy you know it's actually black color colony you get it uh, and sax buffer is not common for both both they share everything salmon salmon g and shila they share everything only wilson is different that's it okay fine next here Look at this media. A two-year-old child admitted in a pediatric ward with the symptoms of watery diarrhea. Watery diarrhea, rice water. Rice water means it's enough. You don't even have to think. Because in a salmonella, typhoid fever, you can have a pea soup diarrhea. Pea soup. Rice water is characteristic for which one? Cholera. Vibrio cholera. Very, very common. Vibrio cholera, cholera. Okay, vibrio cholera, the disease cholera. Rice water. The bacillus show rapid motility and not able to trace the path. That means that is basically what? Darting motility. Darting or shooting star. Both are right. If they give a uh, shooting star, that is also right answer. Don't confuse. Okay. Shooting star or darting motility. On culture media, image was shown. So this is image was given. This image was given previously also. So if it's a Vibrio cholera, you think uh, which media it should be? Either it should be bile salt agar or it should be TCBS. Thiosulfate citrate bile salt agar okay so this or this only so but bca it will be black colony you see black colonies okay here it is yellow yellow so that is your tcbs agar so where is your tcbs agar thiosulfate citrate bile salt sucrose agar this one so this is the right answer okay deoxycholate will come for salmonella out out these are for salmon salmon corn okay salmonella wilson blair also for salmonella it's out so thiosulfate citrate bile salt agar this is the culture please remember this yellow color colonies comes to the tcb is a selective media for vibrio b bc also right but bc it will be black color b for b b for black color colony so that is wrong bile salt will be there so any bile salt is there it will be black color only so out okay got it yes now next question look at the next question again again it looks like a uh, to uh, again uh, read the question once again, a two-year-old child admitted in a pediatrics ward with a watery diarrhea, which looked like a rice water. Again, rice water diarrhea, I'm simply going to put it into Vibrio cholera. Vibrio cholera. Vibrio cholera. Okay. Now, on wet examination, rapid motility, not able to that is darting motility, typical darting motility, Vibrio cholera only. Okay. Now, what is the question? What is the mechanism of this toxin? So, that is cholera toxin. Cholera toxin, how does it work? How does this exotoxin works? So, you know. Again, we'll go to camp. Just now we spoke. What is that? C for cholera, A for anthrax, M for becomes e, e. coli, 
P for perfusus, we just had one more question. A for anthrax, C for cholera. So your answer should be cyclic AMP. That's it. Okay, very, very simple. So rest, inhibition of 60 is for shigella. Once again, I'm repeating. And EF factor is for diphtheria and pseudomonas. And cyclic GMP, galese vomit or hai, G se. So two things is there. Cyclic AMP, when you talk about AMP, cyclic AMP, uh, 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 see, good people are stable people. So it is uh, heat stable E. coli. Heat stable E. coli. Here it is heat labile E. coli. This M we told E, you know, it's a heat labile E. coli. Okay. And uh, Galese, you know, we the emetic type of bacillus series, B series, emetic type also cyclic GMP. Okay, if you forget, I'm just revising you. Okay, and Kamka already told you anthrax, E. coli, but just anything they can ask. And Shigala. That's it. Okay. Now next. Next question. Look at this question. They look big, but it's very, 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 very simple question. Look at this. It will cover the whole one of the important bacteria. 45-year-old man present with the clinic complaining of several weeks of vague abdominal discomfort and early satiety. Early satiety and will come something related with the stomach, gastric-related problem. Okay. And on gastric endoscopy, they found mucosal rigidity and hyperplasia was there. Mucosal rigidity and hyperplasia. Something tissue changes are there in the stomach. The biopsy was taken. Microscopic analysis of biopsy showed atypical lymphocytes. That is typical maltoma. Okay. Maltoma. It's a type of uh, lymphoma. No? It's a type of lymphoma. So it's very catastrophic. Okay. Maltoma. So atypical lymphocytes is enough. So now what happened? The, the organism believed to be associated with this condition. So maltoma, stomach will go to what? Hemo, uh, it goes to your helicobacter pylori, H pylori, pylori. So what to do in lori function? Lori, lori Punjabi function in lori function, all are positive, all goes positive. And what in lori function? You drink malt, no? You, most of the Punjabi people will drink malt because all are positive. They drink malt and they enjoy, but next day they'll get what? Gastric, gastric ulcer. They get gastric ulcer, gastric pain because of acidity, gastric acidity. Okay, let me, I just short get. So why I say all positive? The test way, the H. pylori is the only bacteria, very few other bacteria there, Cause the important bit where everything is positive. Your urea is positive, oxygen is positive, catalase is positive. You don't have this combo in any other bacteria. That's what I'm stressing. Okay. So catalase, urea is all positive. Cup. Staph also, there's some variation, but you don't think about it. Here, based on this clinical feature, very simple. Stomach, there's only one bacteria, H. pylori. So H. pylori, everything is positive. Because in lori function, pylori, lori function, everything is positive. Okay. That's it. Very, very simple. Easy to remember. Now, next question. The next question is, uh, a 55-year-old patient present with a fever, hemorrhage, anemia, severe jointers, LFT, KFT was normal, okay? He had a fever, hemorrhage, anemia, severe jointers, okay? He gives a history of recent flood also. He gives a recent flood, okay? Now, what should I think? Somewhat, it looks like jointers is there, <coughs> ectro, hemorrhage is there, hemorrhagic, hectoro, Hemorrhagic fever was also there. Ectrohemorrhagic fever. So, ectrohemorrhagic fever is basically what disease? Wheels disease. So, the disease is Wheels disease. Now, what are the things I should know? Wheels disease caused by which one? Which one? Your leptospira. Leptospira. Now, related to leptospira, we are going to talk. Before that, let's go to this small picture. Look at this picture. Very simple. There was rain. See, there's rain. Because of rain was, there was, uh, rain was there. So, the rice field was fully affected. So, because of that, all the rats came outside. Rats came outside. Okay, the rain. So, in rain, see, who came to India? Matt. Our Matt uh, Damon, no? who is the, the popular actor, Matt. He came to India. He gave, first of all, he gave umbrella. He gave umbrella to the poor people. And second, what he did was, so th these people were seeing that suffering from wheels disease. They were suffering from this wheels disease. He thought of what? Taking them, flying them, flying them. He started to flying them in which flight? In Emirates flight. Okay. Emirates flight to where? To Korea for treatment. Okay, what is this, sir? What is this confusing thing? Everything is a question. First of all, whenever the rain, this all for leptospira. Lepto means 
poor people you know poor small poor people small poor people okay for the small poor people somewhere in up we are any state you know poor state where they were suffering where rain say so now what happened our mat came mat uh, leprosy what happened all the rats came out and they caused what is this wales disease huh? now mat came mat is microscopic agglutination test agglutination test change the color so it makes it beautiful microscopic agglutination test which is characteristic for leptospira one number two umbrella because this is the only spiral which has j-shaped handle j-shaped handle at the end j-shaped handle is there umbrella j-shaped umbrella handle or j-shaped handle they say like this or no and then what happened these are the media name fly because flesh it flesh it's media it's very confusing that's what i'm giving this em for uh, uh em media only okay it is uh, it is emjh emjh media okay emirates jet okay emirates jet amjh media korthoffs media korthoffs media these are the media which you will definitely forgot that's what i made this clue matt came and he was flying all this poor leptos period he was flying all the lepto people lepto is this poor people to Emir in emirates fly to korea to help them all okay these are the culture medias now you're going to answer the question like a pro. You're going to answer it like a pro. Okay. How tell on dark field microscopy urine thin spirals were seen? Definitely, because we are talking about spirochets. In spirochets, the biggest one is your borrelia. The biggest one is borrelia. It's very big, like this. Very big. After comes the triponema, which is causing the syphilis, triponema species. And the third one is your smallest one is a leptospira. Leptospira will be very small very small at the end they'll have what umbrella handle like this j-shaped handle that's what i put the umbrella handle okay so that's one thing so first of all dark field urine thin spirals are seen definitely for everything for spirochets you will see the thin spirals right answer they ask which is not correct common ready yes that's what three are rain rat rice field r r r okay r r right answer emj kothov just now i told they fly in the emirates flight to korea right answer SAT test is positive? Not at all. Which test is for? SAT test is for? Who is having satellite? Bruce Lee. Our Bruce Lee, Brusella is having the satellite. Okay. This is a MAT test. MAT is for leptospira. I told MAT is helping this lepto rain affected leptos people. And one more we have cat. Who is having a cat? Diana is having. Diana is like a mycoplasma. She has beautiful shining cholesterol skin. Mycoplasma, cat test. So remember, this is the wrong answer. You got it? Sat mat cat, one question expected. Sure, short question. Please remember. Okay, next. Next question. Now look at this question. Next question. Uh, here, a patient with a recent history of trucking in the mountain. Okay, trucking. Something bite him. Trucking means if something has bite him. Okay, now present with a fever, flu-like symptom, syncope, palpitation, and a typical rash. A typical, okay, see the rash. This is typical rash of what? This is target lesion or it's also called erythema migrans. Erythema migrans. So how to remember, sir, how to remember? Okay, I will tell you how to remember. It's the first. Again, it's very simple. Okay, who is this beautiful, small, cute girl? Kelly. She's Kelly. Okay, Kelly. Look at this Kelly. What all things she's doing? You have to be careful. First of all, she's drinking a lime juice. She's drinking a lime juice. And she was bored, you know, she was bored. She was so bored. That's what she's eating the lime. She was so bored. So she's eating a burger, okay? Burger, she's eating a nice burger. And she's also eating a biscuit, biscuit in the side, okay? These are the things. And when she's drinking the lime juice, what happened? It's, it started spilling on her skin. It started spilling on her skin. Like this started spilling and it started migrating from one place to another. Okay, first one. And first of all, before doing this, what happens? She always ticks her menu. She always ticks her menu. She ticks her menu herself. Okay. So you'll get all the clue here. Kelly, because Kelly media. First of all, first of all, first of all, why I wrote bored burger? Whenever you're e bored, you eat burgers. That means Borrelia, Burgdorf, Ferry, Borrelia. Burgdorferi is the causative agent of lime juice, lime's disease. Lime's juice, lime's, when you eat burger, you have to eat with lime's juice. Otherwise, it's not tasty at all. Lime's disease, this is a lime's disease. 
migrating because the lesion name is erythema migrans the lesion name is erythema migrans it is migrating from one place to another the lime juice if you put a lime juice on your skin it will migrate <coughs> you understand what i'm saying you take a lime juice and try on your skin it will what happens it will migrate okay lime erythema migrans question question tick why i said tick because it's caused by the tick or hot tick iodate uh, tick or Heart tick, we call heart tick. Heart tick also it causes many diseases. You know, you know, your uh, Rocky Mountain fever, heart, heart rock, tularemia, tick, tularemia, babesiosis, all these things are heart ticks. Okay. Kelly biscuit this is the same. Okay, biscuit is BSK media or this is a Kelly media. They are same. They are the media name, BSK media. Got it? Finished. This much only in Lyme disease. Why you have to worry? Now you will answer all the question again like a pro. Okay. Tell me now. Yes. So this is a this rashes erythema migraine. So what happened? How, how when you will get a when you put a lime juice on the skin, you get erythema migraine. So definitely it's when, when you drink a lime and burger when you're bored. So Borrelia burgdorferi is right. When you're boring, you drink lime juice and use the burger. Okay. Okay. Transmitter bite? Of course not. This is a wrong answer. We just spoke. In a restaurant, if you want it a burger, you tick the menu. Tick the menu. Okay. It's a tick, hot tick. I exoded, it's also called exo. Uh, Exoded tick, okay. Exoded tick or heart tick, they are same, okay. Exoded tick, uh, and then treatment toxic, definitely, yes, definitely. You know, these type of uh, organisms, Borrelia, Grichia, and all doxycycline is the best, it works. Cultured in BSK, biscuit media. When you're boring, you're going to eat a biscuit. See, when you're boring, Kelly does all these things, very simple, you know, all the answer. So, don't forget this okay so this is the way you keep a clue remember last moment revision means this is important more important than whatever you're reading okay this will really bring a lot of chin i'm sure you guys are going to shine you're going to shine like anything okay so but just okay just uh still you know uh, let's finish this now a 25 year old college student came with an unprotected sex with a multiple partner okay and then presented with a maclopapular rash okay they already directly came with see this rash maclopapular rash in the palms and soles and moist, painless, wart-like lesions on the genitals. Not only this, they also have this painless, wart-like lesion also. So see, wart-like lesion means that is condyloma. Condyloma. With this coming here, I would say it's more going to syphilis. So condyloma lata only. Okay. So before going to the topic, let's little bit go to the syphilis. You have to tell me everything. We have three syphilis, if you remember. Primary syphilis. This all are secondary syphilis. And this one is your tertiary syphilis. This all are, sorry, this all are congenital. Primary syphilis, we already spoke. This is the heart chancre, no pain. Syphy, less, less is less, less pain or no pain, okay? Less pain or no pain. Okay, no pain. Okay. These are the when you see the rashes on the palms or soles, you automatically you have to think about syphilis, which states secondary syphilis. Also, this is condyloma lata. The what like lesion they said condyloma lata. This also comes in secondary syphilis. And this is gumma. When you see the gumma and also tabis dorsalis, the when your spinal cord, you know, when central nervous system after tabis dorsalis, and your heart problem. This all are characteristic for tertiary syphilis. Okay. Now here congenital may this is your Hutchinson. Hutchinson teeth. This is snuffles, rhinitis, a type of rhinitis, saber chin. This is also uh, saber chin, saber tibia, saber chins, you call right? Uh, shin. Saber chin or saber tibia, whatever. So, like this, you know, the bone is tibia has become flattened like a blade. It looks like a blade. Okay. And dark ground may you'll see the Dark ground microscopy, dark, you see the spirochetes. That is classic for syphilis. Okay. Now, what are the things important here? Now, here, as we know, the patient is having primary syphilis. Definitely not. Primary, which is a correct statement they asked. It is patient is having secondary syphilis. Primary syphilis means you have to have a genital ulcer, which is a hot shanker, painless. BDL or RPR will confirm the diagnosis in syphilis may no. They are the screening test. They are for the screening. They will not confirm. They are the screening tests only. TPI specific test? Yes, definitely yes. Not only TPI, TPI, TPHA, 
TPHCA, Tiponema pallidum immobilization, Tiponema pallidum hemagglutination, Tiponema pallidum, uh, uh, sorry, uh, your uh, uh, TPHA, TPAA also is there, okay? And also uh, your, uh, all your dino, yes, these, see, because the word TPP means Tiponema pallidum specific test, Tiponema pallidum, and one more, hefty ABS also, hefty ABS also, okay? Fluorescent triponema antibody. So anything where triponema, triponema word come, they are all are specific tests. They are very specific tests. This VDL are here, just only the yeah, screening test and to the prognosis, to see the prognosis, the titer value decreased or not accordingly. Okay, yes. Tabis dorsalis is common in this stage. No, Tabis dorsalis is common in the tertiary syphilis. That is also out. So TPS specific is the right answer. Okay, Raven, these are the specific tests. And these are the, uh, your VDL RPR only for screening and for uh, checking the prognosis after treatment. Okay, that's it. These are the things you will be remembering. Now, next question. Ha. Now, this question, uh, yeah, look at this. A 22-year-old, a 22-year-old girl complains of abnormal... A 22-year-old complains of abnormal vaginal discharge. Vaginal discharge is there. The result of the wet mount examination are shown in the image. So vaginal discharge is there. So see, whenever this vaginal discharge is there, there are three things, three diseases you should automatically come in your mind. What are they? One is your bacterial vaginosis. Other one is your trichomonas vaginalis. Other one is a candidiasis. Three diseases only. Okay. One is bacteria, bacteria, and one is parasite, and one is fungal. This is fungal. Three diseases should come. Now, something they have, the wet mount was done, and the picture was, this picture was given. See, look at this picture. Let me just change the color of the pen. Maybe it goes red this time. Yeah. So look at this picture. There is something disordered cell, epithelial cell, but it is disordered by some bacilli around. You see a lot of bacilli disordered. So this is basically clue cell. You know clue cell. I always say BV, BV is wife. No, BV is a wife. Wife has a clue that husband, wife has a clue. Wife has a clue. Husband is fishy husband is fishy because he's having an affair with another girl affair with another girl in garden or somewhere whatever if you want to remember remember in a garden okay so okay why did i make this clue very easy uh, bv is bacterial vaginosis number one Clue, clue cells, okay, already give the clue, clue cells, fishy because the smell is very fishy smell, when you add, especially when you add this KOH, 10% KOH, you know, he has, see, uh, the husband is fishy because he's an affair and he's whiffing, he's whiffing, smelling the other girl, you know, he's whiffing with the other girls, whiff, whiff test, okay, whiff test is the one where you are going to 10% KOH, where you get a fishy order, I mean, smell will come, okay, and garden, because gardenella vaginalis, gardenella vaginalis, gardenella vaginalis, okay, I did have a picture, no, I don't have a picture for this, okay, fine, you remember like this one, okay, now you're going to tell me, so the, this very cat okay, BV has a clue that a husband is fishy because he's whipping around the girls, he was whipping around the girls with an affair, okay, gardenella, okay, now let's go to the option, bloody and foul smelling vaginal discharge, no, this is usually when, when you have a bloody and foul smelling, foreign body, any foreign body or injury, that time only you get this type of picture, foreign body. Profuse frothy, profuse frothy, who is profuse and frothy? Your trichomonas vaginalis, we talked about it, okay? And where you see a cottage cheese, see for thick white cottage or curdy discharges, candida. So now the only left is a BV, BV is what? Thin, grayish white, fishy smell. The word fishy smell, a gray is sufficient to say it is bacterial vaginosis. Clue cell is enough. And of course, you have the two criteria, Nugent's and um, um, Amsler's criteria. Nugent is a gram stain criteria because the bacterial vaginosis is caused by which one? One is the Gardenella vaginalis. Cardinella vagina, other one is your mobilumcus, mobilumcus, okay? So these bacteria will go high and lactobacillus will come down. That's the better vagina, you know? that's the gram state. But Nugent's criteria may be different. You will have this fishy smelling discharge, then that your pH will be more than 4.5. And then the, the second point, third point is that you do a WIFS test, KOH, you go fishy order will come, okay? And uh, what is your pH you're told, that's it. These are the things will be there for the uh, Nugent score, okay? That's it. And gram stain, you will see this closest, that's it. Now, uh, next one here. Look at this. A patient came with a complaint of headache and fever and rash. Typically, it started the wrist and the ankles and then it spread it to the trunk and form. So, the lesion started in the wrist and ankles. And wheel flicks reaction 19 and OX2 is positive, which is the most popular diagnosis. Okay. First of all, before going to that, 
Let's come here. When you talk about rickets, yeah, typhus fever, we have two. One is the fever. One is the typhus fever disease, which is fever is more here. Other one is a spots. You know, you have a rash or spot, spotted fever. Typhus fever and the spotted fever. Okay, we have spots, rashes more. So, epidemic typhus is caused by, first of all, the, the, the rickets, yeah, prava, soki. And which is the insect causing this? Which is the insect, uh, uh, the vector or insects causing it? This is a, I always say epidemic means full, it's all over, no, all over, big area. Big area, everybody has what? Louse in their hair, louse, lice or louse. Okay. And then when you talk about the wheel felix, ox 19 positive, only ox 19 positive. Endemic, very simple. Rickets are typhi typhi. Endemic is small typhi typhi. In small area, small, may you will have what in your gar, if you let's say endemic, a small, let's take a small area. In a small village, very dirty, what you'll see a lot of flea. So flea is the cause. Here also, ox 19, only ox 19 is positive. Endemic. Scrub units caused by your rickets. Uh, this is actually Orientia sutsumugusi. Rickets are sutsumugusi. Fine. Susu. Susuga mushi. Susuga mushi. And here, you know, I told uh, it is caused by the mite. Which mite? Trombiculate mite. Trombiculate mite. If you forget also, Trom, 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 he scrubs his hand every time after going to Susu, after toilet, after to Susu, Trom, mightily, mightily, he mightily, Scrubs his hand after susu. Okay, very simple. Sorry, but that is the way you know. I want to make you guys easy. So might mighty trump, our mighty trump. He scrubs his hand after susu after going to urination susu. Okay, remember how you want. So this was fun only. K is K positive. Okay, O X K positive. In scrub typhus, scrub S K na S K or if we scrub K positive, very simple scrub K comes so K positive. Very very simple. A spotted fever with three diseases. A rocky mountain fever, you always, I told, when you climb on the mountain, you say what? Ricketsia, ricketsia, rick, rick. You call for help, no? Ricketsia, ricketsia. Two times you say ricketsia, ricketsia. That is the organism for rocky mountain fever. Okay, I know you know this, guys. I'm repeating again and again. And uh, rocks are hard. So it is tick, hard tick. <coughs> Excuse me. So tick, hard tick, no? Tick, okay? Tick. So tick is enough. So, ox here, it will be ox 19 positive plus 2 also positive. Big name, so big things will come. Two things will come. Okay. Indian typhus, it's, you see, Indian, India, you know my place, Kun, I'm, my, I'm close to Tamil Nadu, Kunur. Konori, Kunur. Konori is in India. So, rickets here, Konori. And in my place, it's already the name Indian tick. So, you, I don't have to say, if you forget also in my, uh, when you enter into Kunur, my, it's in Uti, near to Uti, there's a big clock which says tick. Tick, tick clock is there. Like in Rocky Mountain, in Rocky, in a, if you're in a mountain, you know, mountain is hot tick or tick. Mountain also, what happened? You have time, no? Tick, tick, time is running fast in the mountain also. Okay. So tick. Here also same. Ox 19 positive plus 2 positive. Rickets of ox is caused by Rickets of Akari. Akari, I always say Bichari. Achari is a Bikari because this is also might, mighty. This mighty Akari. Kuch nahi hai. Negative. All are negative. So I said bichari. Okay. Mighty bichari. Bichari ko kuch nahi hai. Achari. Okay. Mighty bichari. That means his wheel felix is negative. Okay. Now let's go to the question. Very nice question. I love this question. By seeing this is enough. You know, first of all, the when the rash starts in the wrist and ankle, no, that is definitely a spotted fever. It's not a typhus fever. It's a spotted fever. That means endemic is out. Epidemic is out. Scrub is also out. This itself is enough to rule out to say because here in all these three diseases, the rash starts at the starts at the trunk part. It starts in the trunk and then it goes to the periphery, to the arms. And all. But in spotted fever, the rash will start in the wrist and ankle and then it comes to the central. One clue. And moreover, another clue, OX19 plus and 2, both are positive. So my answer is Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Very simple. Is there any sort? Rickets is one topic where every student is crying, but I'm saying, remember just this clue, very simple clue. You don't miss it. This chart is like golden chart. You know, you know this, you score I two, three questions. Easily you can, uh, by God's grace, you get. And scrub typhus, I told you, so one more thing, scrub typhus is your Esha. Esha is very common scrub typhus. Okay, that's for, uh, I mean, revision we have studied. Now it's a question, but I'm thinking only the questions and how to solve it and the important points which you should know. 
Here, next question you see, a patient came with a complaint of headache and fever. The rash started centrally and spread it out. This is one. Now I'm going to think about which one? I'm going to think about either endemic or epidemic typhus. Endemic typhus or epidemic typhus. Or scrub also, anything, any of these three. But here what happened? Bale plex ox 19 is positive. So scrub is out. So it should be endemic or epidemic typhus only. But what is the thing? My Neil Moser reaction is negative. Neil Moser is basically in a guinea pig, in a guinea pig, if you do a tunica, uh, if you put into the scotter testis, you know, if you put into the inject into the testis, there will be a tunica reaction. Tunica reaction that should be positive. This is positive only for C A R species. Okay, it's only for us. That means uh, 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 yeah, so this is for only few species are giving positive, not everything. Okay, that means I have to say, sorry, it's not called cat. Okay, cat is tunica cat positive. So here C for Konori, Rickettsia Konori gives positive, Rickettsia Akari, uh, 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 okay, Akari, and Rickettsia typhi. But it is not positive for which one? Neil Moser is negative classically for your. Which one? Rickets, epi, epidemic typhus. Okay, that is your epidemic. It is negative for negative. This picture is characteristic for epidemic typhus, which is caused by Rickettsia pravasaki. Rickettsia pravasaki. When I say epidemic typhus, it's a big level. So it is louse. So it is love. See how they're twisting and they're asking the question. But this question is rather I uh, modified and made new pattern for you so that you don't miss anything. So you always have to be clear with everything. It's front to back or back to front. Try to rule out the options. So Ox 19 itself will give you only fight between epidemic and endemic. And to differentiate these two, only one test is your Neil Moser reaction. Neil ka pasanda guinea pig. Guinea pig test is your injector lesion ka thing. And if you get a positive, then that is epidemic endemic typhus. If it's negative, it's epidemic typhus. Epidemic typhus means big level, so it is loud. If it uh, endemic typhus, it is small level, it is clean. So simply loud, and your answer is right. You got a very good. If you answer that, that is a scoring question. Your rank would have gone to very high level. Okay, so that just that's what I'm stressing it. Next question: a 32-year-old presented with this question again looks similar, but what is different? Look at this. This is again a patient with a painful urination and a purulent discharge. Basically, again, it is urethritis. Now, what happened? Urethritis discharge means they did a gym sustain. What? There in Gonococcus, they did a gram stain. You got something. Here it was gym sustain. Gym sustain, you have seen some body like this. So, this body, what is this body you are seeing? So, this is basically you have two bodies. If you remember, reticulate body, elementary body. Reticulate body, elementary body, statistic for chlamydia. That's what I want to say. So this is this type of body comes extra elementary, is extracellular, and it is very infectious. Reticulate body is basically it's it's intracellular, and it's a dividing. It's a replicating. It's a replicating. It's a dividing inside the cell. So here in this picture, we have seen that only. So for uh, chlamydia, now the question is treatment of choice. As you throw myself. It's the treatment of choice. Septroxin is for gonorrhea. Fluconosal is for candida. Penicillin is for syphilis. Here, based on this condition, this body, we are going to... And anyway, chlamydia, you can't do gram state because, you know, the cell wall is not like the other bacteria. Okay? That muramic acid replacing, that is a problem here. Okay? So, acetromycin is enough for treatment. So, that's what you give combination. Whenever you it, you give septroxin and acetromycin. Okay? Right. Next question. This is now going to cover your whole chlamydia now. Uh, chlamydia trachomatis types. We have A to B, A, B, C, D to K, L1, L2, L3 and Setaki. Chlamydia trachomatis A, B, C, you know, that's the first disease which is causing, which is causes the trachoma. That is inclusion conjunctivitis. That is basically trachoma. A, B, C, which is causing trachoma or inclusion body conjunctivitis. Also called halbuster pravasaki bodies, HP bodies. Okay, right. Now D to K. D to K causes the most of the other diseases like your ophthalmoneuroterum and non-gonococcal urethritis. The, 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 the case which we discussed before, it is a non-gonococcal urethritis, which has the typical elementary body, reticulate body, you can see. So this is this one. Now, chlamydia trachomatis L1, L1, L2, the name itself says, it is which disease it causes? Lymphogranuloma venerum. 
that is elephantiasis, genital elephantiasis they call. That in that LGM you got what ethiomine and bubose. If you remember, I always say that remember who ethi has LG product. She loves LG product. In LG tells me you make bun, bun bubose. And ethi ethiomine, ethi ethiomine. LG because LGV. And she makes groove also, groove sign. You have groove, she makes gravy groove sign. Okay. And also she fries in the LG stove, priestess. So these all are coming in the chlamydia, this one. So I'm, I briefed it. LG, ethi, it's in the discussion. Listen, you remember, LG stomach, you can make bun, you can make gravy, you can make fry the items. So who is making it? Ethi is making ethiomine. So genital elephant, yes, LGV. Okay, only lymph node will be painful here. LGV may lymph node is painful, ulcer is not painful. That's another thing. Okay, it's just brief revision. Sitaki, I told you, Sitaki means levanthal kuli bodies. Okay, levanthal kuli lily. If you forget also, Sita, when our Sita, God, goddess Sita, when she was in Sri Lanka, she was with the what having she was having a parrot no she was having a bit disputed with a parrot she was parrot sitting on her and also she her favorite flower was lily sita no the sita lord lord sita her favorite bird was parrot sitting on her set of no and then also she likes the lily flower she put on her hair beautifully okay that's it okay this is all a clue 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 now in order not to forget okay it's all in the uh, my revision lectures you can go through the two revisions which I made for FMG, but that is for neat PG also, if you have time. But now it's, uh, uh, if you don't have time, this, this is in what I'm teaching now. This is all very much uh, going to help you a lot. A 30-year-old woman complains of a non-protective cough, dry cough, okay, non-protective, past 10 days. Then she was reporting, feel uh, achy and having sore throat also she had. X-ray chest showed bilateral infiltrate, interstitial infiltrate. That is more uh, atypical pneumonia. Atypical interstitial pneumonia. Atypical interstitial pneumonia. This itself gives you a clue. Something related to Legionella or Mycoplasma or Chlamydia. But the organism causing pneumonia was uh, associated with the cold agglutinate. That is basically cat. Cat is positive, which is the false organism. So before going to the cat, you know already whose favorite not only our staff Staphylococcus cat cat is positive, our beautiful Diana also why I said Diana? She loves cat so much. Cat positive. That means this is a cat test. Cold agglutination test positive. Why I said Diana? Because there's a phenomenon called dying method. Dying method. We have dying phenomena for proteus. Dying method. M for mycoplasma. Which for why I compared micro? Because first of all, you look at a skin is full of cholesterol. Because in mycoplasma, there is no cell wall. No cell wall. There is only cholesterol, first of all. Okay. Second one, look, she loves to eat. You know, she always eats. She eats. She eats and she loves people. Why eat? Because her name is called Eaten Agent. Why say people? This is also called PPLO agent or agar also. Agar also, agent also. PPLO PPL were eaten both for our Diana only. Okay. And then she loves cat. And what is this you're seeing here? Not only that, she likes fried eggs so much to eat. She's eating, you know, she loves to eat now. So fried egg also. She loves to eat fried egg. Fried egg also seen molasses here. Don't forget when you add uh, olive oil. But here also fried egg colonies. Fried egg colonies is very, very common. So this is also very characteristic. So now let's go back to the question. So, uh, yeah. False statement. Growth and eaten just now I told. She's a people and she like. And she loves walking also. I forgot. In that picture, I told she she's walking around. She loves to eat. She loves to walk. She loves to uh, meet the people by walking. And then she's walking on the street to meet the people. So walking pneumonia, right? Okay. So it's called walking pneumonia or PPLO. Walking pneumonia or PPLO like organism. PPLO pneumonia also. A pleuro pneumonia like organism. But the symptom is also like a pleuro pneumonia. Penicillin is used for treatment? Absolutely not. Why? Because there is no cell wall. There is no cell wall. So you have to use only macrolides. For treatment, you use only macrolides like erythromycin, azithromycin, etc. But not the penicillin. Okay. Indirectly, they asked. Okay. Penicillin is not here. Organism is covered with definitely yes. Okay. It has, that's what it is. Mycoplasma. Which motility? Her skin is gliding. So gliding motility. Gliding motility. Our Diana only. Okay. Dying's method. What you do? The colony. To the view the colony. You are going to add a methylene blue. So you can see the colony very nicely. Uh, visible. Okay. That's it. This other thing. So walking, eating, cat. All favorite for dying. Dying means mycoplasma. Dying's method. Mycoplasma. Very simple. Mycoplasma pneumonia. Okay. Right. Next question. Look at this. Okay, we finished the bacteria. Very good. We did a good job. We finished the bacteria. Now we are going to the next topic. That is all uh, the uh, mycology.
very easy and always one or two questions from mycologists must ensure easy to answer now first of all before going to the question i'll go to the picture first i'll go to the picture and see i'm looking at this beautiful budding yeast cell figure of eight you know they look like figure of eight first clue for me okay they're looking like this figure of eight okay something like this they are looking so when this figure of eight means only you know i have already we have already made many discussion you guys also must have read eight and b looks b so i'm going more with what blasto blastomycosis so already i have an option here blasto based on this broad based you know b is a broad base that's also but now let's see the question uh 51 year chicago chicago is the pin up okay who has a who has a blast Gil, mr gilchrist gilchrist after his cricket match, he goes to Chicago and he has a blast. He enjoys, he has a party. Gil, the Gilchrist, the cricket player, usually after cricket match, whenever he wins, he goes to Chicago and have a blast. So other name is Gilchrist disease, also Chicago disease. Okay, we'll come there. So usually have a prurative cough, pleuritic pain and the fever. Definitely it's a lung symptom. So lung symptom means mostly it is a dimorphic fungi only. One of the dimorphic fungi only causing this. We'll talk about it in a while. So now a sample of man's purulent sputum was sent to analysis. So sputum was sent and then they revealed this yeast cell up to 15. So this is what I'm saying. In the picture, this yeast cell was given, which showed direct person staining the FDN. You can do any staining, not necessarily. You can do whatever staining, LPCB, whatever you can do here. That you can do. And this is broad-based budding. B, 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 broad-based figure of eight. Everything goes to, gives clue to B only. So blastomyces dermatitis very simple very very simple okay now i will talk before going there let's talk about dimorph dimorphic may 100 percentage guaranteed one question will come you know how to remember dimorphic fungi sir when you talk about dimorphic fungi very easy all the bad things you know comes in dimorphic dimorphic means see they with their both the forms east form and they have the mold form east form is usually in the uh, uh, at the temperature of uh, uh, body our body temperature instead of our body temperature you know 25 degree like that mold is usually grows in the room temperature that's it okay this yeast is in 37 degrees celsius so mold is around 25 degrees celsius that's it that temperature you can grow it okay now what are the dimorphic fungi in whenever dimorphic function you have to do all the bad things blast hit you're hitting someone blasting someone you're cocking someone and you're para cocking also someone not only cocking you're para cocking them and then you are doing a spotting them, spotting all the bad habits, and you are penning them. Okay, all this black hist, cock, paracock, spot pen. Okay, blast stands for you know blastomyces. Hit for histoplasmosis. Cock for cochidiosis. Paracochidiosis. Okay, spot for sporothrix. Pen for penicillin or penicillinium penicillium. Penicillin is also called Taloromyces these days. Taloromyces. But see, there is no chromoblast. This is not a dimorphic. This usually there are this. And no cryptococcus, no candida. These things are not dimorphic, remember. Okay. And no candida. These are all few things to confuse. They can ask. That is one point you have to remember. Rest all. So all these bad names, all this bad dangerous name comes are dimorphic. And one common thing, everything primarily affects the lung, lung, lung. Dimorphic function the main organism is lung. And from lung, it goes to other it can spread and cause any disease. Okay. But primary is lung, lung, lung. That's what I want to say. And not pneumo pneumocystis also. Not pneumocystis. Pneumocystis, they are obviously they are called systemic infection, but they're not common and dimorphic. That is one point I want you to remember. Now let's go to the next question. Excuse. <clears throat> now look at this. Again, a 27-year-old woman presented with the fever, chills, flu-like symptom. Again, sputum was sent and the picture was given. You dimorphic only picture will come. 100 percent one picture will come. <clears throat> look at this picture. You're seeing a rectangular shape, no? You're seeing this rectangular shape everywhere. So what is this rectangle? Barrel or rectangle? Okay. So when you see a barrel or rectangle, look at this picture. When you're looking at this, it's a barrel or rectangle. Who is standing on top of a barrel? A cock is standing. So you got a clue. It is cockidiosis. A cock is standing on the barrel or a rectangular that is basically arthrospore. So whose cock is this? This is Mr. Arthur's cock. Arthur's cock. Cockidiosis. <clears throat> and what happened? Over him, 
ठीक है सर वैली फीवर वैली फीवर और वैली रोमैटिज्म वैली रोमैटिज्म और वैली फीवर इज दी कॉम्प्लिकेशन आफ्टर प्राइमरी लंग सिम्टम दे गेट सो दिस इज वन क्लू सो यू कैन गेट एनी ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन नाउ यू विल आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन सो ऑलरेडी आई टोल्ड यू यू सी दिस रेक्टेंगल ऑर्थ्रो और रेक्टेंगल ऑर्थ्रोस्पोर व्हेन अ रेक्टेंगल ऑर्थ्रोस्पोर कम ऑर्थो हैज व्हाट कॉक ही हैज अ कॉक so cock means cockidiosis imitis finished why you have to think too much or to rectangle cockidiosis no need to read the question skip and go on make it right and don't waste time you waste your time in other subjects okay not in micro okay now a 37 year old man comes again with a cough fever weightless for a week the sputum was cultured 25 degree and 37 degree lpcpg image was shown first symptom is look at the symptom the first of all the symptom itself is looking like a tb and look at this you see the conidias here here it looks a tuberculate conidias tuberculate shape so anything like a tb tuber comes it is very characteristic for histoplasmosis very similar most common one in most common dimorphic in india is histoplasmosis in india okay so histoplasmosis now look at this why i put at this picture look at this is a beautiful ohio cave in a beautiful ohio cave oh no this one darling the guy he takes his darling inside the cave to have fun so what happened unfortunately a bat comes and you know bat fecus falls and they end up in what histoplasmosis that is they end up in tb like symptoms okay ohio because this disease is otherwise called ohio disease also called caves disease also called darling disease darling disease and bad because bad is the main reason for this disease histoplasma the symptom is very similar to histo and here you remember you will have the smallest here the the tiny the budding cell is the tiniest intracellular 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 because cave you know they are inside the cave so that's what it the disease also and is also intracellular how you want you remember but remember this is the guy who is hitting so hit you know i mean to say in the bad but then he was hitting his darling okay hitting means he is making love with the darling okay that's it that was you remember okay ah now so this disease is so what is the disease is so now you got a clue so it is a histoplasmosis hit the darling darling disease hit the disease you hit the darling in the cave ohio disease caves this is histoplasma capsulatum you got it and remember there is no true capsule this is a fake capsule if somebody ask which is the capsule the only capsulated fungi is cryptococcus this is a false capsule there is no histoplasma may the name is capsule but it's not original capsule okay it's not real capsule look at the next question now i don't even have to read the question i'm going to see this picture i look the picture this is a cart wheel it looks like a cart wheel and here niche it's looking like a mickey mouse A, a cart wheel or ship wheel, and yeah, so many names. Any wheel, wheel, wheel. Okay, Mickey Mouse. Okay. So, what is my question here? Also, twenty room is same symptom: fever, chill, flu, sputum culture. This one. So, this is a cock with the side. Me para is there. So, para cock. So, para cockidiosis. Cock is round. You put side. I'm just saying. Okay, cock. Actually, cockidiosis is in a rectangle. Also, but you have a cock. Inside, if you have extra attachments, para cock finished. Okay, and don't forget one more cartwheel appearance coming. Rota virus also. Don't forget rota also cartwheel appearance shape. Okay, remember rota virus. So two rotate. One is para cock, other one is your this thing, uh, rota virus. Okay, right. Next question. Now again, I'm only seeing the picture. I'm not going to the question at all. I see a red color uh, in the mold. There's a red color pigment. I'm seeing red pigment. and i'm seeing a broomstick broom or painting or you say broomstick or painting brush paint brush appearance so now what i whenever i'm going to see red color the actor itself who acted in this movie red is our talai talai ajit okay we call him talai ajit okay talai ajit why because this uh, bacteria name is also called thalaromyces initially they are calling penicillium now it's called thalaromyces so don't confuse sir you told penicillium but there was given thalaromyces no no no, no. i will not forgive that because this is a talai ajit who likes to what he likes to write a lot with pen brush paint brush sometimes he use broomstick also to uh, help his wife unfortunately one day what happened this bamboo stick came this bamboo sorry bamboo not bamboo stick bamboo rat okay this entered into his house 
Then what happened? He gave patar one with a broomstick. He bit, and then it got a red color pigment on its back. Okay, that's what that we got. Remember, remember like that. Okay, so this is a uh, this red color pigment and this uh, broomstick or paintbrush comes. You have to think only one person, our favorite person, Talai Ajit. Okay, Talai Ajit is more than enough to say this is Thalaromyces. So that is you are going to get it right. Going to get it right. So Thalaromyces, mar if he mar the in Hindi they say with a broomstick he he marify which one he marify the a bamboo rat. Okay. If you remember like that also, it's very easy. Okay. Right. Okay. Good. So now next one. So dimorphic is finished. Now next question you see, the patient is having a pruritic hypopigmented patch on the trunk. Common. You can see these days very young people, most even the doctors, they have this white color rash on the neck and thing. So if it's there and uh, that is basically, first of all, this condition, what is it? That is itself is called, that is basically, uh, which disease? Tenia versicolor. Tenia versicolor. The disease is tenia versicolor. Okay. So it is caused by the pityriasis ventricolor or tenia versicolor. Skin crepping LPCB. When I saw the LPCB, wow, look at this. It looks so delicious. What? Spaghetti and meatball. Spaghetti and meatball. No, spaghetti meat or it can be grapes and banana. Whatever. Grapes and banana. So who likes a grape and banana? Look at this picture. Who is she? Her name is Mala. This is the girl Mala. See her boyfriend, he got all this typical hypopigmented rash, you know, itchy rash, okay, boyfriend, so sad. And her favorite is to eat meat only, meat and spaghetti, otherwise banana and this thing. And sometimes what she do, she likes to have fried egg with the olive oil, fried egg with olive oil, that means uh, olive oil. That means you have fried egg only when you put a olive oil. So this is our mala, 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 mala loves meat and meat, meatball and spaghetti and she loves banana and the grape. So that means what this meatball parents is caused to, I don't even have to read the option. I saw the spaghetti and meatball, the, the favorite, oh, whose favorite is this? This is our malasisia purpur or pitriasis purpur. Purpur. Mala. Mala says a purpur. Mala likes all these things. Okay. Trichophyton sporotic, no link at all. Okay. This is a dermatophyte. Now next dermatophyte. Okay. Now this question will come. Definitely you have one picture of this question. This white color one. Uh, okay. So there's a disease condition and cost evasion. First of all, this is this is typically white color when you see that is called fauvus. Fauvus, you know. So who has a fauvus? Who I put out here? This is our favorite. Everyone's favorite. Our uh, Sonali Benthre. Okay. Sonali Benthre. But it sounds very much like Sean Lini, you know. It sounds more like a trichophyton Sean Lini. And yes, Sean Lini because Sonali had this condition favus few years before. Like this white color. When this white color things comes, no, that is favus catchy. So you remember Sonali, she had this white dandruff like thing. Of course, it's a type of tenia capitis. Complication of the tenia capitis I'm talking here. So it is basically favus, which is caused by trichophyton Sean Lini, which is right answer. Okay, I don't even think. Kirion is not because I'm going to show you the Kirion next to this one this is this boggy next question if they give you identify the disease and cost evasion this boggy swelling boggy swelling is basically your kirion okay who who gets it our viru our virat Kohli. see the viru he got this boggy swelling and see our girl anushka she is trying to help so viru why i said viru 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 you know sometimes he's mental you know she's he's really sometimes very crazy mental fellow okay so so it is basically kirion means mental viru has it. So, Kirion, right, right. Favus is out. Don't even touch it. So, now what happened? It's caused by trichophyton rubrum? No, not rubrum. It is caused by mentographics. That's what. Kirion, it is caused by mentographics or if they given trichophyton verucosum, that is also right. They are same only. Either mentographics or verucosum. But it should be Kirion, not Favus. Remember, that's what I'm saying. Mental viru. Mental viru. Mentographics viru. Boggy swelling on the head. Tinea capitis a complication. It will go to your uh, uh, Kirion. Okay. Very simple. These are non-missing questions. Okay. Though it's more, uh, it's associated with derma also. So I'm trying to bring it here that, you know, you, it's also, of course, micro microbiology. So you don't forget it. Now look at the short and sweet answer. If you get this thing, you're very, very lucky. Tinea barbe means barber. Barber, no? It's on the face only. So barber stitch. It's directly this option. Tinea ungium. Ungium. Ungum means ungli, no? Ungli. If you're South Indian people, if you don't know ungli, it's a finger. So anything with the fingers. So ungium is with the finger. Okay. So it's B. Pedis. Pedis is in the foot. So it is basically called athletics foot. Cruris in the jockey itch. Jockey itch. You know? Cruri. Crura. Crura. Jock. So jock itch is basically crura. That's it. Okay. So please remember that. Okay. This is also one of the easy thing you will know it match. Now this question, the 100% guaranteed question. You guys know that. I don't even have to say. If you if someone thinks don't know, please read. Now trichophyton, you have to, which one you have to mark which, um, these are all the microconid. Macroconid, yes. 
you have to match which one is suiting which one they all are dermophytes cause of skin infection any skin infection can nail fungal skin etc so that's what trichophyton what happened try so it affects all the skin hair nail skin hair and nail okay microspora microspora it in it infects only micro hair no so first of all skin is common for everything skin with micro hair so skin and hair not the nail epidermophyton fight on ends with an epi skin only all skin is there plus nail but not the hair that's it this one only trichophyton three things are affected that's fine now how to remember this one sir try trichophyton i always say you always try with pen first always try with pencil first pencil okay this is like a pencil tip no pencil tip so pencil tip micro micro macro conidia that is your trichophyton okay or pencil 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 try with pencil first then pen okay microsporum the name itself says spindle micro spindle what we do in micro this is a spindle in micro everything should be spinned or spin or spin whatever you want to remember even if forget also you always sporum so spindle shaped spindle shaped means it is microsporum i got it epidermophyton i always say what shape is this anywhere ab 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 nasal in south india they own the club one is nagarjun club shaped uh, spores in your clostridium perfringens you know our nagarjun naglas reaction nagarjun clostridium perfringens club shaped spore here one more club shaped macrocondyle ab south india you go all this names with ab nasal ab comes especially in chennai they own the big big clubs so club shaped macrocondyle goes to ab very simple you no need to know mnemonics you won't forget about all those things club is owned by ab uh, try always to write with a pencil first okay but you know the shape of the pencil okay there you, you saw the picture and, sir to nahi bola but ye kam pata nahi don't do you know the shape first spindle is like a spindle micro spindle okay so this is easy so your one question is one question is guaranteed and you're going to answer it very well okay that's next question a patient with a uh, history of tb patient with history of tb he came to the patient with a cough and the fever yeah cough and fever chest x ray was done below pgs1 okay by seeing the picture one thing i can just i don't even have to search i am seeing this round color he had an old tb infection now something new happened that is called fungal ball whenever you talk about a fungal ball it is basically what aspergilloma 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 fungal ball so what happened in aspergilloma that is basically we talking about the asper gel okay wait we go to this picture first first of all when you talking about uh, this thing the two important bacteria you should know one is the asper gelus you have to know definitely you will have question on this and mucor my causes mucor aspergillosis or mucor my causes mucor called mucor mucor me could be rhizopus mucor apsidia everything apsidia everything okay they are same family aspergillus aspergillus see the shortcut see this how it looks acute angle a for acute angle s for septate septate you have a septate okay acute and septate hypate aspergillus but in mucor just opposite wide wide angle wide angle or right angle wide angle or right angle you can see that's a right angle and no septate mucor me nothing is there mucor me no septate that's it and one of the most common is diabetic it is very common in diabetic ketoacidosis patient or any leukemia patient not anything related with the antibiotics or not okay forget that would be except this usually diabetic leukemia who is using iron chelators those patients come you see in covid also immunocompromised condition we have this mucormycosis now look at this question so now about this aspergilloma this is a high face or acute angle yes we just spoke aspergillus a for acute angle right answer they produce septate a septate wrong we just told yes for septate so don't mix a s a s now aspergillus septate i feel so this is the wrong answer some species produce toxin causing hepat definitely aflatoxin example aflatoxin causes its right answer invasive in immunocompromised of course both this and also your mucormycosis invasive so a septate is a wrong answer so simply easily you would have scored one question no yeah now next one if you get that question a diabetic patient that's what i'm saying diabetic means it's of you have to think about uh, when fungal mucormycosis headache facial pain and black necrotic ulcer when this black you know the black fungus black fungus they were saying in covid time that was basically it was basically a mucormycosis 
so it's very rapidly it's a it's a uh, angio invasive very fastly invades angio invasive it's also called as uh, uh, a rapid grower rapid grows very fast that sometimes even in the lab it, the, the lid when the close it inside the lid the lid will come out you know lid lifters they call so fastly it grows so this is this one that's basically mucor so it's a mucor you know, option if you think of rhizopus, that's also right. Mayuka, rhizopus, uh, all are right answer. Okay, not these other species. Okay, fine. Next question. Next question. The every year you know that this question was asked, and you guys must be thorough with this now. HIV patient less than CD 200, one clue. Fever, headache, stiffness. Okay, first of all, the picture is a pina. First of all, this is a this is a dark brown microscopy. Uh, uh this is a uh, yes, da, uh, the, uh, they did a negative stain. So it's not dark field, they did a negative stain. Dark pit also you can see negative stain basically India ink. Yes, India ink or it's negrosin. You know that negrosin and antique, these two are the negative stains we have. So now if you see in the negro, <coughs> I will say <coughs> what happened? You see the shining. What is that? Capsule. So when you are the only capsulated, that's what I'm saying. Histoplasma capsulum is not capsulated. The only capsulated fungi, there are a few. One which comes to mind should be crypto C for C capsule, cryptococcus. Cryptococcus should come in your mind. This picture is of I got it's a cryptococcus. But still, let's see. Vomiting the patient had meningitis, increased sensitivity to the light and the confusion. On CSF, Indian staining image was shown. Acquired by inhalation of the PG and dropping, definitely, as you know very well, it is caused by pages. It's right. That question answer is right. The cryptococcus meningitis usually caused by PG and dropping. First of all, less than 200 is a, gives you clue. There are three diseases in less than 200 comes. So remember, one is your cryptococcus. Toxoplasma and pneumocystis. These are three. This is have to come in your mind. Okay. Then dimorphic fungi. It's a dimorphic? No. It's not coming in the heat blast case. It's not coming. It's not in the heat blast or cog paracogma. So it's dimorphic is wrong. Latex agglutination test is detects the polysaccharide capsule. Definitely, yes. This is latex is a fast and rapid and more specific also. Instead of you waiting for this uh, growth in the culture or India state, you do latex. It's very specific also. Amphotericin B and flucidocin, definitely they are the treatment of amphotericin B, definitely because it's a systemic uh, fungal infection. So amphotericin, yes. Now, next question. Hmm. HIV positive patient. Again, CD4 less than 400. Okay. With all three diseases, crypto, pneumocystis, toxoplasma are common. So now let's see. The picture also given. So the cough, fever, chest pain was given, symptoms of pulna, and then X-ray showed interstitial pneumonia. Lung biopsy was done and they did the methinamine silver. You got it. What does it look like? Which ball? Ping pong, ping pong. So two clues. One is CD420 and then ping pong ball appearance. It's black color cyst. Okay, it's more like a, it looks like a parasite. Ideally, it is a, uh, it is a fungal, but uh, the based on DNA sequence. But when you look microscope, it looks like a parasite. That is not. So this type of confusion crossing plus CD for less than 200 is your pneumocystis zero. We see this question also can be asked. Uh, it, that's what we're doing, methylamine silver stain. Normally, you, you see in stain, silver staining, when you take biopsy and you do the stain, you'll see this ping pong ball, that those are the cysts. And trophozoites all will be green in because it's not visible here. So this is the ping pong ball appearance. This is enough to say when CD for less than 200, you can mark this easily. Okay, right. Next question. Again, again, again. I don't want to see if I, see, if I get this picture, I will be more than happy. Uh, I'll be seeing this. This is, looks like a row of ulcer, ulcer on the lymphatic. So my answer would be sporothrix. Or sporo, uh, sporothrix, or I would go with chromoblasto. But now I'll read the question and then I'll decide, okay? Because in both the cases, you'll have ulcers, uh, ulcer possible, but more sporothrix only, it's raw of ulcer. Chromoblasto, it's more like a wart. You will get more like a wart, okay? So, but let's see. Sporothrix is fine, but then you have to read the question also. A gardener skin was injured by thorn. Later, local ulcer with a nodule along the dry lymphatics. Ascending lymphatics. Now it's a sporo. So I, I'm now okay. I'll say just sporothrix only. Row of ulcer. I'll go with sporothrix. They gave. Which is false. East form shows uh, cigar abundance. Yes. We told that Gardner. What what he does? Gardner. This Gardner guy in the garden. He smokes with a cigar. Okay. And he eats the gobi also. He is a gobi. Gobi like appearance. Okay. Cigar or gobi like appearance. He has which bike? Splendor bike. Splendor hopefully phenomenon also common. Okay. 
and he has a i10 car i10 car okay he has an i10 car sigar gobi spender agar that's enough i think and at night time he stares at the star he looks at the star okay yeah and uh, yes now we'll see so star is basically asteroid okay when i say star it's asteroid so east form shows sigar appearance definitely right sclerotic body see that is a clue here sclerotic body see no not sclerotic body you see which body asteroid body that's why i told night asteroid means stars so what happened your gardener at night time he sees okay so you see so spoil that's the thing splendor of yes the gardener has a splendor bike Etrochronosal, I told I-10 car. Yes, I-10 car also. So this all are fine. So the wrong answer is sclerotic body. It should be asteroid body. This is the asteroid body. What you're seeing here, this is the asteroid body. And the conidia is like a rose, rose flower like conidia, rose or flower conidia. So rose gardener, no? so flower conidia. Or you can remember like that also, conidia. It looks like this, okay? But main thing along the lymphatic, the answer, that is porothric shankai. Okay, very, very easy. Next question was given. This picture, look at this picture. I'm not going to question directly. I'm going, it looks like some uh, some metal, like you know, metal like appearance. So that is basically some body, some they have given. So this is a farmer developed what like lesion on the legs after repeated trauma with the plants. This is also something like gardener's disease or sporty, but a little bit different. Look at this. Here, if you see what like lesion, this is basically called as uh varicosa dermatitis. Varicosa dermatitis dermatitis condition like a what like lesion only this spot which is seen called medullar body is definitely right they are right medullar body is otherwise called moreform cell or also is called sclerotic body sclerotic that's now we talk sclerotic bodies is common for chromoblasto the word chrome no chromoblastomycosis chromoblastomycosis no chrome itself is like a some coin only, no? So sclerotic type. So that's what sclerotic we can say. That's right. The disease, the type of subcutaneous, definitely is. In subcutaneous uh, mycosis, we have three diseases. MR, CS. M for mycetoma, R for rhinosporiosis, C, chromoblastomycosis, S for porothrix. Okay, you know that one. I'm not going to discuss. MRC is for subcutaneous infections, right? Diamorphic, that's what I told. It's not diamorphic. It is not. Chromoblastic. Blastomycosis is diamorphic. Blast. But chromoblast is never, never, never. So careful. That would be your confusing thing. And costive agent, everything with farmer. No, fa, fa, fa. Ponsacea, exo, fa, fiala. Fialo, fialo, fora, fa, fa, all fa, fa things. Fonsi, CA, exophila, all are right. This is also right. So your wrong answer is dimorphic, my child. Okay, it's not dimorphic. It is causing subcutaneous uh, this thing, uh, disease. Now this question comes, what are you going to, I'm not going to read the question at all. I'm directly going to say, this is a strawberry nose. Strawberry or mulberry nose. Mulberry nose. See, ENT question also. Now what is the, uh, this is caused when you saw the strawberry nose. This is a rhinosporidiosis. Sea berry. Sea berry. Oh, already I told the answer, but still the answer is here, but still we'll read the question. Patient from Tamil Nadu, he, he was in the pond. He was in the pond. He used to regularly baths in the pond. He came to ENT specialist with a biopsy, showed spherules with endosphere. This condition, on they made a biopsy, there there was a spherule, spherule with endospore. That is also, it will be rhinosporidium sea berry only. Okay, rest all our rhinosclerometrics causes woody nose. If you remember woody nose. And your Klebsiella ozeni causes the rumi nose. The smell, no, the smell patient will not know, but you will have that very bad smell from his nose, rumi nose. And this is a strawberry nose. So three noses, one nose definitely will come in based in micro or ENT parts. They will ask you. It's caused by renoporium seaberry. Okay, right. Now next one. Next, next, next one. Look at this question. Ah, now a 30-year-old sexually active woman present with a painful vesicle on her external genitalia with a bilateral linger. No, buddy. Sand smear was done, and they have seen this image. Which of the following is the most appropriate treatment? Okay, they didn't ask the organism. Okay, see, so based on this painful vesicle, uh, it should be either your which one? Hemophilus ducri or herpes simplex two virus only. So they did a sand smear, and you got multinucleated chain cell means this MNGC cell. MNGC, MNGC cell. So multinuclear JCP is definitely herpes. So herpes kelly, what's the treatment of choice? You know very well. It is A cyclovir, very common. Okay. Septoxin for gonorrhea, no link, penicillin for syphilis, no link, doxy is for your uh, you can go for your clepsilla granular medicine, other disease. That is also no use here. Okay, so that is out. LGBN also you can give. Now next. 
Next question. Now, this is a big question, but uh, it's easy only. Don't have to worry. 37 year old woman with HIV infection comes to the clinic with uh, worsening hemiparesis, visual pill defect, cognitive impairment, something related with the nerve related problem, or something with the neuronal uh, neurons, okay, nerves, CNS or nerves, okay, related problem. A CD count is 22. That's enough. Here, the CD4 is less than 50. Once again, I'm going to repeat before that. CD4, 3 means you are what? Either it's a CMV, a microbiotrium avium complex, microbiotrium uh, avium complex, intracellular, and the other one is a JC. I told these three. But based on the symptom, a mildly elevated protein level and presence of myelin basic protein. I would confuse either CMV, MAC is out, it's causing only the uh, lung symptom, TB. Yeah, CMV is also virus and JC also virus. Based on that mild elevator protein and mild mononuclear lymphocytes, I would think these two. But unfortunately, they are the presence of myelin basic proteins come. So that means I am going with the JC virus. Why JC virus? Because this the disease given here is costly, progressive, multifocal leukoencephalopathy. Okay, this is the disease name is called progressive multifocal multifocal leuco and cephalopathy and cephalopathy so people get crazy or you remember when people go to jc penny hiv patient when they go to jc penny they get crazy remember like that okay it means like you know it's a clue only because it's a neuronal relative so they're crazy so they have cognitive impairment worsening hemiparesocial field and all so remember jc virus okay this might be new or whatever but remember this is expected question only okay right next one now uh what about the next one here look at this question hiv posture again cd less than 50 and everyone i what you want this is a retina typical retinitis so cd for less than 50 and then uh, retina showed hemorrhage and cotton wool. You see, this is actually called pizza pie appearance. This is called pizza pie. Pizza pie, who gives pizza and pie free to everyone? Our chief minister. Our chief minister is going to give. Right? Uh, Kejriwal. Kejriwal, any CM is going to give pizza pie. Right. And also, uh, CM has what? Owl in his house. Right. And then CD for less than 50 also goes to CMV, I related. So it's a CMV retinitis. So here, which is false regarding infected cells or catastrophic ovuli, definitely yes, right. Causes mononucleosis, in, definitely yes. CMV causes in immunocompetent patient, it causes infective mononucleosis. Ganciclovis treatment, definitely. C and G, CMV, G looks similar. CMV, so G is C, na? so ganciclovis. A postcarnot also you can give. Monospot, but that is the wrong option because uh, this is a monospot test is positive for your Epstein Barr virus. In Epstein Barr virus, it also causes infection mononucleus, monospot positive. But in only differences in cytomegalovirus, it is negative. Monospot test otherwise called Paul Bunnell disease. Remember Paul Bunnell? Paul Bunnell is for Epstein Barr. B for Bunnell, B for Epstein Barr, BB. Okay. So this is basically monospot is Paul Bunnell. They indirectly they ask like this. Okay. Heterophile test, the heterophile antibody test, you know. Right. Next question. Look at this question also. Very nice question. Exanthema subitum. Whenever exanthema subitum comes, yes, for six and seven. Six and seven. And it's also called sixth day disease. Sixth day disease. Sixth day disease. H is because it is H, it is caused by herpes simplex six and seven and six day. And other name is also called. Uh, rosiola yes rosiola in phantom so yes 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 so so many s should come fifth day this is totally wrong why fifth day this is usually on which one parvo parvo paru you know? parvo paru one two three four five is that was you remember like that also parvo virus is the fifth day disease not the exanthema subito so it's also called rosiola in phantom absolutely right this is the wrong answer uh, HSV 6 is definitely right. Starts with fever first and then rest. Definitely right. Okay. Fever and then only rash starts in exanthema subitum. So exanthema subitum also called rosiola in phantom. Everything you know. So fifth day is parvo. It's called in parvo. It's called erythema infectiosum. You call it erythema infectiosum. Fifth day disease. And you know slap cheek appearance comes. Okay. In parvo slap cheeks. So every time you don't accept slap cheek, slap cheek for parvo. But here you think this time you might get an exanthema subitum also. So easy, okay? Got it? Easy. Paru, Paru, Choti, Paru, Margata. You know that na? Paru story, and she, the, the slap cheek appearance will come, erythema infection. That is for uh, Paru, okay? Not this extent subitum is the previous question. Okay, now here. 
Ah, now here, a mother brings a seven-year-old child to the pediatrician with a complaint of conjunctivitis and periorbital swelling. Fine. Some uh, respiratory symptom. Coughing, running nose, high fever. Fine. And the small lesions with blue-white center is the highlight. So this is the picture was given. You can see blue, sort of white lesion, you know, blue-white center. So that is which one? Which are in the oral cavity also, that is two. Which of the following is the most likely to cause a child symptom? So, with the conjunctivitis and coughing symptom or respiratory symptom, this typical coplic spot, that's basically coplic spot. And of course, you will see what in Pinkitly cell also. So, definitely that is what your measles. Unfortunately, in option, there is no measles. Instead, what they give the other name. So, other name for measles is rubiola. Okay, rubiola. Rubella is otherwise called German measles. That is also wrong. German measles. Okay, sometimes it's too confused, they can give. But measles are otherwise called rubiola. So this is a typical complex spot, what in pink kidney cell and uh, biopsy if you check, this is all of a rubiola. And of course, your uh, congenital spirit was sweating, you know, another, it gives very nice clue. Okay, yes, now next question. Look at this question. This is very nice. A uh, 45 year old man came to physician because of Eight day history of painful rash confined to one side of the abdomen. It's only one side, unilateral painful rash. What do you think? If we have a rash like this, sometimes your old people uh, who's diabetes or immunocompromise comes with this condition, even after fever, they comes with this. You always think one disease only. That is your what is this? Herpes zoster. Okay. Uh, herpes zoster. Especially it's in children, it's called in children, it is the Chicken pox. Children, adult, it is called shingles. Reactivation of the chicken pox, that is called shingles. So he basically has shingle, painful rash. Okay. Now, what is the what is the treatment? Treatment is basically you give acyclovir. Again, herpes simplex or herpes zoster, any most of them acyclovir is the good treatment. How does it work? Inhibition of DNA polymerase. That is the right answer. Cell wall, these are antibiotics will work, not the antiviral. Okay, antibiotics. Inhibition joint coating. This one will go to HIV drugs, you know, anti HIV retroviral therapy or anti hepatitis B virus, antivirals. But yes, I we will acting on the DNA polymerase. But to decrease the pain, for pain, if you have to decrease the pain, pain will be very severe. So you give what? Gabapentin. Gabapentin or pentagabalin. Pentagabalin, gabapentin, you have heard this more in your medicine. So those are the drugs you will be giving for this patient. So this is a healthy set of singles. Okay, crested lesion. Now look at this question. This is also 100% expected question. You guys know it already. I know that. Uh, let's go. Change in color. Yeah. So now an eight-year-old boy came with the pediatrician uh, with the fever and headache. And he was unable to touch his chin to the chest. So that's meningitis. So this is the, the clinical condition is meningitis, first of all. And then lumbar puncture was done, and physician begins the embryo door puncture. They gave this, the CSF was taken, and treatment also started. CSF sent panels. The patient condition improves over the next Oh, improvement is very good. When the improvement is very good, means it's a, that is viral meningitis. Please remember, when the symptom improves quickly, that is most likely a viral meningitis. But, okay, but still, we will wait for the next option also. In meantime, the bacterial culture and fungal cultures were negative. Oh, finished. So bacteria is out and uh, fungal is also, they are negative, negative. So we are thinking about viral meningitis only. Okay. So now we have to see which is fitting for the viral meningitis. First of all, see bacterial fungal out means itself. This is out. Your CSF pressure protein going high. This is not, this is not for viral. This is all out. Okay. Glucose, this all out. This all are for <coughs> bacteria and fungal. Uh, neutrophil high is bacteria. Lymphocyte high for tuberculosis. Okay. Out, out. Done. What is next? So for virus, uh, the typical cell which is going, uh, everything will be in CSF pressure will be normal, normal, normal. The only difference cell we have to see. So which cell in, uh, which cell will go high? Your lymphocyte. So your answer is B. Your answer is B is the right answer. Everything is normal and cells lymphocytes go high. That's a viral meningitis. Okay, right. Next question. Next question. Which of the following viruses causes neoplasia by inactivating the tumor suppressor gene direct P53 and RB? Which one inhibits this one? But it causes a neoplasia, some cancer. So if you're talking about cancer causing uh, virus, Epstein virus, yes, it can cause also. It can cause nasopharyngeal Burkitt's lymphoma, etc. It can cause, but not this mechanism. Hey, uh, hepatitis C, of course, it causes your liver cancer, hepatic, hepatic cancer, liver cancer, but that is also not this mechanism. 
human HIV also, you know, a few uh, HIV also causes uh, epithelial lymphoma and other things also cause. That is not. So the only mechanism P53 RBS is your HPV. This is basically for which cancer? Cervical cancer. Cervix cancer, especially what happened, we have this protein which is uh, uh, six uh, number E uh, six and seven proteins. Okay, so they seven uh, six inhibits the p53 and seven inhibits the RB. So this way they cause the cervical cancer. That's what I want to say. Okay, that's a human papilloma virus. That's it. HPV. Excuse me. They cause cervical cancer and also if you remember HPV, which virus we're talking? HPV we're not talking. We're talking about the HPV 16 and 18. Whereas your 6 and 11 causes, HPV 6 and 11 causes laryngeal papilloma and also condyloma acuminata. Okay, condyloma acuminata. Acuminata. This question also can on anal wards. Okay, anal wards also. Anal wards. These are the for HPV 6 and 11. That, that I'm just simply stressing because you might get that also. Okay, next question if you see, uh, see. First of all, the influenza virus A usually produces mild self-limited febrileness. However, worldwide epidemic pandemics have occurred in different times in the history due to rapid changes in the viral genetic makeup. So, which is the most important reason? Okay, sir, this is fine. World epidemic pandemic. Why the shift car is here? Why our shift is here? So, shift means you already got that is a shift. Why I put shift car here? Because shift car, this is every 10 year once you get a genetic recombination. Genetic recombination, that's what the car becomes better and better. Every time it's become better and better. And it's where everywhere it's there. So most, let's say epidemic, I'm giving a clue. I mean, influenza virus are making it as a shift car. So you'll remember. So most of genetic recombination, epidemic means it's all over. Nowadays, it's out of India also, the shift car is sold very well. Thailand, Bangladesh, wherever you go, this car is sold very much. So that is what. So your answer is simply don't even think anything shift. Now you don't get confused. Drift, shift. Drift is nothing. Shift, shift car is only epidemic or pandemic because it's very popular every 10 year once more the company is making it recombinant genetic makeup advanced ai things and all are there so it is always popular okay so that is the reason for epidemic pandemic this is the way i remember since my college days and it's still working and this question is repeatedly asked and drift causes nothing just for small changes it doesn't bring any big uh, changes uh, hemagglutination is ability to destroy this is all right but then there's no use Okay, neuromedia's ability to attach to CLA receptor becomes more, this is all of fine, but they are don't, they're not reason for the epidemic and pandemic. Shift is the main reason for epidemic and pandemic. Okay, okay. Next question, you guys know that. Now, next one is here. A newborn child is noted to unresponsive to verbal stimulation from a doctor. Unresponsive means, first thing is, it could be deaf. The child might have a deafness. And the routine physical examination showed S2, splitting of S2, assinated L2. This and a bounding pulse and wide pulse pressure. Don't you think I am not expert in medicine? I'm microbiology expert to this thing. But this, from our knowledge, this sounds more like a patent ductus arteriosus PDA, right? And there is a shortness of breath and respiratory also was there. Okay. Uh, then which pathogen? Okay. Now this is enough for me because I would put simply CDC. CDC for rubella congenital syndrome, rubella. C for, C first of all, C for cardiac problem. Cardiac means that was the PDA. And D for deafness. And C for cataract. Cataract is not given here. They didn't give a symptom. But so this is for rubella. So the rubella comes under rubella ruby virus. So same, very simple. See how easy they big questions are fun and easy to answer. Believe me, small questions will make you trouble. Big questions, you don't even have to think. So based on the question itself, I can they see I made a deafness, PDA, rubella, CDC. So cardiac defect, CDC for rubella. Cardiac defect, deafness and cataract. Finished. No? Yeah. Next one. Next one, let's go to the other question. A 65-year-old man with a history of viral hepatitis is there, present with a primary care patient with the uh, early satiety, weight loss over three months, upper abdominal pain, yellowing of his eyes. So typically, it looks like uh, some, uh, because of the viral hepatitis, he's getting all the symptoms. Okay, and then the patient history says, he received two blood transfusion in early, okay. So he had a blood transfusion. 
whenever blood transfusion happened in olden days, one of the few, the viruses which were frequently uh, not checked, screened was uh, even HIV also, but usually hepatitis C, hepatitis B and HIV. These viruses usually go on that time. So if he gives this idea, you usually more HCV and hepatitis in those days, it was common. It was spread it. So we on workup, there was a macro nodular cirrhosis. So this picture is not given. It should be like this. If you see this macro nodular cirrhosis, that is classic for C and B virus. Cirrhosis, but macro nodular. So answer is hepatitis C virus, macro nodular. Okay. A micro nodular cause me many things. Micro nodular, typically most common, which I know is alcoholic. If I'm not good from the medicine, I remember alcoholic is the common cause of micro nodular cirrhosis. Macro nodular is always your hepatitis C. It's dangerous. The cirrhosis comes, cirrhosis and cancer come most common cause, you know, it's a hepatitis C virus only. So C, okay. Cirrhosis, hepatitis C, right. Next question. Next question. Big questions are easy again. Don't get uh, scared. Very easy. A 47-year-old woman, she came to the clinic with fever and malaise. She reported having severe headache, some nausea, vomiting, typical liver symptom, and mildly jaundice with scleral ictrus also. So that means typically she has some hepatitis. So physicians suspect hepatitis B and draw the blood for serological testing. Now, if the patient had uh, unprotected sex intercourse during this situation, infection, the presence of which of the following would most concerning of her partner? Okay, very good question. So what happened? She has hepatitis B. Now she's worried if she has intercourse with a husband or partner, she might, uh, for which, when which test comes positive, she has to worry the most. Okay, so which one? If she, let's say, we have, you know, we go, when we talk about hepatitis B virus, we have three things. One is your HBS antigen and its antibody. Other one is your uh, HB, uh, e antigen antibody and we have HBC antigen which is useless and their IgM and IgG antibodies. Okay. Now, whenever, uh, uh, suppose if hepatitis B E antibody is seen, then HB antigen is seen, it means there is increased infectivity, replication, etc. Antibody means decreased. So, it's not a problem. Okay, so antibody is seen. If E antibody is seen, means the infection chance is less. So it's not to be worried. But if E antigen is seen, high infectivity, high replicability, replication, everything is there. So that means the chance of spreading to partners is very high. So that is the indirectly they asked. E antigen is dangerous. B surface antibody, very good. It means the prognosis is very good. And IgG hepatitis core antibody already it's chronic. It means it's in healing. It's a chronic. It's not a problem. It's on the, the, the chronic course is very safe. So only thing she has to worry if you get E antigen. So the indirectly they ask, which is more the infectivity pathogenesis is high even HBE antigen is high. That's it. Okay. Next. Next question. Hmm. A 37 year old. A 13 old man from Kenya, he presents with a night sweat, a fever, oliguria, and large submandibular. Okay, that's important. That's enough, more than enough. Okay, large submandibular mass, uh, night sweat, fever, and all comes. No, you already know that is basically Burkitt's lymphoma. We are thinking, talking about the Burkitt's lymphoma. The Mr. Burka has a big, you know, Kenya, they have a big submandibular mass like that. You remember? And now what happened? The biopsy of the mass was an aggressive tumor. Lymphocyte staining with CD20, yeah, CD20 with a high level of nuclear CMC with interspaced macrophages. This is very characteristic of your Epstein Barr virus. You know, Epstein Barr will cause all the lymphomas, you know, Burkitt's lymphoma, non Hodgkin lymphoma, Maltoma, Nasophageal carcinoma, etc. Epstein virus. Now, what happened? Which is the mode of transmission of the virus? Or this? That means they're asking how the Epstein Barr virus has spread it. Okay. So blood, no, picoviral, picoviral is rotavirus only, not other, or adenovirus, not other viruses. Blood may HIV, hepatitis B, HCV, not. Mosquito bites, we have so many viruses, which is not. Uh, Epstein virus, not. Saliva respiratory, yes. That's what we get, which is infectious mononucleus is the first symptom, but then it will spread. So this is one, see, idea is this is the picture given here is basically interspaced. This is, they've given, see the mass aggressive. Interspaced macrophages, you're seeing, this is called starry, no? 
uh, star in the sky appearance star in the sky or starry sky appearance okay. star in the sky or starry sky appearance that is characteristic for epstein barr virus which is spread by saliva and respiratory symptom burkitt's lymphoma that's it okay very easy you know that so indirectly they're asking to me so don't uh, get confused easy with the clue star in the sky mr burka mr burk he is in night time he is staring the sky and cd20 positive and epstein barr virus paul bunnell test positive in that disease Yes. Now look at this question. Now, a 56-year-old man came with a sharp substernal pain radiating to his back arm and the patient is seated and leaning forward. So, some pain is here and he's leaning forward. He states the pain is less severe. Okay, when he comes forward, the pain is going down. And when he lies down, it takes the and worsens when he lies down. So, it doesn't it look like a little bit like pericarditis? Yes, it is. Looks For me, it looks like a pericarditis. Let's wait now. So now he recently recovered from a fibril illness. Okay. So there was a scratchy, leathery sound is here at the left side. Now, okay. Scratchy, leathery sound. It is pericarditis only. Okay. So this is a pericarditis. And ECG source is definitely it's ST. Elevation is there. Okay. So related with the myocarditis, pericarditis only. Something related with the micro, more pericarditis. Okay. Can be myocarditis also. So, when the, this pericarditis comes, you know which virus? That is your for huh, Coxsackie virus. No, for, uh, see, Coxsackie virus. Okay, Coxsackie's virus. We have Coxsackie A and B. Both causes pericarditis. Now, which group it belongs to? It belongs to the group, if you remember, Picorana. Picorna virus, okay, Picorna virus, okay, Picorna. In that CO comes Coxsackie virus, okay. Uh, now, uh, here we see, if you see the Coxsackie virus, it comes in the Picorna, it is a naked one. I said whenever uh, in, the, uh, in, in this group, it's usually, this all comes under the RNA group. First of all, it's RNA group. So, RNA is a single standard only. So, DNA is cut. So, it should be either this one, any of this one. Double standard to out. So, it's not double standard, single standard only. So, but it is positive, no, it's not, it's positive, single standard, helical, no. It is a small, naked, it's a picus naked. I always say when you take a pick, it should be naked. Picorna, it comes picorna, so, pic, uh, and a pic, in picorna, all the picorna viruses are for picture, you're naked, remember like that. Picorna, picks means naked. So, it comes under this category, small, naked, single virus. That is a Coxsackie virus, very, very simple, okay. You know that one again, only, see, the only uh, double standard, double standard RNA virus is your rota virus, rota virus, okay. That's it. Okay, rota only rota comes in that category. Rota rio, rio or rota, no? Under rio only rota comes. So rio virus or rota virus, double standard RNA. Rest all will be single standard RNA only. So that is enough enough to say small naked single RNA. Okay, that's a very simple question. They have to study. Yeah, now the next question. One year old child developed diarrhea and vomiting, which is of the following is true regarding this virus. Okay, diarrhea vomiting, the most common cause you know by this time, the rota virus. Okay, the, is it a, a rota virus or brick shape? Wrong. I told again, brick is which one? Fox virus is brick, but rota virus is basically rota is usually cartwheel. We just spoke like it is like a paracoc, huh? it's a cartwheel appearance. Rota virus, uh, yeah, fine. And rabies is bullet, you know, the question is coming. Single standard RNA virus, no, we just spoke. This is the only double standard RNA virus, okay, your rota virus. The vaccine is given IV root? Absolutely not. You are giving in oral root. Which one? Rota, rotavac or rotavarix. Three doses you are giving. Within six months, within six months, you have to give three doses. And the one of the most common side effects is intersusception. That is the right answer. The vaccine which causes intersusception is not poliogulonal. It is your roto vaccine. So you are orally you're taking and you are getting it. So that question can come. Okay. So this is one uh, question they can just ask you. So don't forget. Okay. Yes. Next question. Now you want to answer this. was a very easy question. A premature infant. Okay. Diagnosed with a fast breathing, coughing persistently and wheezing also. Coughing and wheezing is there. Okay. Wheezing is very severe nasal congestion. Fine. Which of the following is false? See, fast breathing, coughing persistently. For me, it more looks like wheezing. It looks more like a bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis. No, it looks like an acute bronchiolitis. 
whenever you talk about acute bronchiolitis, which is the most common virus, especially in children, respiratory syncytial virus, especially premature infant. So now the condition is definitely right. Acute bronchiolitis caused by RSV, definitely right. Steeple sign. Is it right or wrong? Steeple sign. Steeple sign caused by? If you say parainfluenza virus, that is it, in extreme the throat, you will see like a cross, like a steeple. Okay, like this, in the, like a church steeple or whatever. So that is usually caused by parainfluenza virus. See, that's what the examiners are very smart. They can ask questions. This is my question, but I'm uh, expecting these are the questions you can uh, repeat previously asked and they can twist and that in any way. Okay, so it's all like a good revision for you. Pavlizumab is given as a premature infant. Definitely right. For premature P for Pavli. Uh, Pavlizumab, P for premature infant. We have to give as a promise. But steeple is not for this. Acute bronchitis, me, you see, no, no any special signs here. It's just steeple sign is for parent influenza virus. See, the picture is given now. Here, the picture is given. You can see here. Uh, now, look at this. A child with a severe uh, barking cough, okay, severe barking cough, whooping cough, uh, severe barking cough on uh, uh, x ray. You see this image. The image was given. Yes, this is the right. This is your. This is a typical barking cough, uh, uh, this sound. See, oofing cough, oofing cough is for your pertussis. Barking cough is for your croup, okay? I think previously I was saying that is actually you know, pertussis causes the oofing cough, 100 day cough. But croup is, in croup you have the severe barking cough. On x -ray, this image was. So when you talk about croup, it's caused by parainfluenza virus. Yes, it's right. So which is false, they've asked. Parainfluenza is right. It causes acute laryngitis. The, the croup is basically acute laryngotracheal bronchitis. Virus belongs to orthomixo? No, 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 no. Because in orthomixo, only one where there's influenza. Ortho people get flu. Remember, ortho people will get influenza. But these parainfluenza, they come under parainfluenza. Your measles, mumps, parainfluenza, uh, your respiratory sensitivity, they come under parainfluenza virus. So it's out. Severe croup results in pulses, paradoxes, secondary, definitely, yes. It cause severe croup may, the patient can have this very bad pulses, paradoxes also possible. So main thing here is, this virus belongs to uh, uh, paramixo virus, not orthomixo. On orthomixo, only influenza virus will come. Okay, that's it, very simple. So this is the steeple sign we're talking. Okay, one is a thumbprint sign, throat epiglottitis, that is your H influency. Now, other one is the important question is this one. In a uh, parent frenzy, you get this uh, steeple sign. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Next question. Now, next question, if you go, a child present with a fever with cough, corrosion, conjunctivitis. Okay. Right. And then bright red spots in the blue. Okay. For you, the, okay. So, this is again complex spot. So, let's see something different they were asked here. Complex spot is there and the cough, corrosion, conjunctivitis. Yes. You get this symptom also. And on buccal mucosa, one to do later, a rash also was started. Yes, see, this is like this. In 10th day, you will be getting cough, this thing. On 12th day, you will get a complex spot. On 14th day, this thing. So, this is catastic measles. Okay. So, now measles, what you can see. First of all, which is false, they have told. Giant cell can be seen in the lymph node biopsy. Uh, yes, definitely. That is, they are talking about the warthin pinkindly cell. Lymph node or anywhere, any lesion, say you take warthin pin kidney cell can be seen. Kidney, okay. I'm just changing the color so that uh, you'll see the contrast. Hopefully. Okay, so warthin pin this is right answer. SSP is a, a, a subacute sub sclerosing panenkephalitis and giant cell pneumonia, definitely rare but possible. Right answer. Like uh, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, it's caused by JC virus. But this SSP is caused by measles. It was asked in your previous exams also. You guys must have revised. Rare but possible complication. Vitamin A supplementation can reduce. But definitely, yes. For measles, vitamin A is very good. For vaccine, you use gerilin. No. Gerilin is for the mumps. It goes for the mumps. For measles, which one you use? You use the Edmonston. You use Edmonston. Jagri. Edmonston. Jagri. Schwartz, Edmonston, Jagreep, you know, Garib, Garib, you remember, Garib people get measles, okay, Edmonston, uh, Schwartz, Edmonston, Jagreep, so this is the wrong answer, this false, right, so, no, very simple, you only have to, it's a little bit, you know, apply here and there, and the shortcuts, like whatever I told you, it's very, very easy, now next is this picture, for me, without going to the question itself, I can see some nerves, inside the nerves, I'm seeing some body, whenever inside the first clue is the, it's some nerve cell, Inside the nerve cells, Purkinje, especially Purkinje cell, if I'm seeing this body, you know, I will think about one only. I will think about the, which body? Negri bodies. But let's see in the question what they ask. 
patient with a dog bite. Okay, got it. Rabies. Dog bite means you don't think anything. Rabies. But he was brought dead to the casualty on postmortem diagnosis of the brain biopsy. They, of course, you do postmortem. Inclusion bodies were seen. This is the inclusion. Those, the, those are the negri bodies. Those are the negri bodies. Now, in, in cerebellum and hippocampus was seen, which is a false regarding this. Okay. First of all, this virus is bullet chip. Definitely, yes. You know that rabies virus is a bullet chip. You know, that's what I know. You're killing the uh, rabbit dog with the... Some people kill the rabbit dog with a gun. Okay, you don't do it. I'm just saying. They kill it with a bullet. Remember like that. Okay. Direct fluorescent is a uh, standard test. Definitely, yes. And for antimortem diagnosis, sample from the hair follicle. Nape of the neck is taken. Definitely. For postmortem, you do the postmortem of the brain and you take it. For antibody, usually you get a corneal smear, but it's painful. So you always take the nape of the next say, hair follicle is the best one. Next is negri bodies. This is a negri body seen in the fixed rabies. No, it's not in the fixed. It's in the wild only. You see only in the wild rabies. Okay, wild rabies or the, the one which is causing the uh, proper rabies, not in the fixed one. Okay, the spastic rabies or wild rabies which is causing the uh, that thing. So it's not in the fixed rabies strain. Okay, so that's out. This is not virulent. So this is the wrong answer. Negative body is seen in the wild rabbit step, not in the fixed rabbit. That is very, very important. Okay, Remember that. Next question. So, uh, I'm sorry, wild or street? I could say it's not fixed uh, wild. You should you should say it as a street rabbit. Street, you no know, straight dogs like that. So it's like a, in a street of it. This uh, fixed rabbit virus is for making vaccine. Street one is the one which is causing proper rabies with the negri bodies. Okay. Yes. Now look at this question. Beautiful question. Next question. You can expect this question by seeing the picture. It is filament shape. Filament means what is coming in your mind. If you're thinking Ebola, you're right. F and B are very close. You know? F and B are very close. Okay. If you forgot also, this belong to philo virus. Ebola, Marburg. Ebola and Marburg. Okay, these are the two viruses comes. That is, you can remember Bola, Philoka, Mara hai. Bola, Philoka, Mara hai. Bola, Philoka, Mara hai. How you want to remember? First of all, a patient comes with a flu-like symptom, diarrhea, vomiting, high fever, myalgia, something non-specific. Uh, then this image came, then uh, if the image shows filamented, then it is Ebola virus only. So, which is true. It belongs to Flavi? No, it belongs to Philo virus. Philo virus. Okay. Transmitted mosquito? No. Ebola is not by this thing. Ebola transmitted usually secretion. Okay, through secretion, respiratory or any other secretion, but not through mosquito. Can progress to DIC and diffuse hemorrhage? Definitely, yes, it can. Okay. Rodents are reservoir? No, not at all. Not a reservoir. Here we talk reservoir, you think about yeah, we are talking about the monkeys and then again spreading the bats are common, not the rodents. So this is wrong answer. Okay, the rodents is not. So it's monkeys or it should be the bats, fruit bats. Okay, so this is wrong. Next question. Zika virus. Again, here is Zika virus. See, uh, false, which is false. Zika. Zika, Zika, okay, remember, it, it all belongs to like dengue fever, Zika fever. They all like, you know, come same. Remember like that. So it is caused by Flavi. Yes, definitely, yes. Flavor Zika. If you forget also Flavi, you remember favored Zika noodles. Flavored Zika noodles. Zika noodles are very popular in, in at least in Delhi. So flavored Zika noodles. Culex. It is standard Gulex mosquito? No. Why? It again, it comes under, these all comes under which mosquito? Aries. Aries mosquito. That is tiger mosquito. Tiger likes, you know, or tiger or Adi, they like what? Zika noodles. Not the Culex, not the Culex. Okay. Sexual and vertical trans possible? Definitely. It has caused. And of course, it has led to congenital microcephal miscarriages in utero. Definitely, yes. So, transmit by Culex mosquito is a wrong answer. It is not. So, you just, you can rule it out. Okay, right now, next. Yeah. Yes, next question. Ah, now, this is a very interesting question. You know this. It's a defective virus. Depends on the hep DNA hepatitis virus for causing both co-infection and super-infection. I don't know which is. So, it's a, uh, it is needs the hep DNA means we're talking about hepatitis B virus. Okay. So, which is the defective D for defective D for hepatitis D? It's a very simple question. HDAV. So, HDV can be finished. Okay. So, that is the only virus which depends on hepatitis B virus for the causing the infection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, now next one. Yes. Match the following. Hepatitis A virus. A virus belongs to, I always say, the pick should be A class pick. No, you always have an A class pick. So, pick or not. Okay, A. H-E-V. E for E-C. I would say microbiology is 
E C. So calcivirus. That is B. C. C is chocolate flavor. Choco flavor. Choco flavor. So that is choco flavor. So flavor. Flavivirus. Go to flavivirus. Okay. Mm. C. D. D for D. D for delta virus. Finished. So this is the way you enter. These belongs to these viruses. Okay. That's it. And of course, the only DNA viruses in hepatitis is your hepatitis B virus. Okay. If you're lucky enough, this type of question comes. You can easily answer. Look at this question. It was very interesting. All of the following diseases are associated with the hepatitis C virus, except you should know there are some out of autoimmune diseases associated with the hepatitis C virus. One is the clue you have C, C for cryoglobulinemia itself. That is the right answer. Other one is cytoto C, hepatitis C, cytoclastic C, C. So that's also lymphoprotein. You don't have a clue, but you remember C as a G and you can remember global nephritis, right? But fan, no, not at all. Why? P and B look similar. So it is caused by hepatitis B virus. HBB. It's a medicine more, but then, you know, I just added because you can't mix this. They are like, examiners can ask this type of questions only these days. So, hepatitis B cause polyarthritis nodosa. It's not this one. So, you rule out. Okay? Please remember this carefully. Yeah. Now, uh, next question also very important. Frequently asked these days, which is the sole marker for hepatitis B during the window period. Window period is a period where the well, what happened window period, uh, uh, your HBS AG goes down and then it is a time where your hb sorry where your hbs antibodies start to rise hb is going down so in this period this window period is there no there nothing is there to diagnose so which will be very helpful for this time your anti hbc igm you have to Mug it up. There's no other option. Okay. So this is the example. You see this picture below. Once again. If you see the picture below. Ah, this is the window period. You see uh, your, uh, this is in the, in, always, you know, in the incubation period, PCR is always best in the starting incubation period. Then when you see this HPS AG, this going down, and your HPS antibody starting to rise. So in this window period, the only thing you can find positive would be your HPS AG IgM. So, okay, so that is the window period. So in window period, always best is M, IgM, IgM, especially HPC IgM. Okay, that's all. that you remember. Next question. Uh, look at this. Uh, false regarding HIV structure. HIV structure, everybody knows very, very well. Reverse transcriptase enzyme synthesis double stranded DNA from genomic unit? Definitely yes. Excuse me, this is a characteristic enzyme for a reverse transcript is characteristic for HIV. Two molecules for yes. This is the only virus which has two GN DNAs. Group 120 uh, attachment to host, yes. And 14 for fusion entry, definitely yes. That's also right. This outermost molecule and the electron attachment is so right. Gag gene helps in the reverse enzyme. No. Which gene? Pool gene will help. Pool gene. Pool of enzymes, which, which helps in the reverse transcriptase, integrase, polymerase, every enzyme so is with the pole. Pole gene, pool of enzymes. I remember pool of enzymes. But GAG gene is different. GAG, the wrong answer is this. GAG gene, especially if you remember, that is synthesizing the group uh, 24 and 17. I say Lady Gaga is always between 17 to 24 years. She never ages and increases. Pool, pool of enzymes. Pool of enzymes means which enzymes? Your reverse transcriptase, integrase, all those things comes under this. That one. Okay. Next, next question. Uh, here, all of the following occur in CD4 count between 200 to 300, except 200 to 300, big list is there, except you by seeing only you can tell not CM rates because this is less than 50 range, it will come. Okay, so that is the answer. In uh, 200 to 500, man, TB comes, Zoster come, HHV8 comes, and Candida can come. Okay, Candida infection, herpes Zoster, HHV8 recently asked in your uh, FMG. So remember, these all are common. Less than 50, you know, CMV and I once again remember MAC and your JC. And, be, and less than 200, you know, Toxo, Crypto, Cryptococcus. I mean to say Cryptococcus and then Pneumocystis. These three will come in the PCG, less than 200. So this few bacteria, you should know the range. They will ask commonly. Now, final topic. We are going to our parasitology. So you'll be very happy. Okay. So you'll be answering fast parts. Very easy only in parasitology. 38 year old men came to the emergency with a cyclic fever and headache. Fever, headache. Fever was about one week ago. Now he developed hepatosplenomegaly. 
the imaging of the brain shows significant cerebral involvement. So fever is there, uh, fever, uh, cyclic fever. So we don't fever coming and going, coming and going. Hepatosmegaly was there, but main thing is the cerebral involvement. Cerebral involvement without anything, brain involvement just be, should be a dangerous one. So which is the only dangerous uh, plasmodium malaria? With the malaria, which is dangerous? Plasmodium falciparum. Okay, falciparum. That is the most fatal. Falciparum means fatal. F for F, F for fatal, like deadly. So this affects the brain. It can cause your, uh, uh, it can cause uh, black water fever. Affects the kidney and called black color urine because hemolysis, no? It causes the RBC lysis and cerebral, no? Because cerebral malaria. So this is cerebral malaria, which caused by falciparum. Okay. And if you forget also, I always remember falciparum is this is the, 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 the Moyer's rod. We call it as Moyer's rod. Mao means, you know, Mao, Mao is a Chinese name. Chinese always danger. So China, Mao. So dangerous is falciparum. Remember like that. It's a clue, but you can remember how you want. Okay. Rest all are not that dangerous. Now look at this next question. Here, 66 year old woman comes with a seizure. Seizure is there, something in the brain. A test to anti cystic circle antibodies are positive. Oh God, anti cystic circle antibody positive means itself that is your cystic sarcosis. No, new cystic sarcosis with the brain that is a neuro cystic sarcosis. It's basically she got neuro cystic sarcosis. Look at the picture again, star in the sky appearance. You know, starry sky appearance, starry sky appearance. Same what you see in the uh, Burkitt's lymphoma, you're seeing it here also, neurosystem sarcosis, which is caused by tenia solium. Okay. Now they ask, which of the following organs is most likely to have similar lesion? Okay. So apart in neurosystem sarcosis, so apart from the brain, which is the other organ which is commonly affected? Bladder? No, no. Bladder is mostly, if you see, cystosoma. Cystosoma is the most commonly affecting the bladder, especially hematobium. Bone? Not much. It's usually Lishmania, uh, your uh, uh, trypanosomas, those can affect the bone, but not directly. Kidney also not that specific anything. Muscles is right answer. So it can affect the brain or the muscle. Don't forget neurocystic sarcosis. It can affect the brain, muscle, subcutaneous tissue also. Under subcutaneous tissue, it can uh, cause the lesion. So here it is a skeletal muscle. So because of this symptom you say here, you can say, excuse me, yeah, skeletal muscle. So this one question, okay, and this question, this picture was important. So you know, it's most common cause of the seizure in India and children, it, uh, parasite may most commonly affecting brain. Everything is neurocystic sarcosis, which is caused by tenia solio. You know that one. Okay, next question, look at this question. Here, the question comes like this. A 16 year old, she's a young girl, she comes with an abnormal vaginal discharge. Uh, itching was there, tenderness was there, burning in the vulva vagina, everything was there. On the examination, there's a vulva vagina and there also, uh, so first of all, abnormal vaginal discharge. We don't know what discharge. So it should be anyone. It should be bacterial vaginosis or trichomonal vaginosis or candidiasis only. Okay, this is common. But clue is erythema and strawberry vagina. They have colpitus macularis means it is strawberry. Then the other name of strawberry is colpitus vaginaris. So they, she got this. So that is a, will give you clue what it is here. Trichomonas vaginalis already gives the clue. But also they gave the wet mount in the image. You can see here, this wet mount image was given, which is, if you see really, it looks a single. There's only single nucleus. Okay. Now, which is the additional? Okay. Before coming to the option, let's go a little bit to revise and come. Whom we are going to revise? We are going to revise our Trisha. This is our Trisha. Her name is Trisha. Trisha because... Trico, trico, trisha sounds same. Trico monas vaginalis. So look what what things are. First of all, she has a beautiful eyelash. Eyelash, no eyelash. Then she has a beautiful diamond necklace. She has a diamond on her ring. Fine, very good. What is her favorite food? Strawberry. And also she has what? Green. She has this green, you know, she has a lot of green. She eats a lot of green. And this is, she's single. Every time she's single. She's single, single, single. She's always single, or like a single lady. Lash and diamond, because the media name is Lash Sistine Media, Diamond Media. Diamond Media. Okay, Diamond Media. These are the culture medias. You should know. Strawberry, because you know, strawberry vagina. Green, because the green color, you have a green color discharge. Green color discharge is characteristic for this thing. And she has this beautiful Twitching, because she's eyelashes also fine. I know she makes the twitching, twitching motility. Trisha, trichomonas, T40, T for twitching motility. Single, single, okay. Why single? Because there's only trophozoid state. There's only trophozoid. No cyst, only trophozoid only, number one. And there's only one nucleus. 
and there's only uh, five flagella, only five flagella, one posterior, four anterior. That's okay, remember, not that much important. So this is typical, proposed only, proposed, there is no cyst stage, and there is only one nucleus. So that's what we put single, single, single. Our Trisha is still single, our actress Trisha is single only. So how are you one? And uh, if you see Trisha's eye, she always twitches her eye, you know, she twitches like this. So twitching, T40, everything is a question, you're going to score, no mistake in this part. Now you're going to answer me. So now again, they asked only that they, it's a TV. So TV discharges, just now I told what? It is a, uh, a, a bloody and foul, not. Cotton cheese, this is for candida. Fishy, I told, when the fishy, who is fishy? The BV, BV is uh, fishy about her husband's behavior. Okay, so here it's a profuse frothy vaginal discharge. So Trisha, the trichomonas, profuse vaginal frothy vaginal discharge. That's what you're about, frothy, okay, frothy. Right, next one. Next question again, uh, you can see here, a patient with a history of food and water intake on the street side, developed bloating, platulence, foul smelling, fatty diarrhea. Okay, so this all are very catastrophically called as steatoria. Steatoria means itself automatically in your mind you should get giardia, but still the wet mode examination given the following image which is false. So you can see the typical this shape, this is what shape? Tennis racket. Tennis racket appearance, okay? Tennis racket appearance. Now, this is a tennis racket. This is a Gia vegetable. So what he is doing? He is hitting with the tennis racket. That means Gia girjata, falling, falling leaf motility. Falling leaf motility, falling down, falling leaf motility. That's what Gia girjata hai. So falling down motility, one question will be coming, okay? Tennis racket appearance, one. Tennis racket appearance, two. And what's the test you're doing? You're doing a string test. In string test, it will go till where? Duodenum. It has to go to duodenum. D, G, R, D, A, G, I, A, R, D, I, A, G, R, D, A. So D is there, so duodenum. Okay, now you're going to answer, which is a false. Cystis infectiosis, definitely yes. For both Atemis platica and G, R, D, A, cystis. In gelatin string test, the capsule is going to jejunum. Wrong. That is the clue. So, Gia Girjata, Gia Girjata, GRDA, D, Diodina. Okay. Professor exhibit falling leaf motility? Definitely, as I told Gia Girjata. If you hate the Gia vegetable, you hit it. So, it will fall down. Okay. Metronidazole is for treatment? Yes, definitely, yes. Metronidazole, if you remember the shortcut was get out of the way. G, E, T, G for GRDA, E for enterobasilica, T for trichomonas vaginalis. For all the three cases. So, remember, one is one picture, vaginal discharge like this. It is this one, your uh, trichomonas vaginalis. But in other one, tennis racket may, it is this thing, okay? It is, sorry, one second. So, yeah. Okay, these are the things you're going to remember. Uh -huh. String test with the ordinum and then metronidazole is for treatment. Right, next question. Next one, see, now here, this question can be asked because this infection is now spreading for so much, okay, one of the common infection. 40-year-old man goes on camping vacation with his family. One day after swimming in a freshwater lake near the campsite, he develops nausea and vomiting and starts to behave irrationally, okay. Swimming was one clue and suddenly develops nausea and vomiting and behave irrationally. And the family takes him to the emergency department. The blood sample was taken and spinal tap was done. He developed progressive meningoencephalitis and dies shortly. That is the thing happening in South India now. Many are getting uh, this disease. And so PME, okay, this is actually PME, okay, PME. The disease is progressive multifocal encephalitis, okay. Now, uh, which protozoa are causing this? Okay, just directly, there's no picture, picture nothing. They're given fresh water swimming and this thing. So what I tell my students to remember is, remember Pamela Anderson. You know Pamela Anderson, very popular, this girl. Pamela, what she do with her boyfriend, Nigel. Uh, his boyfriend name is Nigel, okay? Nigel, she goes to swimming pool. 
that's it this you remember swimming pool and you get all the uh, husband the boyfriend gets the disease and dies so pami why did they say because this is a progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy pm is progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy because you have to remember uh, this one also you have another is acanthamoeba in acanthamoeba there is only gae that is granulomatous amoebic encephalitis that is it causing the granulomatous amoebic encephalitis but not meningitis encephalitis okay so that's what it's different acanthamoeba me it's different so here <clears throat> acanthamoeba so here it is the nature area. so the already you got a clue pami progressive pme is pami Pamela Anderson swimming with a Niger boyfriend. So it's Nagel area, foul area. Usually it looks like this, this picture. This is a free living amoeba. Akanta amoeba. Akanta amoeba more cause keratitis and then it can cause granulomatous, uh, many granulomatous uh, encephalitis. But in this one, Nagel area, foul area typically causes pain because Niger's boyfriend is Pammy, Pamela Anderson. Okay, Pammy, Pamela, Pamela Anderson. They both swim and he got the disease and he died. Okay, remember like that. Freshwater swimming, camping occasion. So Pamela, Pamela Anderson, Nigel, Nigel. Akantameba, Akan, Icon is a gay, G-A-E, gay. Icon, the musician is a gay. So G-A-E, he wears contact lens, contact lens keratitis. G-A-E means granulomatous amoebic encephalitis. There is no meningitis in Akantameba. That could be asked, okay? Balamuthi also another free, but they don't want to ask much question in that. Next question, you look at this. A 25-year-old patient present with a fever and the chills, lethargy, vomiting, and right upper quadrant pain, and the mild hepatomegaly was there. On CT, on CT scan, they did, uh, they found this image. Uh, uh, they found this image. They, you can see in the inside liver, there is some, some, some abscess, abscess type of thing is there. So then uh, CT was, uh, under CT, they aspirated, it looked like an anchovy sauce. Anchovy sauce means itself, the answer is entamoeba histolytica. Entamoeba histolytica, you know, this is basically entamoeba histolytica. Which causes amoebiosis. No amoebiosis. So this is actually this is a liver abscess. They call the most common cause of liver amoebic abscess. Liver amoebic abscess you call liver amoebic abscess. So this is caused by your endometrial histolytica. So endometrial causes longitudinal ulcer, which is true. They ask longitudinal ulcer. No, it causes the flask shaped ulcer like this. If you talk about endometrial histolytica, this is the endometrial histolytica. First thing is it causes flask shaped ulcer. Flask may what you can you can put anchovy sauce remember like that and in flask you're putting anchovy sauce so that is also atabisletica so this is your trophozoite which you see rbc inside in the cyst nothing you just you mostly quadrinucleate or can be by uninucleate also mostly quadrinucleate which is infective form cyst form okay now you're going to answer all the question here the options are like this you're going to answer organism cause long to do no a long term answer is usually caused by which one? It is caused by your uh, salmonella type E. Okay, salmonella, salmonella type E. That is typhoid fever. Trophozoites or tennis racket? Definitely not. Tennis racket is which one for? That is for your tennis racket is for Giardia, not for this. Erythrocyte inside cyst? Not inside cyst. Erythrocyte inside the trophozoite. This is also wrong. Metronidazole followed permomycetes? Definitely yes. Again, once again, for metrotrine. The metro train is coming. Please get out of the way. G for Giardia, E for Entamoeba, T for Trichomonas vaginalis. For these three parasites, metronidazole is the magic drug. Okay, that's the best drug. Done. Next question now. Now look at this question. This also will be very easy for you. I know the patient with a history of food intake from the street side. Okay, and you got a bloody diarrhea on stool. Okay, he did bloody diarrhea. It looks like uh, something related with the uh, um, amoebic diarrhea, something. But on stool, they found this same like the entomophysiological, but the picture was like this. You see, you see a hairy ciliated. You see clearly it's a hairy ciliated trophozoite. So, which is hairy? Whenever there is a hairy or cilia around the body, automatically you will be thinking about what? Balu, Balu the bear. No, Balu the bear, you remember. So, when I say Balu, big Balu, automatically I am talking about Balan. Balantidium coli, the biggest trope, the biggest protozoa. Balantidium coli. Okay, so that's the answer. Entamoeba This is not entamoeba. Definitely wrong. Trophozoite is not like this. They are the trophozoite, no shape only, and they have RBC but no shape, but no cilia at least. Trophozoite definitely it's not. Trophozoite is different. So it's a balantidium, the big one. Usually everything is bye bye here. You have bi nucleus. If you see here, cis there are bi nucleus, by two two nucleus, with small nucleus, big nucleus, small nucleus, big nucleus. The characteristic is your this one. 
and it's a big one, okay, big test. So, well, well arterial cool nowadays popular infections are common. So, the same symptom like endomyopathy histolytica. Only thing is that when you do a wet mount of the stool, you will get different picture. That's it. Okay. Now, next. Excuse. This question also definitely expected, you know. HIV patient, <coughs> chronic diarrhea. HIV patient, chronic diarrhea. Acid per staining was stool. Size of 4 to 6 mm and the image was stone. So, before going to the image, let's do a short study. So, in one thing you should know that in HIV patient, if you get a chronic diarrhea, Three diseases you have to think. One is your crypto sporidium, the smallest one, and a little bit bigger is cyclospora, and the biggest one is isospora. Unfortunately, these days it is called cystoisospora. So don't get confused that, sir, you didn't talk about cysto. This is cyclospora is different, cystoisospora is different. Now, what is it? The 100, this is a 100% guaranteed question. You must know. First of all, let's start with the size. Here, it goes with the first 4 to 6 micrometer. Then 8 to 12, double it. Everything you're doubling it. And then 24 to 24 to 36 micrometer. This is the size, first size. Okay. Second, all our acid first. Yes, acid first is plus, plus. But this will be the cyclospora plus minus, you know, plus a little bit, not that much good. Autofluorescence. Autofluorescence, crypto negative, but this cycle, no, where the cycle is to iso there, the spora spora, let's just say the spora spora is shining. Autofluorescence is there, auto they shine. Okay, I, fluorescence both will shine. Okay, fine. Okay, as it passed, uh, autofluorescence, we told size, we told. So, see, crypto cycle, this all are round, round. Only this isospora, they are circle, they are uh, round shape. They are also round shape. Here it is the oval shape. That means there is isospora I. So you make a round like this, that becomes I. Okay, I, if you draw a beautiful picture, it becomes like this oval. No, So oval with two uh, cysts inside. Uh, that is your uh, cysto isospora, biggest one. Treatment, this for nita ambani. You know, crypto is a currency, you know, cryptocurrency. So nita oxide. Nitoxanide. Okay, nitoxanide is a treatment of choice. Treatment nitoxanide. For these two, it is cotrimoxazole, cotrimoxazole, cotri, cotri. But only for crypto, it is nitoxanide. Okay, nita ambani has cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. Okay, cryptocurrency. Remember like that. Okay, then all are acid first. How many percentage you are using acid first? You are using 1 percentage H2SO4. <coughs> 1 percentage H2SO4 for staining the acid first. All right. Now, the uh, now you have to check the uh, question. So, you see, the 4 to size mm is given. That is the pin of to say it is a cryptosporidium. Not cryptococcus, cryptosporidium. Don't confuse. And of course, treatment at all. Who is having a cryptocurrency? Nita Ambani is having. Nitoxanide. No? Nitoxanide. So, cryptosporidium and nitoxanide is the right answer. Okay. Cotrimoxazole is not. And uh, that's for the uh, uh, cyclo and the isosporo. So, one question is that. Easily, you're going to score that question. I know that. Now, next. Here, now, HIV positive patient with chronic diarrhea, same, 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 24 to 30. So, 24 to 30, big oval shape with the two cysts, that is simply cystoisospora. Don't confuse, nowadays, isospora is called cystoisospora. Don't confuse with cyclospora. Okay, cycle is middle, cystoisospora is the biggest one. Okay, 24 to 40, as it first. Okay, that's the answer. So, you know that. I'm just revising. Next question will be interesting for you. In a long time, they didn't ask this topic. You see, 31 year old male, he was having a headache for past 72 hours, worsens when he bends over. So he's getting meningitis symptom. You know, something related with the brain symptom, meningitis or whatever. His collateral information shows that he had a seizure yesterday, but patient refused to go hospital. He had a seizure also, he refused to go. He states that he has been non-compliant with his ART treatment. Okay, so he's a HIV positive patient. HIV positive patient having seizure and all. And CD4 count found to be 4. Uh, okay, HIV positive. CD4 again less than 200, 100 means less than 200. CT scan showed following image. Okay, you can CT scan. I am seeing which image? You see the ring, ring, ring here. Everywhere you see ring. That's called ring enhancing lesion. Ring enhancing. Okay. So, first thing is that CD uh, less than 200. CD4 HIV. Okay. CD count is less than 200. Okay. And HIV patient, seizure-like symptom, 
uh, but then uh, CT and Sabin field test, you know that. Sabin field meant diet test positive means that is detecting the anti, which is type of antibody detection. It's a complement fixation test only. That is characteristic for toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis, yes, right. So you got the answer. Less than 200 mil toxoplasmosis was there. So that's what toxoplasmosis came. Okay. Now, which is a false statement. So now the tachyzoid is in the lymph node biopsy diagnosis. Definitely, yes. Tachyzoid is a characteristic. Dog is the definite host in the dog. No. Dog is definite host for which one? Hydratidsis, echinococcosis. Here it's the cat. Cat is the definite host. So that is a wrong answer. Okay. Sulfur diazine plus pyrimethamine is definitely is used in the treatment for um, um one of the characteristic, this is a drug, sulfur pyramethin is a drug. For pregnancy, use pyramycin for toxoplasmosis. But for other normal, uh, normal patient, you can, you're using sulfur diazine and pyramethin. Means any, apart from pregnancy, for any other patient, use pyramethin. Congenital toxoplasmosis detected by IgG, yeah, definitely IgG, yeah. yes, it's right. But for adult, you can use IgG and IgM. But then for congenital, it, you have to use IgA only. Okay, very simple. Uh, everything would be a question. Ring enhancing lesion would be a question. CD4 be a question. Dog is a definite host question. Everything. Okay, so that's wrong. But that's uh, dog is not definite. Cat is a definite host. Okay, and then you know pregnancy also toxoplasmosis is very common. That also can be asked. Okay, hmm. next question. Next question. Uh, you know that next question is uh, very easy only. Don't think too much. Uh, you will get easily. Flu-like symptom, patient with flu-like symptom after bite of red wig pulp. You know that. Who is ready? Who is ready to kiss our? Who is ready to kiss? Tom Cruise. Trypnosoma cruzi. Tom Cruise, Trypnosoma cruzi. And Trypnosoma cruzi, everything is big, big, big. Which is big? Heart is big. Esophagus is big. Colon is big. And uh, esophagus is big. This is the big. Why I say ready? Because red weed bug. Red weed bug is the come. And who is what and what what he likes, Tom Cruise? He likes what? Sleeping. American sleeping. American sleeping. Because he comes from which place? He's come from the Vegas. Okay. Now you have everything answered here. Don't worry. I won't write everything for you now. Yeah, take it. Red weed, red weed bug. Kiss also causes kissing bug. Red weed bug or kissing bug. He likes to kiss, you know, na? Tom Cruise always kiss the movie. Why T Cruise? Because it's also called Trypnosoma Cruise. Tom Cruise or Trypnosoma Cruise. America, America, because American sleepness. Vegas, because Vegas ka Chagas Banado, Chagas disease. Chagas or Chagoma. These things are all are common in this disease. Okay, correct. Big, everything is big because he, has, they, he gets cardiomegaly. He does a lot of work on cardiomegaly and he gets esophagomegaly, esophagomegaly, colonomegaly, colono, megacolon. Or you call it as megacolon, megacolon. All this only colon, but not other organ. Only a heart, esophagus, and the colon. Okay, now we'll go to answer. Which is following is not catastrophic. Cardiomegaly, definitely yes. Esophagus, definitely yes. Megacolon, definitely yes. Hepatomegaly, no. Not hepatomegaly and not splenomegaly. You usually think any parasite, you think that's wrong. In Tom Cruise, me, he doesn't have he doesn't have a spleen or liver enlargement, but he'll have huge muscles, huge heart, huge colon, huge esophagus. That's the twist here. Tom Cruise cut twist is that only. Tom Cruise doesn't have hepatomegaly and splenomegaly. Okay, so it's a Chagas disease, chronic Chagas disease. That's the thing. Okay, we can ask. Next question. I'm not even going to the question. I'm going to see and tell this. I'm seeing a macrophage and inside a monophyte or macrophage, whatever. And inside, I'm seeing the, see this typical appearance like this. They call dia. It's not in the book. We just in microbiology call dia type of thing. This is basically an A masticode. And we usually get patients like this from uh, Bihar, UP, Sites. We're getting a lot of patients. So that means it is Kalaza. That is your. LD bodies, Lishmania Donovan bodies, LD bodies. Okay. So, but let's go to the question. This is LD body, but now let's LD body. But now, what is the question here? Patient presents the fever, hepatosplenomegaly. Okay. Hyperpigmentation, pancytopenia, gymsha of the bone marrow showed this one. A masticode. False. Which of the following is false? A masticode diagnostic? Definitely yes. Okay. It's so diagnostic form. Pro masticode is the uh, uh, infective form, but the diagnostic form is A masticode form. RK39 is a rapid RK39, definitely rapid test. Napier's RDA test for hypoglobinemia? No. Napier is definitely we are using, but not for hypo, hyper. Because you have increased immunoglobulin calaza. This disease is basically calaza. That is your 
uh, visceral leishmaniasis, which we call as visceral leishmaniasis. Leishmaniasis. Okay. And liposomal amphotericin B is used for treatment? Definitely, yes. This is the one sodium stipoglobin is also used, but liposomal amphotericin B is the best one. So, Napier's earlier test is to detect the hypergammaglobulinemia, not hypoglamoglobinemia. Okay. RK39, Napier, these are the tests we can use in this thing uh, for the uh, Chopra's antimony test also we use, if you remember. Okay. Common. Okay. Now, next. Uh, so, 15-year-old female, this also don't see the question and get scared, this is an easy question. 15-year-old female, she comes to emergency room in unconscious state by a mother. She was, uh, she was well until three years before she completed fever and frontal headache she had. Abdominal, she had peptomegaly also. You, a, a urethral catheter was passed urine showing four colored urine, hemoglobin urea. So, that means it's already complicated. Peripheral blood smear showed something like this, like this. This is your gametocyte of... This is the gametocyte of which one? Of the dangerous one, Plasmodium falciparum, falciparum gametocyte. And then you see uh, male and male is uh, uh, loose and female is intact. Okay, this is the gametocyte. This is very, very characteristic and also which complicated malaria. This one, that's what is falciparum. Four colored urine because you got what? You got already the black water fever, hemoglobin urea also. Now, what are the characteristic? Sharpness dot? No. That is not sharpness is for uh, plasmodium vivax. Uh, Mr. Vivek's girlfriend is sharpna and Duffy. We remember vivax. That's not. Hypnozoid is dormant. No. Hypnozoid is characteristic for plasmodium uh, vivax and plasmodium ovale. Okay. Hypnozoid. A coliform? Yes. Definitely characteristic. Here in picture it's not given, but a coliform is a headphone form is characteristic. Chloroquine treatment? No. Chloroquine we use only for uh, vivax. Uh, vivax ovale. For here, we are using ACT therapy, atimisonate combination therapy, if you remember, for falciparum. Because falciparum, what do you see? Moyer rods, I told you. Moyer dots or rods. Moyer dots are the dangerous one because it's Chinese name. So, Moyer, remember like that. Okay. Yes. Next question. Same, sort of same, but the only picture. Looking the picture only, I will say, this is a Shaijon. Because I'm seeing all the merozoid inside. Okay, Sajon merozoid. And this is a, I'm seeing the RBCs, big RBCs. Using both the cases, the RBCs are big. And here what I'm seeing is gametocyte oval shape. Previous one, it was, look at this, this is gametocyte. I forgot to tell the name. Banana shape. Anything banana. Anything banana or crescent shape. You know, moon or crescent shape. Gametocyte is our mau. Mau is plasmodium falciparum. Everything is dangerous there. Okay. Where he has a headphone, uh, a coliform, uh, multiple rings, etc., etc., forms will be there. But here you see a oval shaped gametocyte, a oval shaped gametocyte, and she is one. So this is basically for plasmodium vivax. Vivek has all these things. Vivek is a big guy, big RBCs because that's young RBCs. That's what, okay. So now, uh, same, a 24 year fame come with a tertian fever. Tertian fever means again, it is the uh, either plasmodium vivax or plasmodium ovale. But yeah, still, uh, based on the, you have to, sometimes it can be mixed infection. So you have to check peripheral smear was done. The false. Peripheral smear, see, whenever you see in this thing clearly, it's a thin smear. Okay, thin smear only you can identify the speciation. That question was asked. Thick smear may, you will do quantification, how many parasites is there. But in thin smear, where you can see the thing clearly, so you can speciate the malaria, whatever malaria it is. So, so this is a plasmodium vivax. So, which is the wrong statement? Duffy antigen has definitely because Vivek's girlfriend is Duffy. Also, Safna. Safna and Duffy or Vivek's girlfriend. Vivax, Vivek's girlfriend. Young RBC, definitely. Vivek is very young. Young boy. Young boy, Vivek. Vivek is a young boy, Duffy. Relapses are common with this species? Definitely is because of the hypnozoid. Hypnozoid usually hides inside this thing and you get it. Then primoquine is the treatment of choice. You know the hypnozoid primoquine. Late proposoid and shishon stage usually not seen. That is the tricky question. Late proposoid shishon stages are usually not seen in plasmodium falciparum. Why? Because they get sequestered in the capillaries itself. So it doesn't come into the peripheral blood smear. That question was asked. Okay. <coughs> this could be asked. Late proposal and session says usually not by perfume is promised. That's what the other one. Okay, right. Next, looking at the picture, I see what I'm seeing a cross. See, I'm seeing called this is a Maltese cross. This is a Maltese cross. So if someone's able to identify, I will simply say without any clue, I will mark babies here. Babies 
babies like to have what cross babies like cross on their neck okay babies like cross on their neck so children as patient returned to usa developed fever with the chest usa is one history last three days peripheral breast milk so from babies is not in india no so babies is spread by you know the heart tick heart baby no heart baby heart tick heart tick heart baby tick okay so uh it is the uh usa peripheral breast milk zone. so same picture like malaria Okay, fever, chills, etc. But only difference in peripheral breast milk, if you see multi scroll, that is Babesia, Babesiosis. So easy, you would score one mark. Next question, again, very, very easy question. Definite questions. These are a child comes to perianal itching at night. Yeah, perianal itching, no, don't even think anything. What you, you're going to think only Enterobius vermicularis. Enterobius vermicularis, which otherwise called as pinworm, pinworm, right? Pinworm, seat worm. Common names. Okay. Now look on the tape test they're done. The eggs were visible. This is the egg. Okay. It's a D-shaped, no D-shaped. That is plano convex egg. Plano convex eggs. So how to remember? We already told you when the child gets uh when the child, you know, usually get this infection, perianal itching night time, he called the the he'll call his sister first. The 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 okay, the 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 so D-shaped is your nighttime crying child, that is the entropy vermicularis. So this is a false they ask. Enterobus vermicularis, definitely right. NIH, National Institute of Health Swap, definitely yes, we can use. Auto infections common, definitely yes. It's a biostatic, absolutely wrong. Okay, why? Because the shortcut is Neha. Neha may what, what it is? Neha is not biostain. Neha is not biostain. Necatra americanus, Enterobius, Hnana, and Cyclostoma. So it is right, that's wrong answer. Okay, right. Next question. <laughs> Eight year old girl comes with a complaint of abdominal pain, vomiting, constipation since a week on stool microscopy. This picture was given. Some abdominal come discovered. The stool was given in this picture. It's a spot question. So, this is basically you're seeing what embryonated egg, you know, embryonated egg with the embryo inside, but there is some space, also crescentric space is there. So, this is basically Ascaris lumbricoides, but if they want more detail, there is space positive. Space is positive, that is fertilized egg. Fertilized egg. Okay. That's what there is space. If it is non fertilized, means no space. So, but basically the egg is Ascaris lumbricoides. Okay. Yes. Got it. Ascaris lumbricoides. See nicely. Over uh, outside, it's very lobulated type of eggshell will be there. And inside, you see the uh, egg. Okay. Next question. A 64-year-old uh, man presented with a patient to shortness of the breath, breath shortness, bilateral lower extremity swelling and poor oral intake. Okay, leg was swollen, poor oral intake, bilateral extremity swelling means it gives you clue on uh, something. It's, it's giving you clue. Let's go one by one. Uh, swelling and poor oral intake. He had a history of CLL also, CLL. And then uh, he had a completed chemotherapy two months ago. It's a cancer patient too. CT showed multilobular pneumonia, more confirmed the bilateral lymph low, uh, lower lobes. Back on the pulmonary edema also was there. Bile sample was sent, following image was sent. So this is a larva. Some larva was seen inside. And based on the clinical, especially CLL patient and all, the infection which is very common with lower leg extremity means uh, uh, poor oral integral means the patient must have walked barefoot and all. So barefoot and all means one infection that is common that is causing the visceral larva migrants also, if the larva can migrate anywhere, is your strongyloides stercoralis. This is the one which was going through the leg and then it must have pierced the neck and it goes. Then it is gone. So in cancer patient, may CLL may one of the common parasites which is causing this. With if you see this larva and all inside the larva migrants, it's a larva migrants. So if you see, that's also called it mark. It marks very fast also. The eruptions it runs very fast. This one. Uh, that's what you call larva currents. We also call this larva currents if you remember strong illness. So this is the one which has caused this pneumonia symptoms or not, viral pneumonia. So they remember with the cancer symptom and then lung, if it gone to lung, it will cause this much hit, uh, in a CLL patient or means definitely the strong illness, stercoralis. Okay, that's the clue for you. Next question. Again, don't go to the question, see the picture. Typical, like this. You know, all the uh, hexacanth embryo, we also call it as hexacanth embryo, we call it. Uh, hexacanth embryo. 
can see the lobes, the embryo, which is very lobe like this, with the space around it. So this is basically what this is a this is a hoop wall. Okay, now let's start. A 42-year-old man admitted with a complaint of nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and abdominal fullness last 12 days. No response to antibiotics. Okay. CBC showed eosinophilia. A stool microscopy showed this egg. So it's a hookworm. So which is true. Root of infection speak over? Definitely not. Why? Because you should know that these infections, uh, when you talk about this uh, uh, this hookworm uh, infection, it is usually... How it goes? It goes through sand. Remember like this? Sand, sandy. My name sand. I walk barefoot. I walk barefoot. So I get this infection. Strongylitis, especially A and N, that is ancyclostoma and necator. These two are the hookworms. So this is usually going through which one? Penetration through the skin. The infection happens through the penetration of the skin, not through the thing. Remember, sand. I am, my name is San Sandy. Sandy walks without any slippers. So infection penetrates and goes, skin penetration. So it's out. Can cause vitamin B12, uh, B12 deficiency. It's not B12 deficiency. It is causing the iron deficiency. You know very well. Right? It sucks the blood and uh, bleeding. It causes the bleeding and then you get this thing. Visceral larval migraine is not visceral. It causes the cutaneous larval migraine. Cutaneous larval migraine is not the visceral one. Okay. And cause ground which are definitely that is on the site where it, uh, it enters it causes this eruption where it's biting and going in the leg that region you get this itching eruption ground itch eruptions you call okay right next question this was very easy you see this thing there is inside the muscle you're seeing this uh, cyst is formed you know the larva has entered inside inside the muscle that's the thing okay now you see the question a 47 year old male patient complained the village present uh, from a village, you present with the easy fatigability and asymmetric right thigh enlargement. Thigh enlargement means of something related with the muscle only. It has said that eating was poor conception. Okay, muscle involvement. There's a poor pig has been involved, pig has been eaten. And typical examination showed puffy face and eyes, allergic reactions, and the mass of the thigh is four to five. Big mass, uh, muscle, this. No any skin color change or discharge. Eosinophilia is there, definitely parasite infection. A muscle biopsy revealed. What is this? In muscle biopsy, you can see inside all the larva has gone inside, not big, big thing inside the muscle. So muscle pig means itself. I would think what? Trichinella spiralis. Spiralis, you can remember spindles, like muscle spindle, spindle, no muscle, spiral, muscle, muscle spiral or spindle, whatever you remember, muscle spirals or spindle. So inside that you're seeing. So that is trichinella spiralis. Very, very easy. Okay, trichinella spiralis. Now next question. Yes. Now the next question you look uh, here. Heavy infection of the following person leads to rectal prolapse. Rectal prolapse means itself, you know. On stool examination, this egg was in the rectal prolapse is basically called as coconut <coughs> Coconut shell appearance. They call this coconut shell appearance. Now here the stool, you see, it is look like what? It looks like a dumbbell, right? It looks like a dumbbell appearance. Dumbbell appearance. Uh, so dumbbell, what you do with dumbbell? You have to dumbbell, you whip the coconut. You whip the coconut with double. Why I say whip dumbbell? Dumbbell is the shape. It means in the both the end, you know, you have this knob-like appearance. That's what. Try, try. I would say, try, 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 try with dumbbell, uh, dumbbell to whip the coconut. Okay, to whip the coconut. Whip because it is whip form. So whip form, otherwise also called try, try because it is trichuris trichuria. You will have a question. Try, try to break the coconut with the whip. That's what I want to say. Try, try to break the coconut with the whip. Okay, whip form. That's it. Not been this and all. No relation only. Look at the next question. This is a without only. Uh, first of all, uh, okay. 60 year old patient, a rural came with a lower uh, limb swelling and pain, gradually increasing. That is definitely an elephantiasis case. Or uh, lymphatic elephantiasis or filariasis, filariasis case. Additionally, the swelling tends to worsen during the evening hours, often resulting in difficulty in walking. 
blood sample was taken, which is stained with a bright stain. Okay. So uh, they did a bright stain and then the thing. So this is a, already I told we are talking about the filariasis or elephantiasis. So look at the tail tip. Tail tip has many nuclei. Does the tail tip has any nuclei here? No, not at all. So there is no nuclei for elephant. Elephant is a small tail. So no nuclei. Remember like the elephant has a no tail. So that is out. Okay. So this is a wrong statement. Tulex is the only way to definitely not. For elephant is the only where every uh, uh, anopheles can cause, Aedes can. Tulex is most common, but any mosquito can cause. Remember that one question. For elephant is anybody can drive on elephant. Okay. Anybody can drive on the elephant. An elephant tail is small, so there is no nucleus. This is the way you are going to remember. This person acted during daytime, not at all. Night time, that's what we used to do. Uh, we have to do the special test that it will, you can uh, take the blood in the daytime. Uh, we take the blood at the uh, night time. Okay. Uh, then, tropical culinary eosinophilia scene, definitely yes. E for elephantiasis, E for this thing. That's the way you want to remember. So, tropical culinary eosinophilia is usually seen. Uh, uh, very characteristic for your tropical pulmonary eosinophilia is very characteristic for your let's see uh, elephant gases. Okay, that's all. Now next question: black skin nodule. Next one: black skin nodule and river blindness caused by. Same thing only. I always say what? Black Simu, Simran. He was driving in the Volvo bus. And he, uh, he got what? He got, fell into the river. Volvo, and he got what? Blindness. So sad story, you know? Black because it's a black fly. Okay, it's a caused by black fly. Also black skin nodule. Simu because the other name is called Simul, Simulium. Okay, Simulium. Uh, Volvo because it is volvulus. It's caused by onchocerca volvulus. River, river blindness. Very simple. So everything is black is there. River blindness is there. So what you have to think? Directly mark onchocerca volvulus. Lowell was different. Lowell was a chrysops. You know, chrysops, it caused malabar, calabar swelling. Calabar swelling, I told. Uh, if you remember, there is a lower word that the beautiful deer we draw. Uska eye mein cry arata. So it's caused by chrysops. You know, chrysops or deer fly. Uh, it's in the Calabar. Okay, Calabar, Malabar, Calabar. That clue from my uh, previous lectures you could see. But now here, remember like this, Black Simu, Volvo, River, Black. Okay, that's it. This way you will remember. Next question. 10-year-old uh, Tibetan girl. Tibetan girl, she developed the headache, uh, mild seizure and the vomiting. MRI showed the intracystic lesion. There was intracystic lesion. So this is look like a, a neurocystic sarcosis only. No obvious extracranial lesion. But a serum IgG antibody against this was positive. So definitely, again, it is a case of neurocysticercosis. But which is a false statement, they ask. Egg is an infective stage here? Yes, it's right. Egg is infective only. Uh, for uh, for neurocysticercosis, egg is infective stage. It's right. Antiparasitic and steroid community, definitely, because neurocysticercosis, to prevent the uh, reaction, uh, to kill the parasite, you give the parasite also, and steroid also, both you are giving, okay. Subcutaneous neurocysticercosis, so common from the neuro, this is a wrong statement. The most common is always neurocysticercosis only, followed by that is the skeletal or subcutaneous can come. Auto infection cause the disease? Yes, it can cause the disease, okay. Direct egg ingestion of this thing or causes Tinea sole, neurosis, tinea sole, same thing with rust. Okay, right. Next question. We are almost coming to the end now. Yeah. Uh, it is one or two, I think, finished. True about uh, Diplobotrium latum. Diplobotrium latum, snail is the inter uh, intermediate? No. See the name. Di means two. P, fish. Fish is intermediate. Two fish. We have small fish and big fish. Okay. Chrys uh, uh, the cyclops, uh, small fish, and the big fish, normal fish. Crayfish, you know, cray. Okay, so these are the two types of fishes. Of the snail is not intermediate, so it's wrong. Operculated egg, it, is it an operculated egg? It is a, if you remember, shortcut I told, STD, open sex. You get sex only STD. So D stands for diplobosum latum. That is the right answer. Okay, causes iron deficiency? Definitely not. Diplobosum causes vitamin B12, B12 deficiency. Not this one. Diplobosum is a big one, B12. 
large trematode, largest trematode, it's the largest, but it is not trematode, it is a cestode. Because in cestode, if you remember, the shortcut is the Deepika. The our Deepika polygon is a tapeworm, no? cestode, no? sexy, the sexy, the Deepika. D for all the teeny sodium teeny sagitta, H for H nana, E for, uh, once again, uh, uh, the, uh, once again, uh, we are talking about, yeah, H nana, right, it's all. Echinococcus, hydratus, echinococcus, and D, D for diplobotrium lato. So this is the just cesto, not the same. Okay, right, next. Next one is, a 40 year old male present with abdominal pain, one year not associated with the vomiting and jointes, no vomiting jointes, no history of fever or weight loss. Ultrasound showed cystic swelling in the liver. There was a cyst swelling, is there, and there was CT so rise eosinophilia. The cyst was exist and sent to the microbiology. See, the cyst means itself in liver, cyst and all comes, no, that is usually hydrated cyst and a hydrated cyst. You know that one. Then here they said the following structure was given. When they gave the aspirated this cyst and then this, these are the hooklets. These are the hooklets and it's from the liver means it's catastically echinococcus granulosus. So it's caused by hydratus sister echinococcus granulosus, you know, cost of agent is right. False. Dog is intermediate host for this organism? No, dog is a definite host. Intermediate is the sheep and we are accidental, human is accidental. So this is a wrong statement. Uh, Cassoni test is supposed to be definitely a sun. Cassoni is which type? Type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. You will have question on that also. Cassoni is for hydrated cyst fluid. Albendazole definitely reduces the size of the worm. This will bend it. You know, of the, the bendazole can bend the worms. Okay, remember like that. Yes, now almost I think we came to the uh, last one or two questions. Just we are coming to the end now. Uh, yeah, so a 23 year old person with a gross hematuria for one month, blood test were shown except eosinophilia, uh, where within normal, except there was eosinophilia was there. Gross hematuria that means bladder is affected, something related with the bladder. Okay, bladder. There was thickening and calcification observed at the bladder at CT, that's what I'm saying. There was a nodular lesion also seen, and the transurethral resection was done. Numerous eggs and granulomatous inflammation were. See, uh, everything related with the bladder, 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 urinary bladder. Urinary bladder, if you're seeing this type of picture, it is which one? Cystosoma. But cystosoma is fine. But which cystosoma? How to everything is cystosoma? How to identify cell? So, see, there is a terminal may, terminal T may, you have a spine. T, T. You have a terminal spine. So, it is cystosoma hematobium. That's it. That's it. Mansoni may it will be on the side. We have, we'll have that question also. Side. And Japanicumi small nose will be there. Fascial Busky is a different story. It will not come here. We'll talk about it later. So this sister, uh, sisters of a mansoni, all a closed egg. First of all, it's a closed egg with a terminal, with a closed egg, closed egg, with this terminal, with a sister of a hematobia. Right. Now, next question, if you see. Yeah, we're almost finishing. 27-year-old man present with a persistent left-sided abdominal pain, uh, liver fibrosis, portal hypertension. The word portal hypertension, splenomegaly comes, Ig is elevated. So repeat a microscopy. See, this portal hypertension comes, you, know, you have to think about the uh, your cystosoma only. Which cystosoma? Side, Mansi. This girl, Mansi, she has a side ball. Okay, see her side main, she has a ball. So, Mansoni. Sisters of Mansoni is the characteristic one. Okay, that's it. That's the one. Now, yes, almost end. Uh, the patient, I think this is the end. Yes, your last question. Uh, so, last question, interesting. Eating, uh, the patient had a history of eating raw or undercooked freshwater fish and went to acute shock with a severe abdominal pain. Fish is one clue for you. Others uh, something related with the fish. And there's an acute abdomen with severe abdominal pain. A CT scan showed poly, poly, acute polycystitis and colitis. That means your gallbladder, can, gallbladder something with the gallbladder. After polycystitis, several liver flukes were seen. This is which one? Is several liver flukes. So when gallbladder affected means itself, your answer would be clonoricosinensis. Sinus is is fish fish you know fish fish is is so fish fish it's just anything related with the fish fluke so it's like a flesh uh, uh, fish fluke one okay chronic science cause gallbladder carcinoma also cancer if you remember 
gallbladder, colic, uh, cholangiocarcinoma, everything comes with this one. This is the characteristic feature. That's it, okay? Chronorico sinuses is causing this typical gallbladder affecting symptoms. That's it, okay? Very good. Now we've finished maximum. I think I've covered maximum all the uh, case related type questions and this frequently expected also. Definitely you're going to do. Please uh, revise once fastly this thing. And then all the best once again, all my prayers and uh, uh, best wishes for the uh, students going for the exam. Uh, I hope all the good uh, news from you soon. So yeah, uh, study well, concentrate, don't get stressed and do well. All the best once again.